Painkiller Already, episode 533. Taylor? Just the girls tonight. This episode of PK is brought to you by ExpressVPN and Goat.com, two wonderful sponsors. We love them. We'll talk more about them later. Now, Kyle was chomping at the bit to show us what he called a horrid video. Yes, yes. I think uh, I think everyone liked it when we reacted to that awful, awful video of the snow shoveler shooting uh, a few weeks back. And, uh, and I know the same, I loved it. I know you loved it. I, mm-hmm. I, you said you came twice? <laughs> yeah, not during the show. That'd be inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. You wait till after. Yeah. But uh, but I thought in the same vein, uh, this video that was uh, linked to me yesterday would just be a real good one to react to. And I've never clicked on you. You provided the link time stamped, and I've never gotten this specific warning. Woody said so too. That's like it was borderline. Like go back. Like, <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be here. <laughs> when YouTube percent. knows you're nearly half a century old, it doesn't typically give you a like a disturbing content warning. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a this must be an intense video. It's called Bolivia University Accident: Student Fall to Their Death. Students fall to their death. Oh, multiple. Ah, I thought we were going to see one. We're about I to see. I think this a- whole. Ba- All right. So what we're seeing is a bunch of students on a balcony. In in sight, there must be 60 of them. But I bet a there's ton. more. And uh, I can't tell if they're protesting or cheering or whatever. I didn't pre-watch it. You guys ready? Yeah. Ready, uh-huh. set, play. They might be protesting. They're not jumping around or anything. They're just standing there. Yeah, it could even be like a field day thing. You don't even no idea. Could be trying to get into a gym. But there's a fuck ton of people. It's current because it says this happens during a pandemic, and I think they're wearing masks. Yeah, they are. <laughs> oh boy. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Oh my! Wait, wait, she's dangling. She's dangling, boys. Oh no. Someone get her! Oh no. Tell me they say her. Drop you dummy! Yeah, drop your purse. Oh, they got her up? Okay. Wow. Two, four, six, maybe? That's five people at least, and then someone's moving seven. down there. Seven. All seven are dead. So what happened was they were Whoa. on a balcony. Is maybe the fifth floor, but you couldn't tell that at first because the cameraman's yeah. on, like, the fourth. And uh, the railing failed, and seven people fell off the edge. And they're not moving. I think one might be moving. Um, I she, think yeah, five, one of them's writhing down there, probably <coughs> dying. Jesus. Five died instantly, I think, and two more died minutes later. Oof. They're the be unlucky go, ones. You better to go instantly if you're falling. Yeah. Just, yeah. In, just gone. Better than like gurgling yeah. or whatever the hell. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was awful. <laughs> we got three hours and 58 minutes to go. And, <laughs> <laughs> and no, we already have man. seven deaths. <laughs> it's all uphill from here. <laughs> it's all up, everything can be joyous. Holy shit. So I guess the event doesn't actually matter. That could have been people waiting in line for the administration office. Because nobody, you're right, nobody was jumping around or like being rowdy. Yeah. It, was just, it sounded like kids like, oh, we're just waiting for the gymnasium doors to open so we can go to you know to chapel or something. I've seen a number of structural failures, right? Like imagine a bunch of people jumping in sync because it's a sports game or a dance area. And then that, that thumping and rhythmic, it, it mm-hmm. breaks the building. I thought that's what I was going to see. Somehow the railing falling... And people tipping over the edge, grasping at like the railing, the the edge of the platform they're standing on, mm-hmm. fruitlessly. It, it was worse than a structural collapse. Yeah, the uh, hopeless. Like, oh god, that would be so scary. Hmm. Especially being that girl who was like, oh, oh like barely Dang holding like on. upside and down. And you're right, she was holding onto her purse, and it's like you got to prioritize. Get. Mm-hmm. Get back on the landing. Of course, it's Bolivia. So that, that thing hits the floor, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, now it would be an active crime scene because they need to find whatever, you know, guy decided not to put anchors on the screws or however that would possibly happen. Oh, that was that was up to Bolivian code. I guarantee it. You think so? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a common thing there. I was, I as I was watching it, I was like, oh, no, this entire platform is going to collapse and all 60 of these kids are going to die. And so I, I was surprised by the railing it failing. It was a pleasant it, surprise to watch seven people fall to their death. In, instead of 102, yeah, however many people are up there. I, mean, that's, I, get, I knew I was right by never being that person that's like on like high places holding onto the rail, like, <laughs> like shaking and things. Because, you know, there were always kids who did that and people who did that. And it's like the amount of faith you're putting into 
the janitor or carpenter, whoever the did lowest that, bidder. Like, what if he was hung over that morning and he's like, I just don't care. You know, <laughs> you don't want to be the guy who dies because of that. So, you know, lesson for everyone. Don't in your, when you're in a Bolivian school, don't stand right up against the, the thing. Be like four people deep into the crowd because they seem to be OK. I have a. Um, God, that is I, fucked I, up. <laughs> How old are they? High school? They look right? like college. In, university. University. Oh, okay, university. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Did, new topic? Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Dude. So I found this on Illegal Life Pro Tips, and the guy's asking for advice. I'm on parole, and I'm staying in a transitional house. There's a dude who lives with me who has 21 counts of sodomy, sexual assault on 9 and 11 year old <laughs> kids. What do I do? I want to add, I'm not trying to go back to prison. I've got a family in another state. I'm trying to transfer to there. I just can't beat the sick bastard to hell, and I'm on thin ice with my parole officer about targeting child molesters in the halfway house I was originally paroled to. That's why I'm not there. I can't just let it go, however, because what if this was your kid it happened to? And someone was asking what, what to do to the SOB who did it. I... I don't know. I don't want to be pro a 21 count sodomy sexual assault dude, but this guy's making some bad decisions. He's been kicked out of one halfway house already. He's not trying to go back to prison, but he's asking for advice on what to do to this person. Yeah, don't, yeah. You, don't do, you don't do anything? Like, what do you judge dread? Like, 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 I mean, you're not even a regular civilian anymore. Like, like I'm in a similar situation. You, you, you walk the line, dummy. That's what you yeah. do. My yeah, my neighbor could be fucking Saddam Hussein hiding out, and I wouldn't do a goddamn thing. No, I'll do nothing. No, yeah, exactly. Do absolutely nothing. Don't get in some weird vengeance cyclone where you start killing everyone. Right? I, this seems like the fantasy of someone more than a guy who's actually in there. You always it's like, like I'm gonna be, and, and you might be I'm, right. Yeah, I mean, it's more right than wrong on Reddit. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't never even consider that angle until you bring it up. I, I I like Kyle's accusation that he sees himself as Judge Dredd. I, I, I've talked about this before. I once interviewed for a job. And the guy who was interviewing me liked to volunteer at prisons. And what he taught was decision-making skills. He's like, you know, it turns out the reason they're in there is because they have bad decision-making skills. So I help them, you know, decide. They're just like, hey, here's a choice I might be making that will obviously have hugely negative ramifications. Let's not make that choice next time. And uh, I, I feel like that's not a, a fit. I, there's like this elephant in the room. It's not just not what Kyle is doing. But like, I don't know. There's a fight you could walk away from or engage in. Make smart choices. There, there's yeah. a person who slighted you. You could escalate or laugh it off. Like make smart choices. And that's what he taught. This guy needs that lesson. This guy, what do I do? There's a person here who's sexual assaulter so what did nope. this guy do he said he, he went to reddit to ask what should i do to this guy like how do i get this guy without getting in trouble and the guy he hates raped a bunch of kids on 9 11 uh <laughs> the kids were 9 and 11 ah uh, he had a very very strict window <laughs> <laughs> i imagine that it was like i i'm projecting all this but 21 counts of sodomy, sexual assault on 9, 11-year-old kids. Is it like a two brothers, two sisters, or a mix, and it was just 21 counts of the same two kids? That's my thought. Maybe. I probably. Don't know. But if How he got nailed that, for, for 21 counts, that means there's probably like 80 counts that he actually did. For the that, or they just run up a bunch of counts. Like, it was two days, but he did 21 things over those two days. Right boob, count? left they, boob, they, upstairs, downstairs. Now, I don't have a problem. In her mouth? I don't you, have a problem with like the judge doing like Magic the Gathering combos on pedophiles, where he's like, <laughs> "And now I'm in my recurring loop. You're in prison forever." <laughs> right? Oh, no. that, that's how I. That's how I think it is in my head. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe he has a long oh, list I of very that. specific nine and eleven year old. What are you ten? It's your lucky day, Dick. Yeah. <laughs> I watched a video oh, of a judge. Uh, I watched a video of a judge sentencing a guy for child uh, molestation the other day. He was working at a daycare and uh, and she fucking like tears this guy a new one about how evil and awful Good. he is. And then she's like, and you will be serving the maximum sentence of 20 years per offense. And sir, you will be serving them consecutively. 
<laughs> it's just like, oh, they don't usually do that. They usually just, they do them concurrently. So you do them, you know, you get you get twenty years for this, five years for this, ten years for this, but they all happen at the same time. So it's uh, twenty years. You know, wherever the mo the la whatever you got sentenced the most for, that's your end date. No, she's like one after another after another. Your your third sentence doesn't even begin until the year twenty thirty seven, sir. It's just so he's gonna die in prison. So yeah, because he was like fifty two. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. So he won't even see, you know, he'll get like, you know, through a molestation, like a fingering charge and like all the rest is just going to be laying out there because he'll yeah. die. And he's got to survive in prison. Oh, that he, is he'll, a he'll way before. he's a 50 something year old man, probably looks like a pedophile. Does not look like a, a strong guy. He looks, um, he, you know, just not going to go well for him. Maybe he'll go to the right prison, right? With all the other pedophiles. Maybe, maybe. I, I don't Did know. Only Use Me Blade told that story where he's like, yeah, I, th th there was a great prison, you know, it was for child molesters, but uh, I picked it because it seemed like it had a better viewer. I forget. That's where I'd go to. If I might, if, 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 if they had been like, all right, Kyle, you can go to the, Fres the federal prison camp in, in Alabama, or you can go to the, the Kitty Diddler camp over in South Carolina. I'd be like, they got chili over there? <laughs> 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 hey Kyle, yeah, just, just a bunch of fucking kitty diddlers hanging out. Yeah, like, 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 you know, yeah. a good way to eliminate gang violence, like racial gang violence, mm -hmm. in, instead of like introduce a huge number of pedophiles into normal prison, <laughs> and that way the Aryans, the black gangs, the the Latinos, they're all going to band together in this movie I'm inventing and fight the pedophile scourge. Right. Oh, uh, no, 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 the, no, no. And when the last pedophile is slain in the prison riot, they look around and they go, we're not so different, you and I. And then they have, you know, prison. So you, that's not what that's happens what is the pedophiles secretly become the most badass gang and start raping the Aryans <laughs> and the, <laughs> to the Crips. <laughs> everybody else, they got numbers on everybody. You said you were going to introduce a large amount of these people. They'll come in with their charm and their toys and their cool stereos, hypothetically. Come on, boys, we're going to go fuck those pedos up. Come on, get your sheep. Yeah, come back in like all bloody. Other like, oh, fuck oh. He's like, dude, I don't want to fucking talk about it ever. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that, that was a fuck. That was fucking wild. I'm, uh, just, I'm, just, I'm, do you have preparation age? Because I'm in a little pain. Yeah. The thing is, the, the thing about that is they wouldn't band together because even with pedophiles, the racial li the racial lines in prison are the the core of everything. So a black guy can't come mess with a white pedophile. A black guy can come to the whites and be like, "Hey, y'all got a pedophile over there. You need to handle." Mm -hmm. But but he can't go over there. Like like a black guy can't hit the white guy without starting a real problem. So like mm -hmm. like you've got to handle your own garbage, as it were. Mm. Seems that it works out then, right? It would work out absolutely. It, it it has been working out for a long time if you consider prison murder working out. Yeah, but you called him garbage, and that's offensive to pedophiles, Kyle. I'd like you to apologize. <laughs> I'm going to stand by it. That's a brave stance. <laughs> oh, how can you be so courageous and We hate brave? pedophiles, and they're bad. You, uh, I don't care who comes after. And that's what we're going to start doing. Yeah. Just really over-the-top, agreeable statements. Mm. Being like, <laughs> and you nail me to the cross for that, but I think kids should be able to eat. <laughs> I mean, if they're hungry, give them a little food. <laughs> if they're hungry, they should be provided food. Good food, not school food. School food's the fucking worst. It was awful. What was the best lunch at your high school? The, one the absolute like best lunch is when they would get pizza once in a while. Like uh, real pizza or, or that square shit? No, this is, this, well, I'm thinking of grade school now. Uh, grade mm -hmm. school. Every once in a while, they really would bring in like a bunch of whatever the cheapest like Domino's was. And it was like, oh, my God, you only got two slices. Or I guess most kids got one, but I I got two. I would often get three because there was a chip system. You got a blue chip or a red chip, blue chip, double portion, red chip, single portion. And there was this kid that was on Ritalin in my class. Shout out to Tim. And he never wanted to eat. And so I would take my double chip, his single chip most of the time. And I would eat a triple chip meal. Uh, Jesus Christ. This no. is like when the puppies, I never took it from him. the he, big he strong puppies it. just get bigger and stronger because they get all the food because they're yeah. bigger and stronger and then they're he, bigger and stronger because they got all the food. And his, his mom would get so mad at him and be like, you need to eat. 
and he's like, you got me on speed. I, if I eat, I feel sick. I can't. I'm not hungry. And so like he would ask me even he'd be like, Taylor, just just eat it. Like, just make sure my tray is clean by the end because uh, uh, Mrs. Disman is going to come by. And if she sees that my there's food on there, she's going to tell my mom. And I'm like, no, I suppose. <laughs> like, <just> like, <laughs> what a god I have. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, most days it didn't even pan out that much because it's like, I don't even want an extra serving of this nonsense. But pizza day. Dude. Pizza day at work. I think the best might have been like country fried steak. That was pretty good. Ooh, we did not have that. What we is country that? fried steak. It's uh, it's it's a uh, a steak that's like tenderized by like beating the shit out of it, and then mm -hmm. it's battered and fried, okay, and uh, covered in uh, sawmill gravy, usually served with rice, which you also cover with the gravy. It's a very mm -hmm. healthy meal. It sounds yeah, it, Joe. yeah, yeah. Good for growing yeah. kids, growing, growing, growing young lads and lasses. That was your uh, best thing. That might have been the best thing, because the pizza was awful, and we never once ever got real food. Sometimes, like the girls who had creepy boyfriends who were like adults. Um, oh, their, yeah. boyfriend, their boyfriends would like bring them like some Wendy's or something because there was one really nearby the high school. Uh, but but no, there was no like real food coming in the doors. We had, yeah. um, you know, like you could run for student council and there was a little student government and stuff and they give you all these promises, but they can't actually make anything happen because it's just a pretend government that has no power. Yeah. Uh, Ours actually got something done. Before I got there, they implemented a salad bar. And oftentimes the best thing at our school was the salad bar. It sounds terrible, right? But it had like quality meat chicken and, you know, of course, all the salad type stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and it, like the ham at the salad bar wasn't cafeteria quality food. It was like actual quality food. That was usually the best thing around. And you could... yeah. As much as the bowl would hold, that was they didn't weigh it or anything. It would just so my bowl would just be it'd be three bowls worth of food. Yeah, huh. we had a salad bar, but it was cafe. It was like shredded lettuce with ranch or French dressing, and there you go. Enjoy. No uh, meat. Was, no no croutons and no. There no were chicken. no croutons. No no cherry tomatoes. No no uh, accoutrement. Yeah, we had <laughs> just, uh, we had those things. Shredded lettuce. I almost forgot. I, I mentioned it so many. Our school was well funded. I forgot that. Like maybe that's why everyone else didn't have that. I think. <laughs> All right. Uh... A real quality salad bar. There was an epidemic. Or I'm sure every school has this, and I'm talking about high school now, not grade school. Uh, like kids just stealing food from the cafeteria. Did that happen constantly. Where you guys Never. were? Never. How the fuck did you steal? Uh, these. So like, first of all, it was cheap as shit. It was like, and and a couple of the kids I knew who would steal all the time, one of them in particular was like, it's like, dude, your, your family's worth like five digits, like a healthy, or not five digits, like uh, <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> five, you say, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I was thinking uh, eight digits, my bad. Okay. Like 10, <laughs> not, not, not like 10.01 million, like healthily in that range. 50 million. And like, and something, yeah, yeah, very, very, very wealthy people. And like he would stuff so many sandwiches into the middle of his hoodie every day and then like i discovered later on that what he was doing is we had like our main cafeteria area and then like you could go out into like the lobby and because it was overflowed for the high school so like you couldn't fit everybody in the cafeteria some people have to sit in the lobby at like circular tables and things and he would go out there and, and sell sandwiches undercut uh the cost of it and it's like the risk reward is not <laughs> even there here like you drive a brand new mustang and you didn't pay like what you need this this 20 percent margin on a dollar 75 chicken shit to your sandwich like blew my mind but then there were also people who would steal it by going to the salad bar we had doesn't sound as nice as yours but they would just load it up with all the ham and chicken and then set it on the condiment area because foolishly it was like a half wall in this area of the cafeteria and then there were the registers and so you could just take your you know buy a one dollar sandwich put you know, eight dollars because they did weigh it of like salad over there and then just leave and walk around to the side and act like you're getting ketchup on your burger. And just grab the, the styrofoam and leave. Not secure at all. And so eventually they did get rid of the salad bar. Too many people have used that. Yeah, nothing got weighed. Lunch was a dollar twenty five and you put in your fucking like four digit code, which is the last four of your social security number. And then you moved along and you could get a double lunch for like seventy five more cents or something. Two Salisbury steaks or chicken fried steaks? Whatever you wanted. Yeah, yeah. Whatever they were serving that day, which was almost always just terrible, terrible fucking food. Yeah. That really should be a better priority. 
like getting kids healthier stuff at school. That can't be good for who's going to pay for kids. Well, I mean, I'm like, we already paid for the crappy food. I I, I hate to do politics, but is that like Michelle Obama's whole thing? Like she made school lunches healthier and everyone got mad at her. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, Republicans hated healthy school lunches. Like, oh, oh, that's the hill you want to die on. Well, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> you I won't pay the school lunch at all. If kids eat healthier. They're like, uh, you know, these. They, they said they didn't taste as good. They, they weren't as... They, I don't know, they, they're and healthier I lunches. I remember her... Am I the only one that on thinks that if... I, I saw this thing where, like, because of the pandemic, a lot mm-hmm. of the kids are staying home, right? And I get where that could really put stress on, like, uh, yeah. households, right? Like, like mm-hmm. Because she both parents pay. work. Yeah. And with, the kids you know, themselves. Pay, Paying for childcare and all that, so it that's getting a lot more expensive. But they were that that's not the point they were making. They were like, "Can you believe it? Now they've got to feed their kids at lunch. These kids were getting free lunches at the school, and now the parents have to feed them. Their parents are having to feed them all three meals a day. People you were can't saying, put that kind of stress on a parent to provide three meals for a child. It's uh, it's unreasonable. And I'm like." Maybe it was unreasonable to have some fucking kids that you can't afford to give three meals a day. You know how much oatmeal costs when you buy it in bulk? It's borderline free. It's borderline free. Like $2 buys like a pound of oatmeal. It's it's, yeah. it's like two months of food. <laughs> I've, I've never heard that, but I mean, a lot of a lot of silly people out there. I would believe it. If you can't afford to... to the, 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 and the free school lunches don't make sense to me either. Because again, if you don't have $1.25 to spare for your child's meal a day... Mm-hmm. Why did you have a fucking kid? <laughs> yeah, Why do you have a kid? Have. Like, like I don't fucking get it. I there's nothing to it. do now, though. The kid's there. You oh, there's something them. they could do. You start euthanizing those kids. Oh, so man. You didn't even think of that. I didn't even consider He's a problem it. solver. <laughs> Here we are children. paying Mr. Mac to go around and be a janitor when we got all these poor little fucks here. They're going to be earning their lunches. Imagine what that Send would do to you there. socially if you had to clean the school while you went <laughs> yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Suicide rates skyrocket. Taylor gets to study Everyone hall. Everyone meet our Woody new grabs student a mop. janitor. <laughs> this is Ollie. His mother makes poor decisions. Everybody spit on Ollie. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't, buddy. Try to, get your, try to get your garbage in the trash can, but if, if you miss, don't worry. Ollie's there for the rebound. <laughs> God. It's, it's like that Simpsons episode where they're like all on the bus on the way to a field trip. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Bopple's like, whose fuzzy wuzzy bear lunchbox is it? And Nelson's like, mine. And everybody's like, ha ha. He's like, it's not my fault. It's my mom's poor. And they're like, ha ha. He's like, it's not her fault. She's too fat to work at Hooters anymore. They won't even let her park cars. He's like, well, I'm sure even though you're poor, you still have the $7 for the field trip, right? And he's like, and they just leave him on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> that's something that you different. shouldn't have to pay for. Now, now that's where I go the other complete opposite mm-hmm. direction. I didn't like it when they charged kids for field trips. Like, oh, yeah, we're going to the aquarium. Uh, l- lunch is $8. It's like, you're taking us somewhere. You should pay for lunch. Like, like yeah, or, it's a date. Or, or, or when the, you had to pay, buy a ticket for the aquarium. It's like, no, no. You, 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 you're the one who organized this shit, Miss Smith. You should be if you don't have eight dollars a kid, you have made some poor decisions because I don't care about fish. My mom would very consistently, especially in grade school and actually all throughout high school and, and middle school, everything like if it was a field trip day, she would kind of be like, do you want to go to school or no? And I'd be like, hell no. And so, like, I just would not go to school on field trip days. Really? Do you take yeah. absent days, though? Uh, I don't know how it worked uh, my senior year. I was so close to being in trouble for the amount of absences, but you know, it, it never bit me in the ass or anything. So I technically failed high school because I missed too many days. Technically, do you have your, you got your diploma though, right? Yeah, but it's not legitimate because I missed too many days. They, <laughs> were, not, they were not required to give me that diploma. The, some numbers were changed. Really? Yeah. Wait, some numbers in the system were changed to give you the diploma or like, yeah, some, oh, well that's handy. I, I've said yeah. this before, but there was this kid in my middle school uh, there's like some stupid middle school graduation thing that they, you know, those lip service nonsense. And like everybody got their little thing where it's like, you've graduated from middle school. Hooray. And then my buddy or not, not a buddy of mine, just a guy I knew came over. He was showing everybody. I saw a big group of people laugh and he's like, dude, Taylor, check it out. And it said, Joe, 
Thank you for participating in eighth grade. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't pass, so they got him a thank you for participating plaque for eighth grade. Like and he was such up. a terror, they just pushed him through the next grade. That's how I think most kids are who should be held back, is the teachers are like, fuck this. Like, push him forward. I'm not dealing with this again. Hmm. I got yeah, that happened in a good I think bit. you could miss like five days, and I think I missed like five and a half days, because, you know, you just a class counts like a quarter of a day. So, like, mm -hmm. sometimes I just skip one class or... You know, sometimes I would skip the same class for many, many days just because I knew that it would add up and I didn't need that grade anyway. It's like, yeah, I don't care if I make a zero. Like, like I don't I don't fucking need this to graduate. I don't give a shit. Uh, I, when I was a, when I was a teenager, I realized this. If you obviously if you skip class, you get in a lot of trouble. You can't just skip class. Mm -hmm. If you come in late to school, even if it's like 60 seconds late, then you have detention after school. And that used to happen to me too often. So wow. I rode my bike to school. So it, it was really on me to like get up on time, get out the door on time, ride my bike fast enough and get to school on time. Shit. So like I'd be like in the bike racks and I'd hear the like the alarm or the bell ring or something. I'd be like, oh, late. Well, <laughs> <laughs> off I went. I will come back to school 90 minutes from now because why would I like if I'm going to get detention, let's make it worthwhile. There, there's no reason yeah. for me to be 90 seconds late for school to get all that punishment. I could skip a whole class in for a penny. Yeah, that's so a foreign penny to me. Well. Like literally no one rode a bike. Oh, well, I lived in the city. Yeah. Yeah, you'd get hit by a fucking car. <laughs> down, you'd be riding down the highway. It wouldn't work. Yeah. <laughs> no, there. I mean, there are fucking sidewalk. <laughs> hundreds of kids rode their bike to my schools. Yeah, no. you would get Every... detention if you were thirty seconds late. Oh, Every yeah. like, yeah, yeah dude, you get detention like if you were two seconds late. Like, if, we did not have that. It, like, nope. if the bell was still ringing while you walked through the door, you'd get a dirty look. But yeah, they were. Yeah, right. there was no punishment for being late to class. Um, as long as you like made it, you know, 30, 40 minutes before into, into the class, you're fine. Like, this like, was even... homeroom, by the way. Like, did you guys have homeroom? Does everyone have that? Yeah. Uh, no, we didn't have that. No, we did in middle school, uh, but not in high school. Oh yeah. So we had a, you wouldn't even call it a class. Just 10 minutes before your first class, everyone assembled there. You said the pledge of allegiance and then you mm -hmm. went to your first class. Also, he some like, announcements. You go back to your homeroom all the time. We just had like block scheduling every day. Yeah. Same. Not sure what block scheduling means. It's like, a, like B, you have longer C, class. Yeah, yeah, A B C D or A B A B or whatever it is. I just class had the one, same class. class. Two, class, three, class yeah, four. yeah. I had the same classes mm -hmm. every day, mostly. I think, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, but the first class of the day wasn't a real class. It was super short. They just take attendance, and sometimes the homeroom teacher would have things to tell you, like, "Hey, announcements." Um, yeah, some sort of announcements that didn't yeah. cover the PA system. And sometimes your your like homeroom would be like how they organize, like I don't know, vaccines or something like that. Um, sure. But yeah, that we had that in middle school, not in high school though. Yeah, there was no punishment for being late, and uh, if you could absolutely skip classes, like like just there's no punishment for skipping classes. It's just like, oh, you didn't come? No. All right. Well, you don't get credit for today. Yeah, I know. That's why I didn't come. <laughs> oh no. really? Well, oh, we we couldn't just skip class. We would get in trouble for that. But like, if you were late, what are they gonna do? You can just we make get in school suspension for that. What are they gonna do if I don't show up for that? Then you get out you of get school suspension, more. which seems like an improvement, actually. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm definitely not showing up for that. <laughs> now, now we're all happy, right? <laughs> Perfect. Like, like I, you know, I drove to school, so it was like first period was horticulture <laughs> and uh i didn't really need to learn any more about arranging flower bouquets so i just go you know drive to like uh cracker barrel and uh, sit down and have a nice breakfast and uh maybe sometimes i would just go go to the movie theater watch a movie you know <laughs> show up 30 minutes late for the second class we're all Damn. good still second class is welding oh did i miss 30 minutes of welding oh no how will i ever get my t joints right that sounds like that kind of sounds like fun going to a welding class. We didn't oh, have shop or anything welding. like that. Oh, I took welding every semester, all the way through high school. I I should be a master welder. I took. How are you at welding? Uh, I could stick two pieces of metal together just fine. That's the you job. Know, I, can, I can MIG weld uh, much better than uh, anything else, but I can stick and TIG. Um, uh. I, I picked up enough, but you wouldn't want me like welding something you wanted people to look at. That's about where I am. I can't TIG, though. 
So I'm almost there, maybe. What does that mean? Yeah, it, TIG welding is um, you've got, in one hand, you've got a torch, and mm-hmm. uh, but it's not a flame. It's, um, you've got, like, you, you hook a, a, what looks like a jumper cable attachment to your, mm-hmm. your workpiece, and then the, this thing shoots this arc of plasma, and then in your other hand, you have this like uh, very thin piece of metal, this rod that you use to like it melt melts it. as you, yeah, and you're able to do really intricate stuff. It's it's usually in my experience, it's for really intricate stuff and aluminum, uh, in particular. Does it like melt instantly when it touches the plasma? I bet pretty like, instantly. Yeah, that's something you adjust based on the the gauge of the 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 media and the uh, the the heat of the torch. But hmm. but yeah, I, I'm I'm not much of a welder, but I took eight semesters of welding. <laughs> At least it's a cool class that's offered. Like welding, that's neat. Don't imagine that there was a welding class taught because I feel like you're imagining like all of us sitting in desks and a welding teacher being like, today we're gonna learn this. That never happened once in eight semesters. Well, but then it, what's welding class? <laughs> welding class is the is the welding teacher's side hustle where he has student labor build cattle trailers oh, and then this. sells them to people. Like, like there's like three or four guys who might have an interest in like welding in the future. And those guys can weld. And so they're free labor. They're, they're building him a cattle trailer. They're, they're all over this thing. It looks like a, a, a work site that you would see in the, like when they're building the empire state building with all the men, like all mm. oh, everybody's working hard. Yeah. He's got like three or four fucking 16 year old dudes in their car hearts, just fucking welding this shit up. Was everyone okay with them having a side hustle and getting money in their pocket? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, They all did it. So in a a row, you had automotive. uh, (laughs) We called it metals, but it's welding. Uh, And then then construction, which is shop. Shop class made gazebos and garden sheds. uh, And um, metals made cattle trailers and a few other little things similar to that. Um, you know, $10,000 items. And then automotive did oil changes for people and small repair. And they were all profiting through student labor. I never took any of those. I was so jealous. I, I, I almost didn't graduate because of, because of that. My, um, my father, he would see like, oh, you could take accounting. Why would you take, you know, metalworking or woodworking when you could take accounting instead. So I do that. And there was another one called like business fundamentals and accounting Mm -hmm. too. It just went on and on. And I got these extra like academic courses. And in my senior year, they're like, you're not going to graduate. You have to take one of these things. So they slipped me in photography. But um, yeah, it was actually kind of a neat course. They did teacher hated me for good reason. But um, uh, I never had those things. I remember my accounting teacher used to roast all the other teachers and, and, and in like a self-deprecating way. She'd be like, you know, I don't know why I became an accounting teacher. This is the worst kind of teacher. I have to <laughs> actually teach you guys. I give you work that comes back to me and then I have to grade it. So after I work here, I have to work at night working more and I don't get paid very much. I could have been a gym teacher. And then she does this. She leans back, puts her feet on the table and says, run those laps. <laughs> She's like, that could have been my job. You don't see gym teachers grading at night. You know, Mr. Mulvaney over there, he's a, he's a casino dealer in Atlantic City at night. You know what I'm doing at night? Grading your papers. I could be making double money too. And and we thought it was hilarious. We all loved her rant. Although as an you didn't adult, account for that, did you? Oh, <laughs> as an adult, Teacher, I'm like, most competent accountants work for an accounting firm. <laughs> you're roasting all your coworkers <laughs> to a bunch of teenagers. Like this is so I guess unprofessional. You're not much of an accountant, are you? <laughs> <laughs> What's more, what an accountant makes or what an accounting teacher makes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't think about that. We had a. Everybody has that teacher or had that teacher rather who was the football coach who had to also work at the school yeah and one of our coaches was the football coach that was the only thing he gave a fuck about just Mm. the football coach and then he also was the gym coach and i remember he was teaching tennis one day and so our school was like all excited they like built these like two tennis courts and oh we're gonna do tennis and so and i thought it was fun like it was just a fun like activity at gym i enjoyed tennis wasn't very good Mm. but like he would 
<laughs> he was like, all right, here's how you hit uh, top spin. Just fucking no spin. Here's how you hit the slice. Like, it's the same thing. He's like, <laughs> I'm going to go up on stairs and s- smoke cigarettes. <laughs> so then he would go up and sit and like read the paper or something up on these stairs coming out of the gym that overlooked the tennis courts. And you just, that was, you never saw him. There'd be whole days where it'd be, uh, uh, we'd be like, hey, where's Coach S? And he'd be like, ah, this is one of those days he's not coming out. And it's like, all right, well, who wants to play tennis with me? Like, that was kind of how <laughs> so everybody I, played. That's how, like, every elective was. Like, mm-hmm. like the, in, every elective I ever took, the teacher didn't give a fuck, and it didn't matter what we did. Like, sign language, she didn't give a fuck. I didn't learn any sign language. I knew the alphabet. That was it. Um, um, Jim? I don't remember us ever having an organized like learning experience whatsoever. We did like no. the physical, we, we ran the mile once a year. Mm-hmm. We, uh, that's it. You never had a, <laughs> ran the mile once a that's year. It. That's you it. You didn't play soccer or baseball or tennis or football. No, never did any of those things. Um, if you want to play, if you want to shoot some hoops, uh, there's balls and hoops, uh, have fun with that. Um, otherwise, uh, everybody ready to run the mile in May? Because that's when we're doing our it. gym class Good. was training most of the time. It, it, like as freshmen, all you did is run. Um, outside of that, maybe I'm wrong. On it. Like so, I, I seem to remember a lot of like doing sprints back and forth and shit like that. But as you got older, you got dedicated. We had gymnastics, we had archery, we had golf, we had tennis, hmm. and. The coaches of the sports often taught them. They we had pretty good gym, I think. That sounds expensive. We had a basketball. Uh, then we had uh, an offshoot of gym was weightlifting, and uh, gym yeah, was required that. to take one semester of gym. But weightlifting was just a completely elective class. I took I took like two or three semesters of that because once again, I just wanted as many easy electives as possible. I didn't want any yeah. electives where like you'd have to do a thing. I learned that, and and um, what was it? Oh, it was a computer class. Where you had to like learn Excel and uh, a bunch of other shit. I had to take and, that class, Excel and Access. Yeah, I mm. cheated. I uh, I um, I got somebody else just to save all their work on a thumb drive and turned it in, and then I took it home and printed it all out, and then turned it in. And she could tell the difference between a fucking laser printer and inkjet, and she called me on it, and 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 I made a forty six. <laughs> <laughs> she could tell that all my printed out work was printed from home. And it was and it was bullshit. And I'm like, God damn it! Not only did I use all of mom's ink, I got a forty six. <laughs> Fuck! Like like this bitch is Sherlock Holmes over here solving the inkjet laser printer fucking mystery, failing me. <laughs> I learned my lesson then. Like like there's no way I'm ever taking an elective that's difficult. So then I took computer aided drafting, and uh, and similar situation. I was way behind, and uh, but the teacher like um, went to school with my mom. And uh, and and uh, and recognized me, and I was I was like, is there any way I can pull this grade up? I was like, you know, I'm at like a 50, and we got like six weeks to go here. And he's like, just do book work, you know, go through the go through the book, and uh, you know, every chapter there's a quiz at the end, just you know, fill it out and and turn it in. And so I just took a piece of paper and wrote nonsense words on it and turned in like a hundred pages of nonsense words, <laughs> like literally gibberish. Like, like if he, if he, if he even gl- gave it a cursory glance, I'd have been found out because it was like, apples are sweet and delicious. Number one, <laughs> number two, pizza pie in my eye. Oh my. <laughs> just, just like, just, I just needed words on a page and, and I had to write them as fast as possible. So no, like every like day I got to get ones. like, I had to do like five chapters a day or something. Like it was, if I tried my hardest and worked at home, I could have done it. Or I could just write pizza pie in my eye, oh my, and I could get it done in like an hour a day for six weeks. And I did that. And then I took um, things like sign language, weightlifting as much as I could, uh, medals, way as, like I said, eight semesters, construction, four semesters, um, stuff like that. Anything that was just an instant A, like, like they, you can literally sleep through those classes. They, they hope you do. <laughs> like, like you can, you don't even have to be there. Like, like th- those classes were all in a ro- in a row and, and they, uh, they all had giant garage doors that opened up to the outside world. And they had like this back lot area where they kept like all of the supplies for those classes. So like mm-hmm. oil filters and stuff were on one side and then lumber was on the other. And then metal stock was on the other, you know, like lots of metal pipes, metal, uh, sheets of metal, that sort of thing. We just hang out out there around a barrel fire all day through the winter, like doing nothing. 
ever <laughs> in yeah. our gym class. So freshmen just run. They don't pick what they do. Sophomores pick what they do, but they get last choice. The seniors and juniors pick in front of them. And then amongst the sophomores, it's alphabetical. So I'm a Woodworth sophomore, right? I'm the last of anyone in the whole school. So I'm dreaming of like archery and golf and fencing and stuff I got to do as an upperclassman. I got jazzercising. And, <laughs> and I was well, just, it's really popular, right? I was down and down. I was like, man, jazzercise is the worst. It's gay it's and you sweat man. a lot. And they're like, it's not so bad. What do you see cooches every day? And you do. <laughs> just girls doing like downward dogs and shit like that. Uh, that's what jazzercise was. Get yourself that a good seat. Pretty well. You're there early. <laughs> Woody, you know, the, I talked to the other teachers and I can't believe it. They say you're late for every other class. <laughs> <laughs> you're here 10 minutes early. Aren't you here? You're supposed to be in algebra right now? <laughs> yeah, I'm never late for cooter peeking. Yeah, but no. third period's just wrapping up and they're extra sweaty in the last 10 minutes. I like to get here on time. Uh. Oh, and then Woody, the I other you side. Again, got something in your eye and wandered into the woman's locker room again. <laughs> it's a jazzercise hazard. <laughs> You're all, all, all pepper dust lunches. <laughs> the other side of the bullshit electives at high school was the agriculture department. So like the things that I described were all in one big building, um, you know, that you had to like go through a breezeway to get to the, uh, the, the metal, sh the, uh, the automotive, the construction, they were in their building. And then on the other end of campus was agriculture and agriculture had, um, horticulture, animal husbandry. Um, there was like a, uh, there was a, 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 uh, they had pigs, they had cattle, they had chickens. That sounds kind of um, fun. They had like a big show barn where, where like kids would raise like show I think heifers. You took me there and there was a fish farm. Yeah, there's a fish farm. Um, there's wait, greenhouses. Take a second to picture this, people. You need a giant like pool or lake or something to have a yeah. a fish farm is not like a chicken farm where you just put up some fence and have chickens. It, there's some infrastructure involved in this school. It's kind of mm -hmm. like a greenhouse with really long troughs of yeah. water in it. Um, okay. And then at the end, you've got like a, a wheel that spins to aerate the water. What kind and, of fish? Uh, I think it was catfish because, again, it was... It was all about hustle. turning a profit. <laughs> it was a side hustle because, like, it, it, when the catfish grew up, you had a fish fry, and everybody mm -hmm. shows up to the school to like buy a catfish, like fried catfish, and like you know they're making catfish plates where it's like a fried catfish mm -hmm. and like some beans and rice and a roll, and it's like six bucks. And it sounds so good. I would love it some cost, fried catfish. It costs nothing, you know, it, it, and and they would sell out. They, we'd sell them all. Um, so we had horticulture, which was flowers. You grew flowers. You learned about flowers and you, you made flower bouquets. I took two semesters of that. Uh, you had animal husbandry, which is where you had to literally go into a fucking pig barn sometimes and learn, learn from Mr. Mackinson about pigs. Myers, we're, come up here and look at this sow. See how that <laughs> little in there? See, there, you got to clip the teeth of the babies or they'll, make the, they'll bite the nipple and they'll get infected, Myers. You see that? You see that right there? And I'm just like, I'm going to smell like pig shit all day. I hate this. <laughs> like, like, like I hated it so much. Cause you would like, like you're in Did a they offer showers of after pig. No! Shit Dude, no one showered at my school at any point ever. The showers were never, ever once used. I know you've said that, but I mean, like I was just asking again, because I mean, pig shit is a, a pretty rough smell. No, yeah. my, my ex-girlfriend failed that class because she refused to go into the pig barn. Cause she didn't want to smell like pig shit all day understandably i guess mm. you know yeah. like I mean, at like least make did. that a last class of the day on your schedule yeah i always tried to make gym like and and, and weightlifting like last period because you're going to come out of there sweaty as fuck and you don't want to be like sitting if in you can get economics that. yeah yeah i like the gym early on in the day my senior year because i saved my gyms for well, senior year. showers well but also like in my head it was like oh school doesn't even really begin until like after lunch now i got because that and i've said this before they accidentally fucked up my schedule where they gave me gym study hall gym study hall do you had two gyms yeah two gyms and two study <laughs> halls and uh <laughs> that's why and, you look like that 
God damn. The gym teacher, like, I needed two gyms, and so the gym teacher didn't care. But uh, the the administrator was like pissed, like ten weeks in, where he's like, "You knew this was wrong," and I was like, "What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just learning." He's like, yeah. <laughs> "But I thought and you I, needed two gyms." I did. Uh, he was mad about the study halls because you're not supposed to have multiple study halls in the same day. Oh, you're not. We didn't. We did not no. have study hall. Mm-hmm. You didn't have any no study, study halls, hall. Kyle. No, I, I. That's that's like something from like movies that i've seen um I, I i don't even know what the fuck that would that, that i mean i i it's self-explanatory what it is but it's a completely foreign concept to me we had yeah. a class called life connections Ooh, figure that one out called life skills life connections it's book. sex ed nope hmm. is it like this is how you set up your linkedin page or whatever nope that would have been good <laughs> that would have been good life connections uh it was it like, like marital advice like oh, casual, that would have been helpful too. Casual, especially in my county, all those kids are getting fucking knocked up and married a year out of high school. Is it how to get regular sex? I wish that would have been super helpful for me. Life no. connections was Life it about? Connections. Was it about like not doing drugs and things? I'm gonna cut this off because the answer is I have no fucking idea what it was about. So it, it I don't know what we were supposed to be doing in there. I have <laughs> no idea. What are the there teachers? Were two <laughs> teachers. And and we would first of all it was in a double wide trailer, um, so because because like we had plenty of money for a cattle barn, but we mm-hmm. didn't have money to put the life connections class or the sign language class anywhere but in a fucking trailer that was outside. So like, I don't know. We'd go in there and just chill, and just like, I don't remember what we'd learn. We would. It was just like it was like creative time. It's what it was. It was like mm-hmm. creative time. Like like they would be like, ah oh, yeah. Write us a report on something. What a waste of time. I wrote a report about getting a blowjob from one of the girls in class one day. That was my report. I got nobody, an A. <laughs> nobody's reading. I'm not or making maybe. this up. I know it sounds outrageous <laughs> that I did this. The teachers understood and were giggling about it. Hmm. it, it was, <laughs> I used to turn in book reports with one sentence that said, like, do you really read this? And like half the time they were circled. One teacher got mad. I didn't somehow anticipate that. But uh, <laughs> half the time they just didn't see it. Like they just, they made no reference to it. Didn't notice the sentence. They they definitely did that because I remember once it was my junior or senior year. I was very, must have been my senior year because I was feeling kind of over it. And like your bibliography or your work cited page for some research paper I turned in. And she was like, this work cited bibliography is a hundred percent wrong. Like you need to do this and that and change the formatting. And I just didn't do it. I not intended, I just forgot. And so I just like reprinted it out and turned the same thing back in and was like, Oh, she's going to be mad. No, like <laughs> she must've thought I made changes cause she, she bumped it up a bit. And it like, they really do just bullshit. Like in your head, you're like, well, there's a meticulous level of, of consistency that the teacher strives for. They, they certainly wouldn't give certain students better grades because of their own biases. That's crazy. And it's like, no, that, that shit happens. And like, I, it's exactly like, like, I swear, sometimes they'll give you like an 87 because they gave three nineties out prior. And they're like, yeah, I need, I need a little variety, a little spice here. One thing I figured I, out is the, like, say the grader doesn't know you, your best handwriting is important on your essay score. But, you know, my handwriting is below average, but if it was an essay, it's like, you got to put your best foot forward on this thing. Half of this grade, they're going to form an opinion of the author based on his handwriting as much as the words he picked. See, in English, I agree with you. English essays, very making sure everybody can read it. My end of every Italian test, all those essays, I would... I was like, I would scribble like words and like hope that she would give me the benefit of the doubt sometimes because it'd be like, oh, is it, uh, am I supposed to say mi piace or am I say, supposed to say ti piace or something like mi piace, like, mi piace or something like that. And it'd be like, if I do an O with a little flip, not quite the A, but maybe, <laughs> maybe it's, the, it's not quite an A. But I remember, I, I've said this before, but I remember writing those essays and her just looking at me like I was a fucking retard because it'd be like, all right, you know, Hundred words minimum end of the test. You know, it's right about your experience at the library, and it's like my name is Taylor. My brother's name is blah. My mom's name is blah. My dad's name is blah. 
mi piace, mi piace means I like. So it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> mi piace del vino, I like wine. Mi piace il birra, mi piace la lasagna. Mi piace. <laughs> and I'd be like, what did you eat for dinner? And I just list an outrage. <laughs> <laughs> because then also it, it would be like, say what you had for dinner and then say what you and your family talked about at dinner. And it's like, all right, if I can get 85 words out of what I ate, <laughs> I wouldn't have to say that much. And then it's like, and then I said to my brother that I like this movie. And then he said to me that I like this movie too. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a fucking joke. And I remember at the end of it, and this was a class pro tip. Anybody in college, if you really demonstrate that you're trying, teachers will give you the benefit of the doubt. I went to this teacher's office hours because I knew going in that I was going to fail Italian two because it was two and a half years since I'd taken Italian one, and. I was, I was screwed, but I went in, I did extra workbook stuff and I would show it to her. Oh, I would show her. So, I showed her so dozens of pages of work, a hundred percent wrong, but she would like, and sometimes I, uh, it got to the point where I would like flip through and be like, I'm, I'm doing the work where I would just rewrite the question <laughs> that was asked in Italian and worse handwriting. And she gave me like a C. I did not deserve a C. My speaking yeah, test. Yeah, that's fair. Fun fair. language in particular. Write something. I, I figured out early on that, uh, like, to, even if it's if you don't know what the heck is happening, write something. You'll get half credit, a quarter credit. Yep. Get, the teacher wants to give you a little credit, but if you give a blank answer, then there, there's nothing you can get but a zero on that. Just I yep. filled out a Scantron once in ink. How <laughs> <laughs> did you do that? That's stone cold stupid i it was purposeful it was oh. it was it was me sending it, it was about sending a message, a message. Yeah. a message that man this kid hates grades <laughs> yeah that was the message yeah it was literally to try to get the lowest grade i possibly could that's yeah that's a zero that will do that because it doesn't uh, read it it was below a 30 it was below a 30 i think so <laughs> kyle i don't know if you saw texas is removing all their mask mandates, and they're going to have no business closures. Have you heard this? Yes, I heard something about it. Okay, yeah. So Biden says, you know, it's too soon. Uh, we can't have this Neanderthal thinking. Mm -hmm. So I ask you, as a Neanderthal American, if yes. this is offensive. It is offensive, mm -hmm. and um, it, it, it's it's clear from from the records that the Neanderthals were not of lesser intelligence. They they just weren't as great at at, uh, team at, work, at, at reproducing yeah. and, and sort of the teamwork aspect of mm. things, you know, like, like really, he's saying that those Texans can throw spears even further than Homo sapiens. <laughs> I suppose so. Mm -hmm. Alabama stepping up big and being the intellectual of the South and saying, "No, no, no, we're going to keep our masks." I'm getting a. There are a handful of Republicans coming out, being offended by this Neanderthal remark. Marsha Blackburn defends Neanderthals following Biden criticism. McEnany rips Biden's Neanderthal remark on Fox and Friends and compares it to Hillary's deplorable insult. They're just going whole hog on this. I take your Neanderthal criticism personally. That is so fucking stupid. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Like, <laughs> you, you care, Kyle? You, you don't like the Neanderthal? I'm, two, I'm, I'm like two and a half percent Neanderthal. I, I am, mean... I'm I guarantee I'm doubling you up. I you take your test. Take the fucking test. So I, I haven't taken a test, but this is what I have. My mom took the test. And she her grade was different than yours. What she got was more Neanderthal than something like ninety seven percent of the population. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. not ninety seven percent Neanderthal. That would be pretty cro magnetic or something, mm -hmm. but but uh but more Neanderthal yeah. than almost everyone, which turns out uh it makes you COVID resistant. Yeah, mine was oh. higher than that. Um, I'm, I, I think I am like two, two and a half percent Neanderthal. I was like more Neanderthal than like ninety nine point nine percent of people tested. Uh. It, 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 the, the conclusion can only be that both of my parents have Neanderthal DNA, and that yeah. by happenstance they created me. And well, I mean, a lot of white people have Neanderthal DNA because like Neanderthals were mostly they were like chilling in Europe. Yeah. So that's where yeah. you got Eastern, like inner, yeah. inner, yeah, interbred and everything. Uh. Yeah, exactly, and just just happen to be slightly more yeah sure, are you, you italian know. taylor is that what you are i am just a fucking mutt i've, I've got a a bit of italian you know find decent out, amount find out do the ancestry dna thing i think that's what i did i think i'm I'm mostly like a mix of just everywhere in europe i think a little heavier southern european uh but you know fucking I, my brother did one and it was just a menagerie like italy was pretty big on there 
Uh, what else was? England was more than I would think. Uh, very little, like borderline no German. Mm. Uh, and then French were, were the big ones. You psyched for the UFC fights this weekend, Kyle? Not super, no, honestly. Really? Um, you know, I, I, I'm excited. I think they'll be good, but it's... Who's the big one? Like, I'm not in love with any of these fighters, and I think some of the fights are going to be one-sided. I think the Adesanya fight could be real yeah. one-sided, and right. I think the Nunez fight will be very one-sided. And um, that other guy, what is it, like P Peter? Peter Yan or something. I'm yeah. terrible at pronouncing his name because it's it's like Peter or some nonsense. Oh. But Peter. <laughs> P it's like P-E-T-Y-R. Peter. Yeah, it's just Peter. I think it's just it's, how Russians write it in English, right? Yeah, you know, like like that. I think that is the fight of the night um, because that's the one that's going to be more contested. I think I would guess, um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm interested. I'm going to watch 100, percent but uh, you know, I'm not as excited as if it's like I'm the 155 pound division is is what I'm really fascinated with. John Jones is what I'm really fascinated with. Mm. Anything he does, uh, and. Uh, uh, Valentina Shevchenko, she's she she's one of my favorites. Rose Nama Yunus, another one of my favorites. Mm. The fight to make is is Valentina Shevchenko versus Amanda Nunez too. Like that's the fight because I or is it Valentina, three? I'm not I, sure. I, I could think, be wrong. I think it's two, but I could be wrong. Um, I think that uh, Valentina won the last fight they had. I thought it was very close. It went to decision, and I was surprised when they gave it to Amanda, uh, but. That's the fight to make. She's the only one on the planet that can that can beat Nunez. Uh, Nunez is defending her 145 pound belt. In case you you weren't clear on that, because um, you know she owns two belts, obviously. Mm. It would be, but it's three. A, so Nunez has beaten Shevchenko twice in, so far. Yeah, last. I don't think she beat her in the last one. That's the one I saw. Okay, um, but I don't KO her. No. Oh way. no no! I'm looking at. I'm I'm making a mistake. Let me see. Split decision. Okay. Okay. Yeah, split decision at that. Um, so like the 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 one forty five pound division's a fucking joke without Chris Cyborg in it. Uh it's it's girls who either A have weird body types and are like just too big to make one thirty five, like too but or but lack of discipline. Correctly. Sometimes they're a little That's chunky. The other one. Yeah. They're it's it's overweight girls. And 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 sometimes they're like 40 years old, 41 years old. And like, that's part of why they're not making the weight or they just had a baby or something. It's like <laughs> the girls that you see fight at 145 are not, that is not what you would want to show someone who, that you were introducing to the sport of MMA to the, to the or to the UFC. In I general. would call it parallel to like 205, right? Which is to say that half the mm. people in that division aren't looking very athletic like daniel cormier comes to mind uh dominic reyes comes to mind um yeah there, there's just a handful of guys who are like oh everyone else is in single digit body fat so that they can make that weight but a lot of 205ers they're like 17 20 percent body fat or daniel cormier who's like something guy i don't know yeah, what what is that? Is that one seventy? Is welterweight right? Like that, that's the next class down. Mm, one eighty five is down. One eighty five. That's right. Yeah. I always forget about that one. But yeah, I think it's I think it's one eighty five pounders. There's a lot of one eighty five pounders in the two hundred five division who just don't have a lot of, uh, sure. you know, willpower or whatever it would take to to drop that other ten pounds of fat that they're carrying around that they need to, to drop to get down to to that weight class. But they're still like pretty damn effective at 205 and 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 maybe that maybe they're on the bubble right they're like ah i don't know if i'm the same me if i'm cutting all that weight and then still if i'm if i lose the weight and i cut weight like like whereas right now i'm just showing up i feel so good you know so who knows i think it, i think it could go both ways depending on someone's frame but yeah if i were just introducing someone to ufc and like, like these are the best athletes in the world the deadliest men and women in mm -hmm. existence like oh yeah like there's a 145 pound women's fight tonight. Should I watch that one? No, no, you shouldn't watch. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Everything I said is true. It's true. I promise. But don't watch that because you're going to see like the toughest chick at your gym who, who's like 15 pounds overweight fight tonight against a murderer <laughs> from fucking Brazil. Megan That's Anderson probably doesn't. She looks pretty good to me. I'm going to give you a picture. She does. Uh, she's not an example of what I'm describing. She's also in a title fight. So there's. 
Yeah. She's yeah, she looks not, ready to throw some some bruisers. She looks fucking hot too. I like like strong too. She has big biceps. And big legs. Big biceps, like like big pecs. Like like yeah, I I'm, just saw I'm that. not making a titty joke. Like like she's got like nice pecs. She's got a great body, and she I think she's pretty damn attractive for an MMA fighter. Look I at like that pecs. under the belly button area, Woody. <laughs> Is there hair there? Yes, there is. Oh, a little bit. Am I missing it? Oh, it looks like there's something there. I need to zoom. That's a good looking lady. There's um, a tattoo there. Is she tall? I don't know. Uh, 145. She's probably a big girl. Yeah. Yeah. If, I mean, look how lean she is. And that's 145 pounds. That's and she's a, a favorite? Mm -hmm. No. 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 She is fighting um, the greatest women's fighter ever. Who's that? Rose you, Amanda no, Nunez. Amanda Nunez. Amanda Nunez. The boxer firmly, who beat up. Uh, Woody, do you think Amanda Nunez could beat all three of us up? Not at the same time. Oh, yeah. One at a time. Oh, and, oh we, we, we could gangbang her if we wanted to. Like, like, don't we could do anything we wanted to Amanda Nunez three on one. I'm saying if how about this? Because this gives us she this might gives be us, able to. This gives <laughs> us even more of an edge. She, do, she has to face us all in secession. Can mm. I go last? Not I'm a bad choice. Last. Okay. I'm fair. going last. Woody has to take her fresh. Right, Woody, <laughs> I'm first. getting screwed. <laughs> and then uh, Kyle, you and I will rock, paper, scissors for second. She just <sighs> hits like a ton of bricks and her jet <laughs> sister. I, she, she'd be a challenge. She'd she be a, box a real challenge. She's, she's an, everything. She can do she's it all. an MMA fighter. She's... Oh. Well, she'd, she'd win then because none of us are professional MMA fighters. She's a 135 pound girl, Taylor. You're a yeah, but like, you know all the... the, the the, the flips and the dipsy doodles. Irrelevant. Or, look, look, at some point, bigger is better, okay? Like, like, like Bruce Lee can't beat up an untrained 300-pound gorilla yeah. man. I mean, I mean like... At Joe Lozon has said he can't beat Shaquille O'Neal. But he can beat up Bruce Lee. How much do you need to be able to curl for her to put you in, like, an arm bar and you just go... Just I don't think... <laughs> she can't arm bar you. Why? Because you're too strong. Okay. So Maybe. and you're too big. I don't think she can armbar Taylor. It I, somewhat I think depends he, I on think... what he's wearing too, right? Does he have clothing he can grab and, and keep it in there? Because here's Taylor's very strong, but he's not going to be stronger than Amanda Nunez's back if she's like holding his wrist and arching. Uh I bet I, I would, can keep her from. Moving I would be interested okay. to see that because I mm. I think Taylor could probably curl like. Like a, his one rep max is probably 165, 170 pounds. With one arm? That sounds too yeah. high. No, no, no. With one arm. With two arms. So like with one arm, if he's generating 80 to 90 pounds, like she weighs 135. He can almost curl her body weight. And her she's, back is easily going to be able to straighten to 200 pounds. It, it would have to be like some sort of smothering approach where you're just, you try and just get on top. And just be too big, right? Like, what you want to put your you want to get your hands on her. You don't want to like strike with her. You don't want to. Oh be yeah, kicking like her. I could get like a wrist in my hand. There's no way she could remove. I, I do I, know this. There is zero percent chance that she could get her wrist out of my hand if I wanted it to stay. There's I, no. Way. I don't think so either. And and look, I, for anybody listening to this and laughing, I don't. I think Amanda News could beat the shit out of me just to be just to work. Yeah, she's clear. a professional. She'd beat all. I think. Stuff. I think she would. I think she could probably beat me to death. Um, I might survive, but she probably could beat me to death i'm wondering if maybe if i curl up just right she can't kill me <laughs> that, 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 that's where my thought process is i'm suggesting she has to fight me then woody and then taylor and then i think we got her i think we got her because she's gonna be fucking tired after getting through me and woody it's gonna take a couple minutes each she better be our cardio will be on a similar level by that point <laughs> She's a real problem. I she's gonna hurt me. I don't want. To. Well, your job she, is to just soak up time and if she, if she just, worked leg kicks too, like like oh if my she just God. if she just worked the leg kicks and crippled us and just picked <laughs> us apart, that would be so upsetting. Ouch! That stings. Ouch! That stings. No, that's not what you would say. You would you would she kick you? Yeah, so it'd give you like a horrible Charlie horse after a few kicks, and you just cramp up terribly, right? You'd be limping. You'd be limping. Yeah. After, I'd be limping after one. There'd be a disconnect between your mind and your muscles, right? There'd yeah. be nerve damage. Temporary. And if she's if she's getting the back of the knee or something, something high around the knee joint too, like inside working inside leg kick, outside leg kick, picking up the same leg. No, you know what? I sprint four off the start. Superman punch done in one second. That that's what you'd want to. You'd want to like swarm her because you maybe I, the thing that she's best at that I'm worst at has got to be 
leg kicks and checking leg kicks in that order. Like, like mm -hmm. I can't check a leg kick. I have no idea. I, there's no way of dodging it. There's no way my foot position is going to be even borderline correct. I'm and seeing right. it coming. First of all, I bribed the ref. Second, I have I have some. Oh, I ref. see it coming, and I watch it connect. And no, then because I'm scream. watching hands, and I've got my own hands up. I'm like, oh, all yeah, right, yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, there's like leg kicks coming at me. I'm like, that's the motherfucker from nowhere. Like, like, <laughs> I, I wish we could watch clips because, like, like the, the cyborg fight is a perfect example of why she's so goddamn scary. Like, yeah, I'll like, watch the clip. I'm sure that's on YouTube. Amanda yeah, Newton find, find Amanda News versus Cyborg. It's like a 40 second clip. Like she hurt. She's so heavy handed and so accurate. Yeah, I think. I don't. Uh, I. I don't know. I don't my know. My strategy I, with her would be to be very polite and try and get on her good side. Yeah, learn how to <laughs> say, "Please don't hurt me" in Portuguese. Right? <laughs> no, no, sorry, kick. Kick off. <laughs> kick off my leg off. I, what happens if you kick a woman between the legs, like in the UFC? Can they shake it off? Is it different than anywhere else? I think it's no, illegal. I've, you can't do that. Uh, they, they give them the. They give them. It, it is. It's a low blow still, and uh, I've seen them. I've seen low blows where they give them the like five minutes for for like a cunt kick. So is it the same? The it's not the same though, right? Like like. No. Okay. It's not the look. Same. It's awful to get punched in the belly. But it's also part of mixed martial arts. It, it's awful to get punched in the chin. It's awful to get kicked in the thigh. Is a cunt kick on a different level than all of these other things I just mentioned? Yeah, yeah. I think it's a super sensitive area for sure. Yeah. It's just, but, but, right but, but our balls are just on another level of sensitivity. Mm -hmm. it, that's our quit button for a lot mm. some, some people. For me, if there's a delayed thing, if I get kicked in the balls, like be. The, the real rough part isn't going to kick in for about five seconds. Uh, and you see that in the UFC, they'll take it, and then there's like it's like one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, it's, it's, it's rough. And Amanda Nunez is beating the shit out of this lady. And that and look lady at the is opponent. a bad motherfucker. Yeah. That, that's yeah. a lady who abused steroids. Yeah, look oh. at her head. Look at her. She borrowed it from Joe Rogan before the fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe Rogan called her, uh, made some comments about her appearance that he had to apologize for. So did Dana White, the president of the UFC, called her, said she looked like uh, Wanderlei Silva in a dress. Which is and, a great line. And, and Wanderlei is, or Vanderlei, however it's pronounced, is a very unattractive man. <laughs> he can't even call his own employees ugly. What a world. Not sure she was working for the UFC Yeah, she at the was time. with... Um, Bellator or somebody, Pride or some shit. Invicta, I don't know. Oh, well, since we're on this topic, I, I think something that even the non MMA listeners will enjoy. Okay. Gabby Garcia talk. Oh, okay. what does that mean? Gabby what? Garcia talk, boys. Who's that? Oh my fucking God. She's the bitch that Woody linked to us in WhatsApp the other day that looks like a fucking brick shit house. Oh. She's six fucking one, 210 pounds lean. Oh yeah, it says six two here, dude. I'm I'm posting a picture. Everyone's looking at her. She's not that lean in this shot, but Big. good god. Yeah, that's an old. That's that's from years ago. That's a like, two hundred and five like, pound man. He fights two hundred five next to her. That's Fonda. All Silver. natural. No, she she does. You can even hear it in her voice. She's I got know. like masculization of her uh, vocal cords. Um. That's a woman who's not doing one of the any of the female friendly steroids, the the um, the the non androgenic ones or whatever. She's going full horse. Like she's probably she's doing like testosterone and testosterone derivatives. Like she's on real actual man steroids. Like a lot of ladies will take uh, oxandrolone or something at a low dose because it doesn't have those uh, those masculine masculinizing side effects. This chick is on some uh, some stuff that has made her Ooh. into, I mean, for like Derek talked about this, like mm -hmm. she's clearly an elite athlete, natural, but she yeah. has stepped that up to a scary level. And not only that, she's like, I think Derek said this, she's a hyper responder to whatever she's taking as well. So this is like five star in all three categories that make an enhanced athlete scary as fuck. Naturally, she'd be a bad motherfucker because she's mm -hmm. six two. Or six one, whatever's legit. Probably six one. If we're being fair, these are all the same women. Look how like I'm not sure she's natural in any of these shots. Uh, if you're watching the video, I just I just sent them the ones you see mm -hmm. one by one. She doesn't look natural. I'm on the last one now, but she's hot. What she turned into, 
Good God. Like um, I saw her very recently. Did you watch her Instagram video where she's calling out that man for a fight? No. No. So she she's far away from this like hulking physique she has wearing the yellow Ultimate Fighter jersey where she looks disgusting. She looks like fucking Private Pile from Full Metal Jacket. She's got that look in her eyes and everything. She's like, I am in a world of shit. She's fucking <laughs> melting down scary as fuck there. But in the bottom one, that's got to be like six years ago when she's like borderline bikini physique, like mm -hmm. super sexy, looking great, but still strong as hell. Um, I want to find the one of her calling out the guy. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm trying to find that. But I've never been on her page before, so it's all new. Fucking huge. Fucking yeah. huge. She's a giant lady. <sighs> I don't know. She's Brazilian, I, so she's got that disgusting accent, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What a shame. Of course she's Brazilian. Brazilian people are so into MMA. They used to have a lot of the champs. Not so much anymore. Yeah. It was a big cultural thing down there. and uh, But, you know, the other countries caught up. And the sport changed. Jits became, I mean, you know, more ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the the guys that were coming out of the you know collegiate wrestling in the U.S. learned jits. The boxers that were coming out of Europe learned jits. Like everybody caught up, and it was no longer kryptonite. It seems like defensive jits is a little easier to catch on to. You know, so guys they they work for even just two three years, and suddenly jits doesn't work on them very well. Yeah, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So it's a whole lot easier to defend something than to. You know, to make it happen. Motion. Yeah, to make it happen, oh, which that's... probably isn't true for striking. It seems like striking would be the opposite. It'd be it'd be more easy to uh, make to it happen than defend. Than defense. Like mm -hmm. to defend, you've got to be like looking at their feet and like understanding what what their footwork means, like like how their feet are planted. If it's going to be a hook, a jab, a straight, or whatever. Like I don't know. Like like where's their head position? Where how are their shoulders? Uh, you know, you've got to like, like a... read that. No baseball hitter you know he's not so much watching the ball trajectory although he is he's also watching the pitcher's release and the pitcher's like right yeah, yeah. am i on target yeah yeah with, you're on target with ping pong you know like I, I i've hit back things i'm like i don't even know how i did that i just yeah. saw and goalies probably do that too they they, they see mm -hmm. a slap shot coming they're not looking at the puck so much they just sort of knew where it was going yeah. yeah what you just what you just were saying about baseball that's one of the things that really distinguishes good pitchers from great pitchers like like they'll point it out a lot if you're watching a game like uh, i remember one of the braves pitchers he's a young guy i can't think of his name right now but they, they were like look his release point is the exact same with his change up and his fastball like like his motion is exactly the same you know change up is an off-speed pitch he's <laughs> he's he's mixing it up between 78 miles per hour and 93 miles per hour and the the difference in speed means that their timing is never right mm -hmm. so like if your release is the exact same every, well, on both pitches, the batter never knows what's fucking coming. And then you mix in a breaking ball and it's, it's a whole other mess. It's a good pitcher. Any the Braves case, that guy right now? Well, maybe they're back on the upswing. Uh, Braves will be in contention again for the NL. Um, they made some good moves in the offseason. Dodgers did too, but it's going to be Dodgers or Braves. Those are your top two teams. Who else is in their division with them? In the National League or who's good? Oh wait, the the National League is half the teams, right? Yes. Okay, I, I meant division. I don't know the divisions in baseball. Ah, well, the the Dodgers are. Well, I mean, obviously, Dodgers are out west, and mm -hmm. the Braves are in the east. Okay, which is why maybe I'll watch baseball this and, year. I won't, but maybe uh, I. We got some third baseman named Arnado or something. That the only thing that matters less than the here. the only thing that matters less than the MLB regular season is the NBA regular season. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to watch, have fun. I'll, I'll wait till. Uh, you October. know what matters less than basketball? Hockey. I just feel like in basketball, one seeds almost always beat eights, twos almost always beat sevens. In hockey, regular Something season's there. over. Yeah, it could go either way. It just. Well, because they, I imagine in basketball they call the game the same way in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. In hockey, like mm -hmm. you can. You can do whatever you want, and like it's it's understood the refs are going to swallow the whistle most of the time. Like, you know, they know people don't want to watch playoff hockey where there's a penalty every five minutes, so they just let you rough them and cross check. That's true. I also believe hockey has a bigger random factor. 
I don't know if it's the deflections or just what, but there's a random factor in hockey that seems to account for outcomes more so than basketball or football. Yeah, it could be that. I mean, I think a lot of it's also parity um, Mm -hmm. because like Connor McDavid is the best player in the NHL by far. The Edmonton Oilers can't play him all night like LeBron can get played. Like you just can't. Like if they have him out for half the game, the story's like, he played 30 minutes out of six. He, he won't be able to play two games from now. What do they do? Are those idiots, they're playing in more than like 22 minutes. Like, That's like interesting speed. about yeah. hockey. Like, like, I don't know what it is. Like, why is substituting such a big part of hockey and not basketball? This is probably a stupid question to people that know. But you go in hmm. basketball and people just putting forth like 70% effort normally. You don't sprint all the time in basketball. Everyone jogs up and down the court. Mm-hmm. Why don't they sub in some feisty guy who just sprints constantly, puts in 100% effort for two minutes, and then sits again and rests? Why is this effective in basketball? I'm sorry, in hockey, but not other sports. Yeah. They should do that. That makes a lot of, like, because originally, like, old school hockey, it was like, oh, they, you know, the guy's just out there until he wants to take a shift. And then some coach was like, hey, if if we have everybody got there for like one minute and you're going balls to the wall and then you come back, we get a real advantage. And everybody else goes, Oh shit, we have to do that now too. Cause we can't be having a bunch of, you know, people in 1950s skating around for six minutes, getting blown out. Yeah. That's, that's I would really imagine you could do why, that in basketball. Why don't they do that in basketball? What are the rules and subs in basketball? You have to wait until, cause I mean, in hockey, you can switch oh, during right. the play. in yeah, basketball. Yeah. You got to wait until what a, a stoppage. I, or I think you do need a stoppage, but, I, I, but still they come very regularly. Yeah, ball goes out that's of like a problem with basketball. Foul, every time the ball goes out of bounds, like like it's continuous. So I don't yeah, know the rules. There has completely. to be a reason that there, they don't do this. I'll say this. I don't know what the rules are, but I know they're not taking full advantage of and substituting every opportunity they get. It they're has not to doing be that. something about salary cap or star power. Like like it has to be that like a depleted LeBron James is just worth so much bet more than a fresh anybody. It yeah. has to be, or maybe just uh, a press offense, press defense, just isn't effective in modern NBA where they get to like. I I, I said this a couple weeks ago, and so many basketball guys got mad. I'm, I'm getting PMs like in the NBA they're allowed to to set up, collect themselves, and then they get to take three full steps, and then they're allowed oh. to take two steps up a step ladder, and then they, <laughs> and then they hop on their trampoline. Just below, and it's just like you're. You're just you're not you're making my case for me that it's nonsense. Mm-hmm. Like you're making my case for me. I don't understand doing. traveling, and I try. But they can because like I guess in like college or or high school they're allowed to take less steps. Okay, and it's like, how does that make sense? It should be the other way around. There should be more steps. It's like it's like that's how that's how collegiate football works. Like like what's inbounds versus what's out of bounds is a little looser. It should be like, once you football. get to this superhuman giant level of basketball, they take a step away because everyone in this yeah. league can get from the top of the key to dunking it in three steps. Mm-hmm. So you like only in, get two. In college football, I want to say you just need one foot down for it to be a catch. And in NBA, NFL, I think you need two. That sounds right. It's like, it's like, all right, that makes sense. All right. The, it's a higher skill level game. Okay. They just decided the that- NFL, if you're down, you can get back up and run again. Also, if no one touches you, whereas in college, if you're down, you're down. I think. They should make uh, the ball bigger, harder to I score. I didn't know that. I didn't know that if that's the case. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, sports are silly. Uh, some of them mm-hmm. more than others. Sports are fun. It's, it's fun to, I mean, like if it's a sport you like, it's fun to just kind of lackadaisically follow it. Like it's something that like in my, like just mindless, like Woody might be the same with, uh, with basketball. Like I'll watch non blues games for hockey just cause I like the sport a lot. And then like, I'll just spend time like on my phone. Like, I wonder what that player I haven't thought about since 2009 is up to. He's still in the league. Wouldn't you know? Oh, what are his stats? That. Let me go to the years. Oh, oh, he had a really good playoff in 24. And I just, I'll just like go on a, a goose run of just looking up all the different teams and comparing. And it's, sometimes, it's just fun. Sometimes there'll be a college guy that just let the world on fire. It's like, whatever happened to that guy? How do you work out? Also, I have never lost a professional game, right? I, uh, my team has won several championships. My team often makes the playoffs, but that team sucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I am my, 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 whether it's we won or they lost, things are always good for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always they lost too. Well, yeah. right now, those bastard flyers are losing to the Penguins. But they'll bring it back at the third. They lost the last one too, and you said that they almost did. They came back two, three, I think, and then they five two. I call. Yeah, 
Yeah, Blues are playing a little better. They're, I think the Blues play the... We're going to have a lot of our $5 bets in April because of Kyle with the Avalanche and the Blues because of there's the COVID schedule. I think Colorado had some like COVID nonsense. They, nobody had it, but like it was a procedural thing. And so oh, they missed every early season game. And so I think the Blues play the Avalanche seven times in April. Mm, so, okay. $35 on the line. Oh, all right. So, Kyle okay. has been making bucks yeah. <laughs> i don't know if this is a topic we can talk about but he did yeah. kyle's I've poker been doing right. has become a profit center not yeah, just so, you, uh, little people have cleaned up a decent amount of money in these these pokers so yeah uh if you guys want to play in our little uh poker game um in the 50 dollar uh uh patron discord link down below to our patreon um you you could very easily make that 50 bucks back in a i don't know 30 seconds Playing in our uh, our little cash game we have every night, um, we don't take a rake or anything because that's crime. So we uh, we just play a little friendly cash game, um, you know, small stakes, and uh, we usually play six to eight or nine handed or something, whatever the to- table will hold. We usually got a full table, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've been playing, um, I don't know, some somewhere between six and twelve hours a day. Um, you win and, literally uh, every day, Kyle. Have you had any down days? I must have had a down day. <laughs> Not in recent memory. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, it's it's all about like the total overall winnings and losings. Um, we were playing tournaments and uh, where, you know, you pay the first, second and third place guy in the tournament and everybody else gets nothing. Mm-hmm. It's my least favorite kind of poker. It's not. It's, it's my least favorite. It's not the kind of poker that I grew up playing. It's not the kind that I played for a living. It's, it's what I'm least familiar with. It's, it's not even what I like to watch on TV. It's, mm-hmm. it's very different. It's like, oh, I got a good hand. Everything in the middle because the implied um, odds are just wonderful. It's like, oh, if I double up or even triple up here, then I'm the chip leader and I can just say check over and over until it's just me and one other person left. I'm just guaranteed money. Whereas and and also the blinds are always going up. The the, the forced bet, uh, it it's always increasing over time. This is to weed out weaker players and to force them. How is a blind decisions. different than an ante? Is it the same thing? So it's very similar. So um, in Texas Hold'em, you have a small blind which might be a dollar, and then you have the big blind that follows right after it to the to the left, you know, clockwise, um, which will be two dollars. It's usually double, but it mm-hmm. varies a little bit. You could be one and a three. And then an ante would be a, a, a compelled bet from all the players. So it would usually be much smaller. So let's say the you'd have like a small blind would be a dollar, big blind would be three dollars, and then everybody would ante fifty cents is it, who who wasn't in the smaller big blind. Um, so it, it just an ante happens before you see your own cards, and a blind is when you decide that you like your cards negative. enough to play. Okay. Um, they, these are all examples of um, um, compelled bets, forced bets that that just happened now we don't use an ante uh it's something that's often used in uh cash games and poker games it's a rule set variation it's not something we do we also don't allow straddling which i'm not going to get into it's just more poker nonsense. so the only difference between an ante and a blind is whether it happens at the very beginning or when you it's your turn no um <laughs> these are all these are all compelled bets that happen every time you're dealt a hand. exactly the same they are exactly the same. It's the amounts that they are that are different. Oh, okay. The only difference between an ante and a blind is that blinds are not the same for everybody. They're rotating around. So I'm the dealer. The guy to the left of me, he is the small blind. He has to put in a dollar. The guy to the left of him is the big blind. He has to put in $2. Everybody at the table has to put in 50 cents who isn't the small blind or the big blind. Now I'm going to deal you all cards. The next hand, this guy is going to be the dealer. That rotates to the left. What's the now logic the of the blind? You just get fucked? No, you, it's it's only a dollar or two dollars. It's, it's it you to be more invested in the game as it goes on, like so nobody's sitting back. It adds a complication to the game, and it's a compelled bet, so there's money in the pot. But everyone but, everyone's glad they're not the blind. No, I want to be the blind. It, it it's a it's a great way to disguise the strength of my hand. So how explain that? How can you just how are you disguising the? If I'm the big blind, 
then I'm in the hand no matter what, unless someone raises it. So I could limp with a very strong hand and they have no idea where the strength of my hand, for example, you could do. Uh, so you put the, in the, two the position you're playing in is also very important. You know, if you're first to act or last act, if you're the first to act, then oftentimes that's a very strong position. You're you can raise if if the actions to me and then to you every time we're playing heads up and uh, and I'm the one who gets to act, you know, the flop comes out six, yeah. seven king. It doesn't matter if I got a six or seven or a king. I can put ten dollars in the pot and now you have to make a decision. The money's already there. Mm-hmm. Like, like you have to make a decision now. Whereas if I were in that, that seat over there, you could be doing that to me. I, I have the option to bluff or to bet into Taylor, you. did I, he I'm, explain why you want to be the blind and I missed it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand what he's saying with that. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like, I wish I was the blind every time. It's like, you're saying you the, take advantage of it when you have it, like you get a good hand and you're the big blind. You can fool your way into people thinking you don't have what you have. You usually can, if, if someone as, as the big blind, if everyone just calls, if, if, if I'm the big blind, I'm in for my $2 already. Everyone to the left of me begins acting. Fold, mm-hmm. fold, 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 call. He puts his $2 in. Call. He puts his $2 in. Fold, fold. Small blind says, yeah, I'll put one more dollar in. And then now I have my option. I can check, which means pot's good, or I can raise. I'm the last So act. what's happening with this being big blind is you're prepaying. Everyone else will pay if they want to stay in there. Yes. And it, and it evens up. So in yeah, the very yeah, it beginning, rotates around. it kind of, no, it's not the rotating. It, well, it, in that hand, it rotates around. Everyone mm-hmm. catches up to your $3 beginning. When you first explained it, you were like, I have to pay $3 to play. Everyone else gets to pay less. That's what it sounded like. And I'm like, no. oh, well, this just blows. But you're yeah, saying. Yeah, the minimum to, to get to the flop, you know, the three, the three initial cards that are dealt out on the board is going to be what the big blind is. Unless the pot's raised and then you have to call that. But the least amount of money that you're ever going to pay to see a blind in this scenario, to see, to, to see a flop, to continue with your hand, is $2. You're either fold or call or raise. These are your three options. Okay. In any case, we have a, a very lively game. It's a lot of fun. So if you want to play. Uh, I know a couple of people have joined the patron just to play poker, and they've done pretty well so far. I want some patron, some new $50 guru to come in. Mm-hmm. And, and just sure. start cleaning up. And Ganu's going to... Kyle hey, Ganu. The Who's the guy we had on the show, the pokey player, who's not a professional Negranu. fighter? Negranu. Negranu. It's very close. <laughs> well, we also had uh, Doug Polk on. He's a poker player. No, we didn't. No, we... I was suggesting him as a, as a future guest earlier. Um, yeah, if we had Negranu on, it'd be fun to watch him clean up and take the money. Sure. I Although, guess he would. Like, yeah, I mean, we're playing such small stakes, it's kind of weird. You know, mm. the, the, the higher the stakes, the, the higher the skill level, because, you know, people don't want to get out of hand and do silly things when there's hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars or tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in play. You know, when you watch, like, the big cash games on TV where everyone's sitting there with between 100000 and a $1 million, and that can be at risk at any point, they don't step out of line too much. Yeah, it must be weird to play with big dollars like that. Like, yeah, the most I've ever played is like $2, $2, $5. So, you know, the minimum you're ever going to pay to see a flop is $5. And uh, in poker, like a standard pre-flop raise, like, like let's say I've got a good hand, I want to raise it to sort of get a bunch of people to fold because I don't want to play against five people if I've got pocket aces. The odds of one of their, someone's got an eight, nine, the odds of them making a, uh, uh, a, a, uh, a straight are pretty good. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know what this is. I told you we've had him on the show. We had this guy on the show? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> I don't remember that. I don't remember that at all. That's funny. I know. Yeah. It all blends together. All, it all okay. blends together. I guess we did have Doug Polk on the show. I'd love <laughs> to have him again. I've, I've been watching his content recently. Yeah, um, his deep fakes yeah. are getting good, aren't they, Kyle? <laughs> yeah, they're good. really good. This one courtesy of a PK clip channel. You know, <laughs> but, expert but yeah, we used to play uh two five a little bit. That was the bigger game that I played in. So you, you kind of, you have to sit down with $500 to at all, be at all competitive, but most people would sit down with a thousand to $1,500. And so the pots can some t- one hand you could win or lose, you know, $3,000 potentially, but that's as big a stakes as I've ever played. And that's, that's not that crazy. 
like i mean it's it's no fun to lose a thousand dollars but it's not life-changing <laughs> money um but what we're playing is um what usually 10 cents and 25 cents or 25 cent 50 cents like it's a, it's it's a much smaller game but um mm -hmm. a lot Most of some fun. money you know it's no limit so things can get a little ridiculous yeah and every so often some people put in quite a bit yeah yeah they do <laughs> you got <name> <laughs> <and> names <laughs> no 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 i won't i won't i won't call anybody out who's lost a thousand dollars this week I, I wouldn't do that to him <laughs> you know no, certainly not i Damn, wouldn't, I wouldn't, awesome. I wouldn't talk about folks that just keep coming back for more because i i i enjoy the company so much and i appreciate them as people exactly <laughs> Not having just having fun dominating poker. <laughs> no, it's just a good. It's just fun to play. Just a good time. It's all luck. So before we jump into the next thing, because I can see Woody's about to start something, we're going to hear from Goat.com. If you're buying sneakers online, there's a good chance that the shoe you're looking at is a fake. How can you be sure it's real? Well, Goat.com is the safest way to buy and sell authentic sneakers online. They're the largest marketplace in the world for authentic Yeezys, Jordans, and over 600,000 sneaker listings. They made the whole process frictionless and trustworthy. They do this by only accepting sellers with the best reputation and by verifying all sneakers to ensure their authenticity for buyers. Every detail is inspected from the stitching and color to the size and weight. Goat certifies that ex that every pair of sneakers on their site matches the exact factory specifications. With over half a million sneakers on the platform and 10 million users, you will not find a better place, uh, you won't find better prices rather, for verified 100% authentic sneakers anywhere else. Find the perfect 100% authentic sneaker at goat.com slash PKA. That's goat.com slash PKA. Plus, you'll also be supporting the show, but you gotta go right now before the sneakers you want are gone. So when you go to, so when you go to goat.com slash PKA, spelled G-O-A-T dot com slash PKA, Put in the PKA and get yourself a nice little nice little discount. So check that out. Get yourself some verified 100% authentic sneakers. This episode of PKA is also brought to you by ExpressVPN. Wonderful service. Very useful. I have it. Woody has it. Kyle has it. Admit it. You think that cybercrime is something that happens to other people. You think that no one wants your data or that hackers can't grab your passwords or credit card, credit card details, but you would be wrong. Stealing data from unsuspecting people on public Wi-Fi is one of the simplest and cheapest ways for hackers to make money. When you leave your internet, encrypt, your internet connection unencrypted, you might as well be writing your passwords and credit card numbers on a huge billboard for the rest of the world to see. That's why we decided to take action which is why we are recommending you to get ExpressVPN to protect yourself from cyber criminals. ExpressVPN secures and anonymizes your internet browsing by encrypting your data and hiding your public IP address. ExpressVPN has easy to use apps that run seamlessly in the background of your computer, phone, or tablet. Turning on ExpressVPN takes just one click, a single click, turn it on. Using ExpressVPN, I can safely surf on public Wi-Fi without being snooped on or having my personal data stolen. For less than $7 a month, you can get the same ExpressVPN protection that I have. ExpressVPN is rated the number one VPN service by TechRadar and comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you don't like it, you can get your money back, but you won't because you'll like it. Protect your online, online activity today and find out how you can get three months free at expressvpn.com slash PKA. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S vpn.com slash PKA for three months free with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash PKA to learn more. Three months free with the PKA code. So take advantage of that. Nick's online. Who From all those bastards trying to steal your info on, on public Wi-Fi. It is one of the best VPN services out there. It is. It's the best one. That's why all three of us use it. Number one. Oh, I just want, if you're done with that, I just want to defend that that gentleman that that Woody was so scurrously <laughs> defaming a few minutes ago, who lost a little bit of money in the poker game. That gentleman's. I don't know how many planes his family owns. That's but, what I want to know. I want to talk plural. to him about his plane collection. Yes, but it's plural. The, you know, I, um, I'm into aviation a little bit. I know some planes. I wonder what he has. Yeah, I'll ask him. You know, yeah, maybe, maybe a little, little topic. I'd like to know. Does he know how to fly him? Has he uh, mentioned that? I haven't asked that, but I would imagine that there is a pilot on call. Oh, this isn't like a couple of... His dad's not, you know, an adventurous he guy. He doesn't have an $80,000 single engine Cessna. No. Um, oh, this is like a jet. Like he goes on vacations and I, things. Look, I, I'm, I'm going to find out. Um, uh, what, what I'm trying to say is the gentleman's family is is uh, very wealthy. Yeah. From what I'm told. 
We're giggling so, at him for losing a hundred dollars, and he's like, "I wipe my ass with a hundred dollars." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 all fun and games, um, you know. As he often says, he's just like, "I'm just having fun here, guys," because you know they'll they'll talk a little smack when they beat him, and uh, but a real nice guy. I, I enjoy his company. Yeah. So I was. Uh, I'll link this video because I I was on stream today, just doing a little little joking around. And someone, I think, mentioned the comments. You have to go to the comments and search newest on this video because the Helen Keller conspiracy has been sitting up long enough that now well-meaning people trying to learn about Helen Keller have <laughs> tens of thousands have found it. And so I was scrolling through reading the comments. Do I sort by is, newest? Yeah, sort by new. It is so fucking funny. Like, <laughs> these people are so mad. Shame on you, dragging a 19th century disabled woman. What's the point? Great job, hero. You've made such a difference. <laughs> He's full of crap. She worked on her for hours. They can do anything as long as they're willing to try. He's filled to the top with crap. <laughs> <laughs> the movie, this one's good. The movie should be called Crouching Retard, Hidden Genius. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> There, there are people, people right now who use the same techniques as Keller to communicate and who are deaf and blind. It's not rocket science. My grandmother also met Keller in the 60s. She was a nurse and said she was definitely not a fraud as to having <laughs> met others who were both deaf and blind. <laughs> I don't believe her. I think she's fibbing. Based on the amount of times the R word was thrown around, I thought this video came out in like 2010. But it came out seven months ago. <laughs> when functioning members of our society are throwing it around like that, I'm alarmed. There's half a million views. <laughs> <laughs> the moment you said retard, I was gone. Mm. So our boy has a P51 Mustang, Ooh. a Sabre, and a DC3. God damn. So a DC3, that's a thing people have? I don't know what that is. I don't I either. I know what a P fifty one Mustang is. I don't yeah. know anything about planes. So a DC three. I didn't know regular people. Okay, so that it, it, it's like an older. I don't even know. Small passenger plane. Uh, of course, everyone knows a P fifty one Mustang. Those there's only so many of those, and they're very expensive at this point. Millions, I think. And I just looked it up. It's two point two five million for the Mustang. And uh, I don't know what a DC three costs, but not sure. Saber plane for sale. Wait, F one hundred. What does this mean? Well, I don't think he owns this fighter jet. That's too hard. I'm gonna look up the other one. What is the mm. uh, DC three? Hang on, he gave me some more information. I'm gonna confirm I can say this. Douglas aircraft for sale. DC three about a quarter million. This particular one, this one's about a million. So oh, that's a nice, that's a little, nice little budget plane compared to the <laughs> 51 Mustang. They're expensive to operate. I'm pretty sure this one's call for price. Yeah. That always means a lot. And the first one was a saber. Yeah. I, I, I pasted um, the, uh, the plane list and the, an, yeah, is it an F thirty six Saber? Maybe oh, from nineteen forty nine. That's in line with like the other planes in his collection. Oh, then yeah, most likely. So his dad uh, flew in Vietnam for the RAAF. Uh, he was a Qantas captain and roulette's leader, which is the Aussie version of the Blue Angels. It's his uh, stepdad, actually. Nice job, mom. Get some. Ben has got a hot, hot mom, you know it. <laughs> you went to the same place. <laughs> yeah, Our man's Betty's got a smoke mom. show of a mother. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Brent next time you lose a, she, his a, a mom hand, is the trophy out. wife too. I'm just putting that together. Or or she's the maybe upgrade. she's the breadwinner, but the dad what it loves planes. Maybe he's and, the and trophy. And she's like, oh yeah, we can get you some planes, sure. What a saber? Well, one of them's winning some F30, bread. Yeah, saber. Oh, yeah. Don't you want a P-51 Mustang to go with your saber? <laughs> <laughs> no one wants just a saber without a P-51. That's peanut butter with no jam. Come on. Listen to how mad Rebecca is. Point. Wow, this guy is a real expert on the subject of deafblind children and their capacity for communication. Watch out, scientific community. Here comes Taylor to teach y'all a thing or two about how to talk out of your asshole. Three other people agreed with him. Uh, <laughs> they liked her comment. 
Why do they all keep saying retard? Her disability is well documented. No shit. Obviously. That was never my contention. Yeah. We all saw that, you know. Yeah. But I mean, lots of people are seeing the truth here, so that's okay. All right. I've got images of the planes now. One sec. Yeah. Send them. Oh, my goodness. Does he have interior photos? That would be awesome. Especially yeah, for gonna, the same one. I didn't I'm see the screen photos. grab all three aircraft. Plane rich is like a different no, 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 of rich. Planes rich. Sort by new again, Taylor. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say something? <laughs> Take a look. It's uh, <laughs> sort by new. I'm personally offended by the dude with the big head. He was using the R slur and clearly not giving that brave woman the respect she deserves. I will not be sandbagged. <laughs> said, well, you, you sat there. Silence is violence. And you, didn't have, and you didn't stop me from my horrible bigotry against that fucking retard lady. <laughs> it's got a thumbs up already. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, I'm thumbsing it down. <laughs> I had to say something. Uh, so oh, now I got the photos. So there's a there's the photos of the three planes that I described, and then he's like, "Oh yeah," and he also owns these two planes, but I don't know what they are. He forgot about two, as you did. He, he, he forgot he forgot a couple of uh, the 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 fleet. Boneheaded. <laughs> so you know when you forget the, those vehicles you own. This is so cool. Those, yeah, that bottom is. one's really neat. Which one's that? Or is he not said? He, th he said he didn't know what they were. He doesn't oh, know what he they are. Know. Okay, my bad. Man, these are really cool. That how big is that top one in the first photo? Is that about the same size as the other small, like single couple person, or is that way bigger? That's that the DC three. That's the that's big. That's the biggest one. Yeah. yeah. How many people plane. can fit on that? I don't know. It looks like like 30? eight or nine. Oh. Thirty. Am I wrong? It looked like uh, no. I'm wrong. I'm I'm definitely wrong here. Like, like I, I'm just. Wow, it is a really big. Twenty one to thirty two passengers. You were right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's so cool. Cause, cause, I don't know why I said that because I've been on a plane that holds like five or six people and it's tiny. Man. That plane we, we flew in to get when we were meeting up with you in Vermont. <laughs> what a harrowing a trip that was. That, oh I, my fucking God. I was getting on a plane and they're like, hey, how much do you weigh? Like, what kind of fucking plane is it? Like, yeah, we need yeah. to balance the left side and the right side. I'm like, oh. That's so literally what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Like the pilot was a big boy. I'm mm. gonna say six four, fat two seventy five. Yeah, like like like, not not like a round belly, but like, like 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 he just straight in the front, but just big. Like clearly <laughs> he could lose some weight, but just a hoss of a man. Like like he didn't have a hard time getting around or anything. He, he's like a, he's like a lineman. He's got he's built like a yeah. fucking like pro lineman. And he's the fucking pilot of this itty bitty plane that we're flying from Boston into Vermont, and uh, and and like I'd never been on anything like this at a at a international airport before. Like we just go down steps, and now we're on the runway, and it's like, can we be out here? Fuck! <laughs> and we, we just walk up to the thing. He's loading our bags into the wings, and he's like, "Who weighs the most?" And I look around, and it's like me, Kitty, her little cousin JJ, who's like 140 pounds or something like that, and uh, I'm like me for sure i'm, I'm like mm -hmm. 200 and he's like all right you're my co-pilot and i'm like <laughs> the fuck are you talking about he's like yeah yeah just grab the checklist and i'm literally the co-pilot like i'm not touching the fucking gear or anything don't get me wrong but i'm holding the fucking like checklist the up directions for him. <laughs> like, like 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 you know he's going through it he's like yeah yeah blah. i don't know what he's doing you know it's plain shit he's flipping switches and looking and doing his like pre takeoff checklist nonsense mm -hmm. kind of worried me that he needed a list like shouldn't you just know but whatever he's, he's i'd rather they up. use a list Double i prefer the list i guess yeah we get into like these crazy updrafts in a in like a blizzard and we are gaining and losing what feels like 50 feet of altitude rapidly and repeatedly to the mm -hmm. point where my right hand is holding the checklist but my left hand is underneath like like between my legs to the bottom of my seat pulling up like i'm on a horse like I'm like I'm a fuck yeah. like like riding a fucking like Bronco or something like I have to pull to keep my ass in the seat because because we're just like up and down and look I'm not some kind of badass or anything but I do have this weird outlook on life and death 
especially in a situation like that. And I'm just like, there's nothing I can do. This is completely out of my control. This isn't even like driving a car dangerously. I mm -hmm. have no control of this. We're either going to live or die. So I'm going to have fun. So I'm loving it. I'm over, I'm like grinning. I look back at like everybody behind me and they are petrified. JJ is vomiting into a bag and he I'm wants a second one to piss into. I like, was like, say, like it's green. a little more uh, nauseating when you don't have the window in front. I bet. Uh, although all you could see out the window was white, just yeah, white, it's... like pumping into the, like we're flying on instruments alone. True, we had true. to sit down in like, I don't know, two hour limo drive from um, wherever we were in Vermont, Killington. We had to, uh, Burlington. We sat down in Burlington and uh and uh had to hire a fucking limo to take us the rest of the way it was a fucking nightmare did you guys give like a three-person little smattering of applause when you landed safely <laughs> uh, i told him how much fucking fun that was that was one of the most fun rides i'd ever been on like like i i drove those like pro stock truck things that like those baja trucks out mm -hmm. in vegas with uh bolzerian this was more fun than that and we were like jumping i don't know i don't know you saw the video we we're jumping a good the updraft YouTube you know, in a storm like that is about 10 yeah. meters a second. So fucking cool. It felt like nothing yeah. I've ever felt before. It was like, it reminded me a little bit of those rides you can do at like Six Flags where you're on the, like the, they like stretch you way down in that little capsule and then <clears> the <throat> slingshot. It was like a slingshot ride with mm. the up and down and up and down. But at the same time, we're flying, I don't know, 200 miles an hour, 300 miles an hour or something and doing that and the snow's mm. fucking killing us. It's the so fastest I've ever been in is four and a half. This is on paraglider uh, meters per second. And that felt like a lot to me. Um, 10. I've seen it on YouTube and stuff. I have friends who've done it, but I haven't. It's I, I wish I'd, I'd had it recorded. That's one of those moments where it's just like, God damn it. Why didn't somebody pull out a cell phone? But, Fuck, that would have been great from like Kitty's point of view back behind me. Like me looking back like, oh, we're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> you going, oh, 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 and then the, 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 the white clears and they're it headed into a mountainside. <laughs> Kobe. No, yeah. It's fucking great. <laughs> and it was cheap too. <laughs> oh, I've been, I've been waiting on my chance to use that in that way. Like, like anytime something explodes, crashes, Kobe. <laughs> Oh, I should have said it when those kids fell in the university. Damn it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come. An opportunity to make that even more tasteless. <laughs> Damn, he's been dead for over a year. Yeah. He barely escaped the, fucking the lockdown. Well, I mean, I, I never oh, watched. Oh, that rapist people. who was good at playing that game I don't give a shit about. He wasn't even in a cool movie like Michael. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think Kobe was in a single movie, was he? Good. Not that I, I mean, know Michael of. Jordan was the one about him dying. Wait, didn't he win an Oscar or something? Ah. Definitely not an Oscar. You have to be in movies for that. Uh, Did they make a documentary about it and maybe it? Oh, more? that might. Yeah, that, that would make sense. Especially because um, he died tragically and untimely. So they yeah. probably make a documentary. No, he like he was getting into entertainment and he won something. Maybe he won an Emmy. I think he won an Emmy. Or, well, I don't think Michael Jordan won anything for Space Jam. <laughs> That's a great fucking movie. It really is a good movie. I mean, I haven't watched it in so long. I'm just going to believe that it still is a good movie. I, I, I'm, I'm sticking with you on that. Yeah, I mean, I I think they're remaking it maybe with LeBron. Are they? I heard something about that. I think so. Uh, I'm sure that'll be a home run. Yeah, I doubt it. It'll be really good. Professional athletes, notoriously good actors. That bunny is the 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 like female Bugs Bunny Lola or whatever. I can smoke it. Super fucking hot. I remember being of, like eleven watching that movie and being like, I would I would fuck. I fuck Lola that bunny. That, yeah. that bunny. I'm a older generation. We wanted to fuck Jessica Rabbit back in my day. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one. yeah. Jessica Rabbit is like. Uh, have you ever seen the clips in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit where, yeah. where like for a frame you see her nipples? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I, mean, I just those... imagine that rabbit has a hairy navel. Oof, yeah. A furry I navel, bet. you might say. <laughs> a fuzzy <laughs> navel. <laughs> I think that's the name of a drink. A fuzzy yeah. navel, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Are you but an asshole if you yeah. order an uncommon drink? If you if you order a fuzzy navel, are they like, what? Oh, That's no. not an uncommon drink. No, oh, not at not. all. Yeah, a fuzzy navel is like, I don't know what's in it, but it's like a fun kind of shot. It'd be I don't like, know hey, drink everybody, names. Gets a, everybody gets a purple Viking or everybody gets a, you know, yeah, fuzzy a, navel. Yeah, a purple Viking, is that uncommon? Like, No, I I don't even know what that is. That may have just been like either. some bullshit mixed drink they gave shots of where it's like half 
some like cheap ass off brand purple energy drink and then tequila in there. I don't know what it is. I yeah, don't, I don't get know. Drinks I don't out. know drink names. So, uh, but but I know what I want. Like it's usually like two shots of top shelf tequila, like shaken with ice, so it's chilled and with a with a lime. Like that. that that's what I want ninety nine percent of the time. Or, I usually just pick from the beer menu because I mean it's already all there and be like. I yeah, just want to leave good. now because it's really loud and all the drinks taste like alcohol. Yeah, <laughs> one of the drunk one of the. <laughs> One of the drunkest well, times restaurant. I've ever had was oh. meeting Woody for the very first time. <laughs> and I've been hanging out with Paul in Chicago for like a week solid. Paul's I love I love Paul to death, but he's an alcoholic, um, a functioning Party. alcoholic running his own business worth millions of dollars. Alcoholic, nonetheless, he's doing a good job, then doing a wonderful job. You know, got to take the stress off at the end of the day. They sold they made many millions more since I knew him. in any case. He liked Maker's Mark Manhattans with lots of extra cherries. And so when he ordered one, he's like, what do you want? I'm like, that looks good to me. Because like, what am I, what do I know? I fucking Bud Light. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. give me what you got, man. I don't, I don't know what I'm fucking doing. I'm like 25. I, I, I haven't drank anything nice in my life. So like, yeah, a Maker's Mark Manhattan with extra cherries is a strong motherfucker. And it's a lot. Did you get a double? Because it's not a shot. It was like a. It's a mixed drink, but it's mostly fucking booze. And it. it <sighs> What's it, it called? Manhattan? A Manhattan. Yeah. And uh, that obviously, I don't think I've ever it had one. Is uh, yeah, it's it's. I mean, it, it's almost a coffee cup. Yeah, it's about a it. coffee cup worth of something strong. Maker's yeah. Mark. No, I have had one of those, and it's. Um, I don't like it. Oh. And uh, so <laughs> nobody likes the first one, Taylor. So you know, but but I would drink two or three, and so so like I'm such a I girl. meet Woody Where for the first time. <laughs> I meet Woody for the first time, and uh, we're at the bar, and. Uh, <laughs> And, and I'm like, hey, you want to get a drink? And he's like, I'm, I'm sure what he's trying to be cordial. He's like, yeah, sure. I'm sure. And he said, he's like, oh, I don't really want one. But, you know, I'll be friendly. I'm sure that's what was happening. And I was like, yeah, uh, let me get a Maker's Mark Manhattan with extra cherries. And what he's like, make it two. Or, or did you order two of them? I think you ordered for both of us. I could be wrong on this. I'm not sure. Only You may have like been like, yeah, I'll have what you're having. And I was like, yeah, give us two Maker's Mark Manhattans with extra cherries or whatever. In any case, you went nope <laughs> and so, and so now i'm like mind. double fisting manhattan now i'm sitting there with like 16 <laughs> shots of liquor or something in front of me and i'm just like well guy double fisting manhattan so I'm, like, hey, I'm very classy you're gonna meet a very altered version of me tonight what are you <laughs> I took like you, it. Probably, you can't just not drink it because it's like that's an expensive kind of drink to buy. I don't even know, like <laughs> fifteen dollar drink or something. But that's but you know what? For a drink, it's wasted I mean, on me. Bar, bar's expensive. It's like a fancy yeah. hotel bar. It's Boston. It's yeah, I, I I'm bar tab's gonna be eighty dollars every night. Like mm-hmm. I, I just know it is gonna be. So you just yeah, it's gonna be eighty dollars. We'll write it off. It's a business expense. I'm stuff fucking like entertaining. Bud Light, stuff like Bud Light. It's always safe. You know what you're getting. Fuck that. I don't want beer. I don't want to be nah, pissing all night. I, I want like liquor. It. I look, alcohol is like any other drug. Like, like I want it in its most pure form. Fucking if inject it if you can. Like, like give me a fucking alcohol injection and I take it. Like, I just want to get drunk. This isn't about what it tastes like. And by the way, the first one tastes like shit every fucking time. Yours, Woody, was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. It was like, oh, I, I'm going to get the notes of cherry now. I'm chewing the cherries up. I'm like, oh, I got to get it all down so I can get to the cherries. I tasted a touch of it, Kyle, and I disagree strongly. Mine's oh, <laughs> mine tasted just like yours. <laughs> yeah. was, you got to get through mine know, before yours it. tastes good, though. Yeah. It's, that's just the way it works. I should have offered Woody all the cherries. I, I should have got a pina colada or something because I would have actually liked it. Yeah. And, yeah, and and then in the future when Woody have, have drank together, it's like give us two gingerbread martinis. We know what's up. <laughs> what's There's gingerbread in them, holding umbrellas. There's literally a gingerbread man <laughs> in the martini. It's and like, there's a picture of us somewhere yeah. at an Outback Steakhouse enjoying our gingerbread martinis together. Like we're like tink. I love to imagine Woody ordering a virgin gingerbread martini. Oh, and like, like us to bring you a cookie, sir. Yeah, you got the adult one. You got the adult one. I did in that case, but I, you're not far off. That's my cruise ship move. You know what? It, uh, what a Jolly Roger. That's my. That's why everyone's getting drinks. A Jolly Roger right here. I mean, what is? Oh, that? it's like a sprite with the um, cherry juice from like the maraschino cherry oh. mixed in. And that's it. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it looks like an alcohol sounds drink, wonderful. It's not. It is delicious. On a that cruise sounds ship. wonderful. Yeah, I like. Uh, I like the pineapple one juice. Ship. What was that, Kyle? I like pineapple juice so much. 
Like, What's like, that like period? Every fucking thing? Rum, mostly, but like everything. Yeah, Wait, I, I would do. Uh, you said I would do rum. You said you like pineapple juice, right? Yeah. And Taylor said, "What's that made of?" What's no, it no, paired with? with? Oh, like, oh what kind of okay. Alcohol that's you combine that's with? where I lost you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I would do like rum yeah, and you sense. know, little cherry juice and slice of pineapple on there. If I were making some kind of fruity drink, or just you know, make a frozen one, that's probably what a fucking pina colada is. I don't know what's in mixed. Drinks. No, I'm I don't sure. Make mixed drinks. I mean, pina colada is kind of coconut y. Yeah, it's like, like, yeah, a, yeah, coconut, like a daiquiri. It's like rum, like coconut right? too. Yeah, most of them have rum. It seems like those tropical drinks, which makes sense. Um, but uh, so I, I only like, I don't like the taste of rum straight up. I don't it's think too anybody. I uh, like, like dark rum, like a spiced rum. I could sip on that a little bit and take shots of that. Like, uh, but, uh, but in a mixed drink, it's really good. But if I'm drinking, it's, it's almost always going to be tequila or vodka. Vodka is always a safe bet and you can mix it with anything like it mixes with anything because it's neutral. It's a neutral spirit, sparkling water or whatever. But I know I you, you never just, do that. That sounds disgusting. Well, but like the thought of doing what you do and putting like five shots in there and having to do a glug glug, like two. Yeah, of like, like, like two of the me, biggest glugs you can. You yeah, can choke me, I think I would vomit if I if I did that. So I would I would prefer, you know, meet it out a little bit. Throw some some Perrier in there, a little bit of sparkling flavored water with the vodka. See, see, I'm the opposite. Like, like the idea of that, of making it more voluminous, mm-hmm. carbonated. You need that carbonation, st- but still fucking strong as fuck. Sounds so gross to me. Whereas no, I could get I like I'm a bitch when it comes to mixed drinks that I make at my house. Like you know, you get like a vodka water at a restaurant. It's like this just you know this tastes a lot more like vodka than water. I'll put like whatever amount of vodka in there in like a big beer glass. Then I just open a Lacroix whole thing. And so, what are you doing to yourself? I just, I mean I like it. It tastes better. Yeah, and I'm, I'm with hydrated. Taylor. I, I don't know why they make them so strong at bars. And I've asked for weak ones. Like you know what, just a little bit of alcohol, a lot of soda. That's it. I'm not here to get drunk. Bartender's like, nope, I make them like I drink them. Fuck you. The, the, like yeah, I just, you, you should order it like that. You should be like, I want a rum and Coke, one shot of rum, one entire Coca-Cola. Yeah. Yeah. And add a little syrup. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Lose lose the rum. <laughs> you know, how about an extra sweet Coca-Cola? You can you do, do a Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola with that maraschino home, cherry juice? Sugar. I'm a big fan. Dude, but Kyle, that's the extra, that's the best benefit of beer consistency you know exactly what you're getting you find a beer that you like like let's say i really love a rum and coke and then the bartender switches out and then i get a different one and let's say you know i'm not like woody i want to get my money's worth and it's like oh well this one this one sucks that's not consistent you know i find a nice beer i like that's gonna be the exact fucking same always you know i don't like beer i don't like the taste of beer um it's i mean most alcohol i don't like unless you like cram sugar in it which is just Mm -hmm. you don't want to do that um it's it's not any good I think Jaeger, um, I actually like the taste of that, but that's just kind of white trash at this point. Uh, it's a, what I look down on Jaeger, so I don't want to I don't want to be a Jaeger drinker. We have a friend who would yeah. take that personally, Kyle. Friend of the show. Yeah, he, he should lay off the Jaeger, too. Um, yeah. but, we said uh, he should have started on vodka a while back. Way lower sugar. Vodka or tequila or um, like, like whiskeys. You know, I hope he's out there smiling at the show right now. Yeah. Come on, looking down at us. <laughs> oh Jesus! I looking wonder how he's doing. He's going social media silent, right? Hot. hot. I don't oh, know. Man. Is he? Uh, I remember last time we discussed him. He'd been banned from something. I don't. Need, is he streaming anymore? So he know, he has an Instagram. February fifteenth is his last. Oh, let me read this. Actually, I'm Instagram February fifteenth. I haven't pre-read this, so we'll see where this goes. Everyone wants an update. It's been a constant thing that has actually been annoying me. I'm not ignoring my viewers. Hell, this is a personal Insta. But a lot of you guys just want to know my next move or what I'm going to do. I don't have anything for you. I honestly don't know. All I know is that I'm at peace in love with my soulmate. I didn't get her flowers today, Valentine's Day. Not because I forgot. It's just when I do stuff like that, it's never an I'm sorry flowers or because of a tradition. Okay, this is tough to read. Every single day with this woman is special, and I'm in a very peaceful place. When I lost my YouTube channel, I wasn't devastated or mad. I have her, my rock, my peace, my everything. So to those that are frustrated that I haven't given you an update, 
I'm just cherishing every single day with my soulmate, my woman, my everything. This is my Valentine's message to her, Bekara15, the only one I want to grope. That's your update. That was sweet. Like he's doing a lot better. Good for him. Like, I mean, mm. clearly the whole streaming thing was like feeding in a feedback loop of destruction, like just drinking all the time and feeling crappy about it and all that. So I if must be a bad person because I read what wasn't there. I didn't read anything about employment. I didn't read anything about like things going well. All I read is every piece about me is completely about somebody else. Uh, I mean, it's probably good for him to distance, get away from that online streaming world for a while. Oh, for sure. For sure. I don't think that was going to go any place in a healthy direction, but to go into a healthy direction, I would like to see him say, hey, got my teeth fixed, got a job, no longer uh, dependent on substances. I, I like That's where we want to see him going. What he said was, I'm incomplete without someone else to fulfill me. And, and like, hmm. I mean, it seems like he's doing better, so hope, hopefully he is. Uh, Kyle, you are muted, my friend. As long as he has all of his uh, appendages, uh, things are running upswing because, mm. you know, it looked like he was going to lose some toes. Uh, a while yeah, back. that's a huge win. Mm. It really did look like a couple toes were going to be gone and he hasn't lost. Yeah, I don't know. I, I side with Woody on this, um, you know, but look, look, he's in love. That's uh, that's good. Better than <laughs> that's. Uh... I mean, there's worse things, there's worse <laughs> things, right? Like, like. You know, he could be like, oh, yeah, all I care about right now is heroin, my rock, my one love. <laughs> sweet, okay, okay. Sweet heroin, black car <laughs> heroin in my fucking wrist, in my fucking, between my toes, hiding them track marks from the P.O. I love tape. heroin. Yeah, it would be funny if that whole thing he wrote, then he reveals it was to Jaeger at the end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my rock, my love, my one true my one true sense of being at Jägermeister. <laughs> Jägermeister is like, hey, glad you love the product. <laughs> We're sending support. you a complimentary case. And he's just like, no, no, you don't know what you've done. <laughs> I bet that happens on like alcohol social media channels. Like someone will be like, I love Tito's. I fucking love Tito's. Send me something. And then they're like, we here's a free Tito's bottle or a, a bottle opener and then they're like here's a picture of all the Tito's I drank last week it's just like, <laughs> no. like piles of bottles like oh <laughs> I got this um it was really funny happenstance one time like I did this thing for Red Bull and they sent me like many cases of Red Bull and then at the same time I did this thing for this vodka company I don't even know how I got hooked up with them but they made like all these flavored vodkas and it wasn't great vodka but I I don't even know what I did. Maybe some sort of social media push or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but they sent me cases of their vodka. And so I had like the five cases. Of bottles. No. Oh, the, no. The big real ones. They sent me like the like cases of full size family bottles of vodka. And uh, they're like, yeah, just do something with them. We don't care. And like I had I made this video that I deleted. I never used it. Cause like, I didn't know what to do. Like, like Harley was down and he wanted to do a collab and I was like, yeah, we'll do a thing, you know, on Epic meal time and I'll, I'll join you. We'll do a meal at my house. And then, um, uh, if you want, like we can do some kind of FPS Russia food based thing. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't uh, like, it's some, like there was a lot of times where I was just like, this is, this is horse shit. I don't want to upload this. This is garbage. I don't like mm -hmm. how this turned out and I just throw it away. And this was one of those instances. Cause I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what how to, like trying to do with it. Like you can't just shoot them. They're glass bottles, right? I was blowing like, like I was doing a bunch of food related stuff. Like I was blowing turkeys up like whole uh -huh. turkeys and uh, a fucking, I, I, you got to buy whole turkeys frozen and we didn't have time to thaw them out. And when you blow up a frozen Turkey, Turkey bones get shot into your fucking leg. So I had <laughs> Turkey bones in my fucking leg that I'm pulling out. And that really put a damper on the rest of the day. Cause I've got Turkey bones in me and that's scary because it seems like the sort of thing that gives you gangrene in some sort of fluke scenario. Yeah, that can't be good for you. So I'm pulling Turkey bones out of my fucking shin. And, uh, and so then it's like, all right, so what's part two of this awful video where we blew up a fucking frozen Turkey and got hurt. Uh, and so now I'm shooting, now I'm literally shooting full size family bottles of vodka. And I like, I shot up like 15 bottles of vodka or something. I'm like, it looks like shit. 
was like, we yeah. don't have like it just looks like shit. Like like so I just, just threw the video away. You just I, threw them away, didn't have any vodka left or probably Oh, I had so much vodka. There was plenty after that. Like like there was vodka like everybody in my life got got multiple bottles of vodka. Like like because I didn't have anything to do with them. I didn't like vodka. I didn't drink. I was smoking weed. Like yeah. I, didn't want, I didn't want vodka. I wanted I wanted weed. And uh, but but I drank all that fucking Red Bull. That was cool. Yeah, I would love a, just an energy drink sponsorship. I Get have Red Bull or those White Monsters. Like I've said, the White Monsters are the best flavor. Yeah, I've, I've got the the, uh, the the zero calorie monster. The white one's good. I tried the red one, horrific. The purple one is ass. The orange one's not too bad. Orange one's. Not I'm too a big bad. Red Bull fan. Um, if I had to, if I if I had my druthers, I'd I'd want a Red Bull sponsorship because that's what I actually like the most over Monster. Monster's too sweet. But um, I've got like the you know I used to have it in my background the like gas station giant Red Bull can refrigerator. I remember and, that. Uh, somebody in the patron uh, the Discord was like, um, my mom works for corporate at Red Bull. Um, how did you get that? Because you're not supposed to have those. <laughs> and I'm just like. Gas station went out of business, <laughs> and I uh, slipped them a hundred bucks. So uh, now I have one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They told my mom she was kind of concerned about that. I'm like, she come try to take it from me, but I'm not giving it back or anything. This motherfucker's mine. <laughs> like, like it's my yeah. fucking Red Bull refrigerator. I love it. Do you put anything in there other than Red Bull? Yeah, everything. It's like waters and stuff. And I don't, I don't have it here. I've got it like at my dad's house right now with a bunch of my shit that's like I didn't need. Like like all my paintball gear and like various uh, all sorts of shit stored in my dad's house. All all my gym equipment, but uh, but yeah, I I, I love that thing. I think it's super cool because you can't get them unless you steal or trick someone at a gas station into selling you their like display model. It's the big one, isn't it? It's not the little one that sits on the counter. No, it's fucking big. Yeah. It's like oh. it's a Red Bull can that's like the size of a person, and uh, it's on wheels and mm -hmm. it plugs into the wall. And uh, the top is a big plexiglass um, circle with a handle on top that you lift. And then, and you know, the entire inside is refrigerated to refrigeration temperature, 40 degrees or whatever. And you throw drinks in there. It looks fucking cool in a room. It does. I like stuff like that. Little, what's the word? Like kitsch stuff, like little thematic things. It's neat. Yeah. It'd be yeah. cool in like a room with a pool table. Like whenever you buy your new house, if you have like room for a pool table in the basement or something, Make a little I have a very bar nice, area. That'd be neat. I have a very nice pool table. It's a, it's a three piece slate pool table that mm -hmm. I would love to sell. Um, if anybody is in, uh, you know, Northeast Georgia, um, you know, get in touch with me if you want a three piece slate pool table and, and everything. Cause it's you just want it? in there. No, I don't want it. Do you want it? Cause all you gotta do is pay to have it fucking shipped and yeah, taken apart. I, I have a pool table though. Oh, well, there you go. Is it a seven foot, eight foot, nine foot? I don't know. It's a big one. It's at least eight. I don't know. It's it's it it, it was very. It was like a four thousand dollar pool table. I don't know if that's expensive or cheap. But, that's a um, that's a good bit. I think. I know it costs like six hundred dollars to move it because I paid six hundred to fucking get it to my place. And then at one point we were like, oh, well, we really put it in an awkward area, huh, boys? Like, we need to work here. And it's like, yeah. all right, well, six hundred more to move it. 50 feet that way so that you know they got to come take the felt off and then mm -hmm. take all three pieces of slate put them in this like thing and then like wheel everything and reassemble it and it's like five six hundred bucks every time you fucking do that so it's just sitting uh at this other place i've got just doing nothing yeah you know? it's outrageous so much like because you know obviously my basement flooded and like you get the little itemized thing where it's like they'll pay you this much for that this much for that and like like just like you said hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars just to cover like, yeah, and they need to move the pool table out to put the carpet in, then then immediately move the pool table back in. And it's like, oh, that's like a, a tremendous ordeal, apparently. You yeah, know? I don't even like pool. Like, I'm not. A I think it's fun. I, I don't like being competitive with it, but it's fun to play pool like socially, like 2v2 or play cutthroat with like two other people. I'm not good at pool. Yeah, uh, I'm not either. I can't. I, I can shoot straight shots and, you know, nothing fancy. You know, of bar you know. games, I'm pretty decent at darts. I'm better than you might think at darts. I've never really played. Never really I'm tried. Better than you might think at ping pong. Yeah, well, he's very good at ping pong. Okay. 
we gotta I make never sure played, I've never played before the first time Woody and I played each other, and I'm just like, well, this ain't fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, katunk, and he's like, ha ha. <laughs> I do that all the time. All <laughs> fucking coming off the wall behind me. I'm like him. pub stomping I'm non players. I'm like <laughs> crawling around in the corner trying to wrangle the ball. He's just fucking shooting at me. Like, I'm doing like, I, friendly, aggressive, high spin serves, like, <laughs> he's like Forrest Gump or something in there. It's like I, I've literally never played this game before. Ping pong's a ton of fun. Yeah. That's one of tabletop, just silly casual games. Although it doesn't stay casual, it gets pretty, pretty. It, it's also one of those games where like you'll play a few games of ping pong and you're like, I shouldn't be sweating, <laughs> but oh, I yeah, am. I've got a ping pong table too. Yeah, yeah. You, I you want the it, Colorado house to have a ping pong table. Yeah, dude. All right, so I've been looking at these Colorado houses. Okay. There's one. The pricing is somewhere between $500 and $1,200 a night. Huge swing. I get that. Yeah. Um, the stuff that's, I think it's like $900 a night. There was one place that is absurd. Like private chef for a little extra, limo ride from the airport for a yeah. little bit extra, um, full get casino in the basement, like with an actual roulette wheel. Mm -hmm. And uh, and all that stuff, but it's like I don't need all that. like like big eight person hot tub indoors like but mm -hmm. we don't need all that. I, I no. feel like it's excessive. But then there's several of them that come with like these really cool game rooms that have foosball, ping pong, billiards, a poker table, um, like like all the table games that like come with their own table to like do that you can imagine. Like like a couple arcade machines in the corner, um, and like three or four of the houses that we're looking at have theaters in them. And like, don't think like too crazy, probably similar to what you have, Woody, like 128 inch projection screens. Um, but maybe the difference would be like Sounds some better. of these have some of these have like um, theater seating. So like oh, the really cool. fancy, um, like, like the tiered. Yeah. And tiers. Yeah, I'd like, like that. Like, I think yeah. especially. Oh, so I don't know pot, but it's like it pairs well with movies, right? Oh, yeah. Very it's well. Best. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the best. It's 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 what I'm. My so the main concern with the house like, like here are my here's my list of like my tier list of like what the house needs my checklist yeah. number one thing's internet because we got to be able to work from there I got to be sure. able to work from there like, like I don't want to I don't want some fuzzy fucking connection I also need like some kind of a workspace so that I don't have to sit in like a kitchen chair at a kitchen table like a little desk well you know some oh this is not the shit. rental place this is where you move to no this is the rental place okay I'm listening like I'm the rental place has to have these things it has to have good internet. That's number one because nothing else matters beyond that. The, if it had everything I could possibly imagine, but but shitty internet, it doesn't work. The show so must good go internet, on. Yeah, show's got to go on. So good internet, and then after that, like the TV is this literally the second most important thing. Uh, if it doesn't have at least a fifty-five inch, like we're just like, nope, that won't work. Like, get out of here, poor people, coming at me with this forty-inch <laughs> TV. There's no way I'm doing that. I, like. When we were consider when Taylor and I and uh, were going to the, on our Super Bowl trip a few years back, um, I was considering renting a TV at a rent a center to supplement the TV that was at the house because it was only fifty five inches. Yeah, like, ended up working out okay. The couch was pretty close to that TV. Yeah, Felt. yeah, but I gotta have at least fifty five inches, and I really want like a seventy something inch TV. Like I've got, I'm in my bedroom. Like there's a seventy two inch TV right over here. In my living room, there's whatever you got. 55 must seem yeah, tiny right. to you. We, we 82, 75, 84. UHD, whatever, Samsung thing. Yeah, yeah it, I, I got to have a big TV. And uh, so that's the second most important thing. And then after that, it absolutely has to have washer and dryer because we're going to be staying there so long. Then it's like lesser things, like kitchen's important. And then distance to the dispensary. Yeah. yeah, that's important. Um, I know like a bunch of the guys like work out. So like we're trying to find places that have either a gym there or uh, cause a couple of places have like gyms that like rival yours, Woody, like in the okay. house, which is super fucking cool. Um, you, or, I like, upgraded mine today. Ooh, nice. I look forward to seeing some video or uh, Woody has a very nice gym for those listening. I don't know if he, mm -hmm. he it's very fancy. Um, and uh, you know, so, so we're looking places that either have a 24 hour gym nearby or uh, you know, a gym in the, in the building or in the house or nearby. And I was thinking cool. like about the gym aspect and like, I have these looped resistance bands that I don't use very often. And like, I'm honestly a little disappointed. You're like, yeah, we're going to go to a real gym. Cause I was like, Oh fuck. I was like looking forward to a real opportunity to be like, 
like what can can I really get everything done with these bands? Like oh. really? They they always talk about that. Like oh, you get a lot done with out. a kettlebell. I know that's hard to travel with, but like yeah. I'm saying, you <laughs> have done a lot with a kettlebell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Band. Yeah, but I, I'd much rather go to a real gym. Yeah, I know uh, Chocolate Thunder. He's I'm afraid along I can't this. keep up. Like it, so you guys are both really strong. I'm gonna be like, <laughs> you're, fucking, you're stronger than me. Let's take the plates off, boy. I don't want to do with this. You uh, know what? Know but the way we're gonna be eating there, I will. I'm gonna be devoting myself to cardio at any gym, or not. I'm oh. saying we. I'm inviting everyone to my guilt. The way I'm gonna eat on vacation, mm. I I'll cook. Prioritize. I'll cook. I'll make some healthy stuff. If I take my normal workout routine and I make it like 45 minutes of cardio every day, every morning or something, I can pretty much go balls to the wall with food. I think. 45 minutes. You can't out cardio a bad diet, right? I can mitigate it. Okay. <laughs> you, can okay. Mitigate, you know, like, like 40, 40 minutes of decent cardio, you're getting 500 calories down. You know, like, that, that'll, that'll take a big chunk out of things. Yeah. And it's like, I'm, it's a vacation. I'm going to gain weight, but I'd rather gain a couple pounds instead of seven or six. Okay. I yeah, but well, I know Chocolate ahead. Thunder uh, wants to play some uh, some two v two basketball. I told him good luck finding somebody who wants to play with you because uh, I want to uh, play with him, not against him. Right? <laughs> right? I, I don't want to play basketball. I'll watch the video that y'all film while you're playing. <laughs> I'm not good at basketball. <laughs> Fifty five inch TV that night. <laughs> but I like Chocolate Thunder. I'm glad he's on. He wants to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I invited him the other day. Um, right now I I think um. Uh, like I said, we're doing the two different groups because like that groups don't mesh that well. We got like the patron group, and then we got like the old school guys that have been around forever, and some uh, a little oil and water. With, with, Has with there been conflict that I'm not familiar with? Yeah, a little bit. You know, like 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 just some people just don't love some people, and maybe don't want to spend time with them in the same house. And plus, you know, it's. <laughs> It's a lot of people to do. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. It, it's like, all right, we got to find a house that can ha- that has ten beds and can sleep fifteen or ten bedrooms that can sleep fifteen. It's like ah, yeah. that really limits our decisions here. It Whereas, also changes the group dynamic. Like, there can be sort of one group if it's seven people, but yeah. when there's eighteen people, there's almost three groups, and it, it like socially it changes it up. Click yeah. So I, I invited um for like the first week um. I'm assuming it'll be the first way we could swap that back and forth. But for, you know, group one, I invited uh waggish and chocolate thunder and uh dirty and fish and, uh, and Ari. And uh, I might be leaving some, and uh, chocolate thunder. I think I said, and I might be leaving somebody off. I apologize if I am, but uh, a good that's crew. the group. And, uh, and then uh, <clears throat> me and Chiz and you two, if you want to come or you could come to the second group. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Cause the second group would be like guys like, scum and uh and maybe midi and urban and uh zt and dj and like all those guys that are in like the og side of the discord it's a good group too and no class like it no class he's got his uh <laughs> you know travel restrictions obviously from uh from Just australia <laughs> oh my oh, dad got the covid vaccine today he did huh? yeah, oh, yeah i was i was talking to him about poker two days ago and uh, and he was saying that he's real tempted to go play in uh, a game near him. That's you know a, a live game in person and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, Internet's so spotty where he is. He just turned it off a while back. It was they were always showing up with another excuse, and it just wasn't wasn't going to work. So he got you had a similar satellite. experience. Yeah, he got a satellite for cable or for not for cable satellite, yeah. <laughs> television, and uh, and just cut the internet off because it just wasn't working. It just not not a real service there, and. Uh, so, so he was saying, oh, yeah, he's real tempted to go play poker. And I was telling him, you know, I, I've been doing okay playing a little poker and we we're, we we're talking about it. And I'm like, wow, man, you should go get that vax. Why haven't you gotten your vaccine yet? You should get vaccinated before you go sit at a poker table. Even, even with a mask, you know, you're rubbing shoulders with eight other guys, 10 other guys or something like that for six, eight hours at a time. Like, you know, you're 67 years old. You need, you should get the vaccine. Why haven't you gotten it? And he's like, ah, I called my doctor and they said they don't have it. And I, I'm thinking about calling the health department a second time. I called them a month ago and they didn't have any openings. And I'm like, hold my beer that I'm not allowed to have. So I'm going to have to hold it. And I like, I do a little Googling and I'm like, ah, here we go. Copy, paste, copy, paste, send it to him. I'm like, I call him back. I'm like, all right, click that link, pull out the form at the bottom, call the number at the top. You're good. And sure enough, like the next, like yet today was the net. That was yesterday. Was and that today, unrelated to the lead that we had talked about before? 
the lead. You sent an image. I'm trying not to say too much. You sent me an image. Someone said, hey, is Woody serious about the vaccine? No, completely unrelated. Roger. Yeah, completely unrelated. Yeah, I, 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 uh, one of our wonderful $50 patrons came up with a, a great way to get Woody uh, vaccinated. So, because I think they're just giving the vaccine out in North Carolina. So that's good, or at least to some people. Uh, in any case, um, yeah, he, he called me today. He was, he's like, yep, got, got the vaccine. All good now. Uh, so so I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm glad he got it. I look forward to getting it myself. Me too. I look forward to getting it because I want to, I don't know, just, I'm done with the quarantine. Uh, emotionally that is and uh a little low. right right like it is and it, i guess the actual threats dropping too i mean the number of cases and deaths and stuff are just tumbling right now that um I, maybe it's just doing what flu season does and it'll spike again in the fall i, I don't know i'm not pretending to be able to do i just say it's, it's going down i'm happy for that um my mom is eligible my, my parents are i suppose and she mm-hmm. first was waiting for the johnson and johnson one she doesn't react well to the flu virus gets sick and uh, she didn't want two injections. She'd rather do it once. Right, JJ yeah. does uh, one shot as opposed to two. To get that one too. I believe that's what my dad did. I, I okay. believe he got the, the single dose uh, then, vaccine. I talked to her recently and uh, she's like, I'm not sure I'm going to get it at all. I don't like it. I don't know if I recognize the threat and stuff. And it's like, God, you're 70 years old. You have respiratory history. Like mm-hmm. you're a COVID problem. You should get it. Mom, yeah, especially this, get the vaccine. stuff. Yeah, I was I was watching binging with the Babbage today at one of my favorite cooking channels. Mm. He was uh, and it was uh, talking. About, it was I saw it was about curry, which I love. So I was like, yeah, I watched this. And the beginning of it, he's like, this video is dedicated to blah blah blah. Who was the guest star in this video? He died of COVID. And I'm in my head, I'm like, he, he's like, we talked to his family to see if it was okay to upload this, and they said yeah. And what he didn't say was. Yeah, as long as you plug his company, because so then he plugs the company hmm. and uh, and then um, the product and then the video begins. And before the video begins, I'm like, bet this dude's fat. Yeah. And sure enough, it begins and he's like 60 pounds overweight or something like that. And it's like, yeah. oh, there you go. There That's you go. the well, I was going to say it's the number one comorbidity, but I'm not sure it might be age, but it's a huge comorbidity. Comorbidity. Yeah. If you're, if you're age, obese, probably, you know, probably age first, weight second. Yeah. Age has got to be number one. And then, like, I think obesity and diabetes, I don't know which one's leading, but I mean, they're so intricately tied. It's probably, yeah. you know, let's look at that as a one, you know? And asthma's yep. up there. I'm actually not, I'm way out of my depth here, but, you know, those are some of the biggies. Oh, yeah. Asthma for sure. Like, like any sort of like severe respiratory stuff or immuno uh, suppressed people, all of those things have to be big problems. Yeah. I remember like seeing a kid in like grade right. school start to have like an asthma attack and i'd never seen that before like the and like taking the thing out of his pocket and using it and it was like what what the fuck like what happened what did i just witness in the in the wood chips next to the tire swing but yeah you ever you ever have an allergic reaction like a severe one a severe one no i'm lucky i've never had a bad allergic reaction when is anaphylactic shock um and uh so that's really interesting feeling um my my whole head swelled up from what like, like um a banana i ate a banana which apparently i had randomly become allergic to since the last time i ate a banana <laughs> and uh and like hmm. my whole mouth and throat start getting itchy like i've eaten fiberglass and then my throat starts my starts swelling shut my whole face starts swelling up and it's like forcing tears out of my tear ducts my face is swelling so yeah. much so tears are pouring down my face like involuntarily without like any effort they're just pouring and like my throat is getting close tighter and tighter to the point where my voice is just barely coming out and it's hard to catch my breath like when i'm talking and i'm just like i gotta go and like get in the car (laughs) i was like 16 i like drive to my dad and i and, and like i pull up and he's like oh what the fuck and i'm like i'm having a allergic reaction hospital and he's like Fucking drives me to the hospital. They hit me with the adrenaline shot, and uh, they're like, "No more bananas for you." But I love bananas. Have you so, tried a banana since? Here's what I did. I told, I explained uh. this to someone um, a couple days ago. Actually, I cured my banana allergy by slowly giving myself more and more banana over the course <laughs> of three years. I would eat one, like a quarter size, like I'd cut a slice, a tiny slice of banana, and just nibble it at first. 
And at first it would just make me real itchy. It was just awful. It's like, oh, my mouth is so fucking itchy. My tongue would burn and itch. My throat would burn and itch. It's a horrible trade off for bananas. It's terrible. <laughs> terrible. I love bananas. And I love bananas too. My favorite fruit. Chop them up in cereal. So fucking good. And oatmeal. So fucking good. Just by themselves. I love bananas. Chocolate work. covered bananas? Yeah. Chocolate covered banana. Frozen chocolate covered banana is the gayest food in the world to eat. And it's one of my favorites. Fucking great. Fucking great. Tasty. You just don't want anybody to see you eat it. I so. Mind. I did what those people do with uh, uh, snake venom or what uh, Wesley did in Princess Bride with the Iocane powder. Uh, I've been giving myself small doses over the course of the last <laughs> 10 years and I built an immunity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did. I, I like increasingly ate more and more over the co course of a few years until I was no longer allergic to bananas. So now I can just eat a whole banana and nothing happens. Man, you really <laughs> showed nature what's what with that. That's right. I evolved. And now you can have bananas anytime, anywhere. Anytime I fucking want. Any place. Any price, any. But I, but I don't eat it like that. I, I tear the pieces off and put them in my mouth. You tear the pieces off and you put it in your mouth it's yeah. because it's less that's gay. How you eat that's how I a gentleman you. eats a banana. If, if, you, mm. if you're serious about it, that's how you eat bananas. I hate that. Really? You tear pieces off of your banana. <laughs> Just eat a fucking banana. Just take a bite of it. it. It's got the. Then you don't have to get waxy banana oh, you all over you. Fag. Your I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> in my body, not on my hand. I'm just teasing. I bite bananas. Good God. <laughs> I'm just trying to picture that. Like, just no. I also <laughs> eat my candy bars with a knife and fork. Wait, like, like, you eat it with your hands? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Eat it with your hands? <laughs> Get a fucking Snickers. Yeah, that's a classic. Snickers are good. Oh, Snickers are Snickers fucking right great. We're not getting back on candy bar talk. Oh, no, shit. we can. I almost took us down. I just, I, you're just talking to a man who's been in the caloric deficit since October. <laughs> you yeah. up oh, you deserve a nutrageous. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I got, um, my brother came back from my grandparents yesterday and he, he spent the night here before he had to drive home. And he brought like just what, how many ribs are in a rack? It was like nine in a rack and she brought, he brought four of them. And so my, so my grandma, she called me and she was like, now your brother's come back up there and I'm seeing some ribs with him. Now, how many do you want? You, know, I told him to bring three sides of ribs. And I was like, no, that's, that's way too many. And she goes, okay, that's good. I, I sent him with two and a half. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so it's like 60 ribs. And last night, like I really that knowing that those ribs I were gave there, him 2.9. Yeah, 2 <laughs> and she, like, I knew those ribs were there. And so yesterday, I basically just intermittent fat. I had like a banana and a bang energy in the morning. And like I knew my brother was coming with the ribs. And so I was mm -hmm. like, I'm not having a bite of food until these fucking ribs show up. And I absolutely, I went to town last night on so many ribs. Hit my protein macros easy. Still <laughs> stayed under my calories somehow. Nice. I guess because my entire diet yesterday was a banana, a bang energy. And a and, rack of ribs. Yeah, a rack and a half of ribs. Are you tracking everything and? chronometer or whatever you use uh, fitness, pal. fitness pal mostly okay. uh, i'll and i usually i'll track like two th half or two thirds of the day and then the rest of it i just kind of do in my head as i'm going like how much more do i need protein okay i, I can cover that how much do i have more in calories okay so mm -hmm. but that also lends itself to like ooh, little little treat i can fit that in you know you, you can fool yourself god i hate not eating whatever i want all the time <laughs> it is nicer to eat <laughs> it's the worst part of being an adult it's like yeah being able to know like i could go buy fried chicken anytime oh dude i i have the kind of money that could just do damage at a convenience <laughs> store yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. remember like before a movie when you were a kid you'd like go to walgreens or cvs whatever was close to the movie theater and then like you'd buy stuff and give it to your mom and you put it in her purse and it was like one candy and like you have no concept of monetary value and then like as soon as you get older, you're like, <laughs> all this stuff is free to anyone with like a 20. Like, yeah. I'm just all of it. And then it's you, know all right. the, you know the box yeah. that the Snickers are in? I could get that. Yeah. Oh, you remember those Remember those boxes they would give to you in fucking school to do fundraisers? You could get that. The one with like 50 fucking full-size <laughs> Snickers in it. And you don't have to sell them at all. You can just keep them at home and eat them. You don't get in trouble. That's what I did. That's what I, every time they knew what they were doing when they send a fucking fourth grader home with 30 <laughs> or 40 fucking full-size snickers or reese's like 
you're just digging around for quarters in your parents like change jars like ka-chink <laughs> all right here we fucking go you're in ashtrays and stuff like like everywhere <laughs> that, it's like i ate so many candy bars because of that they sent me well, home with you, a big box of them if you took it home and hid it from your parents and didn't give them the, the slip that you were supposed to oh, that shit. said like make sure they sell this then you just got to keep candy in your room my friend that's what we did pretty much. Like, like my mom would like take them to work. She'd sell them. My dad would like take them around. And, I don't hey, think you're getting what Taylor's saying. He he just stole all the candy. He didn't. Yeah. They they you sent Taylor the home. No. no, he would just get a box oh, of candy, candy, tell no one about it, put it under his bed or something. They didn't make off. a note that they gave Taylor a fucking case of Snickers. They gave it to me, but I did not pass it along. <laughs> They gave him a note. No, 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 no. At the school, the way it worked, for me mm -hmm. anyway, is they were like, who wants to be part of the fundraiser? I do. M&M's, Snickers, or Reese's? Snickers. Here's your case. Kyle, one case of Snickers. Now I owe them either a case of Snickers or $50. If Not I don't come back with a case of Snickers or $50, then I'm in trouble. I, I They're going to put eight-year-old me on collections or something <laughs> eight -year -old you on collections so yeah. you for enough candy to get back they're gonna they're I, gonna make me fucking clean the bathrooms like ollie the poor kid who can't afford lunch i, I, it was, I was so young i don't remember the specifics i just remember that i got into and it wasn't name brand candy your parents like, had to pay I, for that candy they probably did but uh i didn't so <laughs> <laughs> all right you get you can you can have your your cheat meal yeah what is your what is the meal that you would have you can have anything you want, no matter how awful or unhealthy or ridiculous. What is your cheat meal? And we got to stick it to like one entree because we can't be like we can't be surf and turf and crab and like we can't we can't go mad with it. So it's got to be like one main okay. thing. Okay. If I'm just gonna go crazy, I would want fried chicken from my, my grandma's fried chicken, not, not from a store or from a restaurant. I want my grandma's fried chicken, just piles of it because that's how it's served. And then I want some fresh green onions. Uh, green onions are great. Have, have you ever had that where you like eat some of your chicken with your hot sauce and chicken no. and you take a bite of the green onion with it? Never. Fantastic. Brilliant. Love it. And then another thing to have uh, like a little bite when you're eating fried chicken is radishes. That's good also. Uh, what side would I want? Some Fucking like 10 pieces of Texas toast. There's no room for really uh, buttery vegetables. Very buttery. Actually, if we're going to do vegetables, I like. Uh, I'm not eating the crust either. I'm folding it in half so I can bite the butter part out and then throwing the that crust. crust away. <laughs> I like. <laughs> so it's, it's just a, a big window way. of crust. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. That fried chicken. And honestly, that's it. And I mean, the little sides, the the green onion, the maybe some uh, some collard greens for a vegetable. That'd be so good. You know? I was thinking, let me jump in because I bet yours will be better. Uh, my first thought was, hey, filet mignon, baked potato, Coca-Cola, right? It's a high calorie, but I'm like, that's not too far. I could squeeze that in anyway. You absolutely can, yeah. If I'm going to have a cheat meal, I remember we did a PKA hangout, and uh, I was at a hotel. I didn't have a lot of food options, so I ordered from, like, Domino's or something, and I ordered everything I felt like. Like, oh, they have... Uh, cookies the size of pizzas here. I'll take one of those. <laughs> <laughs> a two liter Coke. Uh, of course, I'll have a pizza. I'm at Domino's. And uh, yeah. oh, look, uh, bread. That is pretty much pizza with no sauce. I'll take that. And uh, brownies and cookies? Not. A, I don't mind if I do. And <laughs> 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 by the way, like you order brownies from Domino's, it's bigger than a human head. Like, it's, like yeah. it's, a, <laughs> it's a lot of food. And it shows That's up. a lot of carbs. That's a hell of a cheat meal. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I didn't eat it all. Of course, nobody of course. could eat all that. <laughs> no, that. But that's kind of what I want on my plate right now. That would be nice. I'm would... pretty close to Taylor. I would really like Zaxby's Chicken Fingers. They really are fucking, I, I think, what's, what's their fucking slogan? They're irresistible? Something like that. They're really fucking good. I want those chicken fingers. Uh, and I want French fries and mashed potatoes. Ooh. But doubling on the potatoes. I want I want the crinkle fries with the seasoning on them. And I want mashed potatoes with gravy, but I want that from KFC. I can do what I want. Mm -hmm. And um hmm, I definitely want a lot of that Texas toast too. That's one of my favorite things. And I would do exactly what I described. I would fold it, eat the butter part out, and dip the corners in ranch. Um, that's just to make good. 
Yeah, I want to dip the corners of the of the. Of Can the we dip the of, corners in more butter? Because that sounds good too. I want I want ranch. Okay, I want to okay. dip them in ranch. Um, what are you having to drink? I like how Woody included a drink. I need to think. Um, you know, it's going to have to be either Coca Cola because that is, uh, uh, you know, I guess I'm a little bit like Wings of Redemption with this. We like the same two beverages. It's just that I don't drink them. It's uh, mm. sweet tea and Coca Cola. Those are the two mm. best beverages that I can imagine right now. Um, maybe like the, the only beverage that I can remember that was like the best thing ever. I was really thirsty one day. We were, we were, uh, we were at this guy's place and it was like 105 fucking degrees, mm -hmm. sun beating down. And I'd been like helping them like load an ATV or something. And, and like, I couldn't go back to get water. And, uh, and they had one of those, um, crushed ice machines that like makes the, like the pebbles of ice on the property. Way better ice. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, I'm really thirsty, Stacy. Do you guys have anything to drink? He's like, come with me. And he like goes over the crushed ice machine and he like opens it. And he reaches into the crushed ice and pulls out a 20 ounce Sprite. And I don't love Sprite, but it was just right on the verge of freezing. Mm -hmm. It was like 32.5 degrees Sprite. Mm -hmm. And so it was like thick and sugary. And I just remember drinking it and it was like drinking sugar syrup and it just being so refreshing. So that I want so that, that Sprite from that day. <laughs> that exact. Sprite. So I like your, your drink choices, ice tea and Coca-Cola. Mm hmm. The only trouble is, I would say those are the best mainstream drinks because when you get into like the IBC Black Cherry mm. world, you, know, you can surpass those. IBC Cream Soda was going to be my, yeah, my drink. That, but you you, they only come in 12 ounce bottles, so I would need four. Obviously. You can get, oh, I'll, I'll link you the best. <laughs> four. <root> beer, though. <laughs> <laughs> I would need four. You know what? That would, my, my IBCs, that would be my, my during my meal, and then I'd have a nice big frosty beer afterward. And then I'd go to bed. Mm, you can have my beer. Yeah. Oh, your, your beer that you didn't get for your dream meal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I might go with this drink instead. This is it an is, IBC one. What do you oh no, have? IBC we're, makes. Such is it a is it a real sugar about, Coke or Pepsi? Is it uh, the Mexican Coca Cola would be the only Coca Cola that I would go with. But Virgil's, this, I knew it'd be Virgil's. Ooh, this is Virgil's this. root beer, Bavar with Bavarian nutmeg. All right, a seven dollar soda. They're not seven dollars if you go to the, the the market in Atlanta, the international um, okay. market in Decatur or DeKalb or wherever the fuck it is. Uh, they're so fucking good. They are expensive. They're, they're like, don't think it's going to be a dollar. Like it's they're probably the, four dollars or the five. Bottle, the bottle looks like it costs three bucks. Right? It's one of those cantilever bottle when you when you open it, it goes boop. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is fancy. Like like <laughs> I, every time I open one, I'm like. I like smell it like it's a fucking wine or something, and it really does smell so good. It smells like nutmeg. Is that what, if that's called a cantilever opening? I think it is. Yeah. Uh, I, I I was like, this was many years ago now, but I was like looking at beer at the store, and like, you know, I didn't know what I wanted, and I saw one where it was like four pack or six pack, and they all had those like cantilever, and I'm like, oh, whoa! And so I just grabbed that one, and they were vile. Yeah, the most disgusting beers I've ever had. I think I ended up just handing them out to people, but it opened and closed so cool. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah, we had the same experience one time with beer when we were like 19 or 18 or something like that. We got old Chuck to uh, go with us to the liquor store and we just bought all the the beers that like we thought were good. I think we got like, um, um, what's that one in Boston? Um, Sam Adams. We got yeah. like Sam Adams, like a bunch of different like, sam adams winter lager and shit like that and we got back to like scott's house and we cracked open these sam adams and I'm, it's bitter as a fucking like bad part of a pecan and i look at him to see if like i'm the only one he's just like and i'm like i'm glad we got a 12 pack of bud light too right and he's like yeah let's get rid of this shit and we like drank a 12 pack of bud light and like through i i don't know what happened to that beer someone probably drank it but it certainly wasn't us so i always gross. regret the the variety packs with beer or and i i i and with the Zevia, I gave in. I got the variety pack of Zevia to expand my horizons. Uh, so far, the ginger root beer, very good. I like that. I thought it was going to come with regular root beer. I guess they don't have regular root beer. They just have ginger root beer. But that's good, too. But uh, grape was horrible. Um, orange, whatever. And all I really learned, oh, the caffeine-free cola is weird. Oh, yeah. I don't even. I throw those away. 
Uh, I drank one of the black cherries last night and it was pretty good. It was better than I remembered. So I yeah. think black cherry, I mean, stack ranking, obviously cream soda, number one, ginger root beer. And then I would say black cherry third round with you. bronze. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. And then after that, it's uh, I like the grape more than you, but I like the orange as well. And uh, and the lemon lime is just so-so, but it's passable. It's probably yeah. better than grape. The Mountain uh, Zevia, like the Mountain Dew ripoff, is yeah. bizarre. I don't like that. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. But yeah, I like to get that rainbow pack. Um, I had it on. It's one of those things that I put on like Amazon. Um, like Subscribe. subscribe and, and after a while, you're like, oh, we got a ton. We, I got to get on there and fix this. We got like eight cases of soda here, and I'm not even drinking them right now. It's like Dude, I got so I, much I, of that yeah. fucking soda. After the show, I can't because there's some personal documents over there. I don't want people to see, but remind me to show you after the show my drink corner. I have okay. a lot of subscribe to run wild. I've got one, two, three. I've got four 24 packs of Perrier, two original, two lime. I forgot to cancel my lem- my zero calorie Gatorade a while ago, so I've got 48 of those. These Met RXs, I've got hundreds, and I canceled that months ago. The only thing I'm short on is cream soda Zevias. Oh, and I, I will, have uh, these uh, rain energy drinks that are good. I'll try to remember to take a picture of my Epsom salt collection uh, later tonight. Because <laughs> you I've got to subscribe and save and it's just <laughs> tons of them. Because not only was it, so I buy them by the case. Okay. But but not one case, two cases. Like 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 the renewal is two cases at a time. And like things got out of hand real quick. And now like. <laughs> I was showing somebody the other day where I've got a big bathroom over there and I like mm-hmm. go in and like there's a there's a tiny like linen closet type thing in the bathroom. You open it up and it's really just enough space that a human could like get in that closet. Yeah. But it's it's shelves, you know, like 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 five rows of shelves. It's just full. It's just full of cases of Epsom salt. <laughs> They're like, why do you have so much Epsom salt? I'm like, well, I, I like to take an Epsom salt bath every now and then. And uh, they just got a hand. They just got out of hand. <laughs> before i knew it and it's just i there must be eight cases in there or something like that Mm -hmm. each case is like 15 bags like i don't know how the shelves are supporting it frankly i'm it's impressive you're about to get a giant crash (laughs) any sort of adamantium fucking shelving in this house yeah yeah that's probably not a great way to spend my money is getting so much of this delivered to my house but i just i like these these are so good especially the lime kind have you tried making your own it's not the same it's not because you, you've tried the soda stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a soda okay. stream, and like the the flavors. A, the what is soda it stream? Ha- so you literally have the restaurant machines with the Coke carbon. Di- no, no, it's like uh, you you can go to Macy's or somewhere and get like a so the CO two and you plug it in and then it's got a little nozzle and you take a bottle, hook it up to that and set it so it's airtight. Then you pull a little lever and it carbonates it. And like, as far as making like like just regular flavorless carbonating water, it's fine. You can even like hold it down further to make it more effervescent. But like all the flavors they have are disgusting. Mm-hmm. Like so bad that I, like I the diet like cold a, water, vomit. It's like a coffee maker, but it makes carbonated water. It's about, yeah. cure, it's about the size of a Keurig machine. Mm-hmm. And it's not mineral water. Like mineral water tastes better. Yeah, well, there's no, there's no minerals in there. It's just water. It's, it's your water. Yeah. Sweet well, balls. I got to turn off all these drink subscriptions because this is outrageous. It's taking up a third of this room. Yeah. At first, the Amazon <laughs> renewal thing seems really convenient. And then, like I said, you end up with a lot of things. I'm sure. Tr- what else do I have on my renewal? I think that might be it that I've, that I've. It's hard yeah. to get the pacing right. You know, you're yeah. like, ah, oh, subscribe and say, this is cool. I'll do this. And then you're like, I don't use as many double A batteries as I thought I did. Now we yeah. have hundreds. Cause I use my Amazon card to say 5% and then like the renewal thing, it's like you're saving another like 5%. It's like, Oh, they're just giving shit away over there at fucking Amazon. Well, let's yeah. do it. Sign we up. do that too. It, it adds up sometimes. You know, we spend way too much on Amazon. Same. And we Same. had like, I don't know, real money on the Jackie's like, I want to get like a massage chair. We could use the Amazon points and this and that I'm anti massage chair because we don't have a place for it. Right. She, I'm like, where do you want the massage chair? She doesn't have an answer for that. She just wants it somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. So uh, suddenly all that money's gone, but the gym has new rubber flooring. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so that happened. And, and you're giving Jackie massages. <laughs> <laughs> Here's well, a massage keep, gun. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what exactly. you might like. Mm-hmm. So, so this is what I do. We have a massage table. Kitty and I went in together and just bought a like a like a legitimate pro massage table. Okay. And so we'll hire a masseuse to come over and 
like you can get a pro masseuse for like cheap like it's it's like a 50 dollar afternoon or something like that really and it's awesome i Dude, love it a massage chair is like three thousand. I, I think it would like we would never get our money's worth out of it yeah and and it's nowhere near like yeah. as nice of a massage it's as stupid. having it's i've sat pretty in massage chairs before it sucks you know, they just, they're all too hard. Even the ones at the mall little, that you yes. put the quarters in. Mm -hmm. they're, it's it's not a massage. It's, it's mm, not even close. Or even worse, like some gyms have those hydro massage things, which is like you lay on top of like a trash bag and then some, some fucking immigrant with a pressure washer is underneath. <laughs> like, you, know, you want shiatsu? It's a machine, right? Not a person. It's a machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I am. <laughs> I like his idea. That's better. what it feels like, though. It's it, it's like you. It's like you're standing outside without your shirt on. You throw a trash bag on your back, and fucking Pedro hits you with the fucking pressure washer. Way to like talk about any any service, be like, yeah, some fucking immigrants. <laughs> Such malice. <laughs> it's like he's doing it badly. That's what it feels like. It's awful. It's hydro massage. Like bullshit. This I haven't terrible. tried that. Uh, but you can you can hire like a pretty blonde lady to come over and give you a massage and nothing more, of course. But you know, it's and it's cheap. It's cheap. Like we, we went it, to the Dominican Republic and uh we were there for like ten days or something. Like seven, eight days in, we discovered the massage place. Like, let's get a massage, let's get a massage. I'm like, all right, you know, whatever. Like I did it. It was okay. It wasn't that good a massage. Whatevs. One of the guys I'm with was like desperate to get back. He re he's like, I want to. I want this massage. He, guys, guys, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And half of us are like, <laughs> like really? Like, it, mm -hmm. were, were you that satisfied? I think he was. I think this guy was very satisfied with his ending, and. Uh, and that's why he was like, I, I, can't, I don't know. I have no proof of it. Just his enthusiasm around this massage and wanting to get back there and do it again. Like, I, I'm pretty sure that guy got jerked off. Yeah. Good for him. I, uh, <laughs> I, I occasionally pull a muscle on my back and it's so nice to have someone who knows what they're doing. Like, like yeah, it's, it's that much. Yep. There. And, and to then just have them mercilessly fucking fix it. It's fucking great. I go to the chiropractor pretty regularly, too. I, uh, never been to one i know some people think it's a witch doctor and i i think that a lot of them are mm -hmm. i like to think that i have the good one but i bet everybody thinks that but i don't know my guy wears a lab coat he's got a diploma on the wall and he gives me an x-ray dude so, if i were but, gonna pretend to be a doctor i would wear a lab coat and put a diploma on the wall right i have a lab coat you know <laughs> yeah. like, like, those are, you can get those on amazon yeah get them right off amazon diplomas too if we're being honest um yeah how long but, do you go to school for chiropractic chiropractics like a weekend yeah, it's, is it they offer years? that at Costco. There's no way it's four years of it's learning how to. Four, pop if it's nuts. four weeks, I'm surprised. If it's if it's longer than cop training, I'll be blown away. <laughs> it probably it's is four years. Four years? Uh huh. How much do chiropractors make? Good money. Oh, um, wow. I I usually pay seventy five for a session, and I go sometimes every week, but is it an usually hour? every. No, not an hour, probably 20 minutes of actual work. Um, but it's like when he cracks my neck, oh my God, it's like a sound you've never heard before. Because I think a lot of people like tense up. And but when he tells me to relax, I literally like completely relax. And he fucking twists my head and is like, Krah! And <laughs> I'm I don't like, want oh, to I'm do so that. Good. Trust He's like, all right, we're going the other way now. And I'm just like completely relaxed. Like if he wants to kill me, he can't. Yeah, but but I figure it's in his best interest not to. Yeah. So it's just like, and then he'll like wrap, put this thing around like my like chin, back of the head area, like like to get leverage. And uh, I'm I'm like locked into the chair, and he'll jerk my head away from my body, like straight out, and it'll pop in like the my lower skull, like my spine is literally decompressing, and I'm getting like a, a millimeter taller or something. Can I just be in with that? Uh, yeah. So. So Joe Rogan is talking about this lovely thing that he got on Amazon. And it's, it's kind of like what you talked about. It goes around your neck and you're in the back of your head. Yeah. And it goes on top of a door and you pull it and you kind of like give yourself traction. So me being a genius came up with my own idea. I will Dave buy Carradine this. Style. I will buy this thing <laughs> and I will hang it from that pull-up bar behind oh, me. 
I'm going to, and my neck is hurt. I forget how I hurt it or whatever, but I like can't turn it fully. So I buy this traction thing and I have in my, in my head that I will just stretch my spine and then it will come back and I will be cured. You know, like, like <laughs> you did four years in chiropractic, <laughs> not one minute. So, so I, I put my plan into action and, and like first the, the mechanism is like breaking apart. It's this cheesy, like it's basically a coat hanger holding this cloth, you know, it, it, a head cabbage holder thing. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, I find some reinforcements and I rig it up stronger. And uh, sure enough, you know, like I'm, I'm just like teasing it, like third of my body weight, half my body weight. And then I hang and I relax. And I could not turn my head for like two and a half weeks. I totally made it worse. It was a dumb, dumb idea. Uh, and I blame Joe Rogan. Fucking I, uh, Rogan. When, when, he, uh, when he puts my feet together and like pushes them back, like one of my legs will almost always be half an inch to half an inch to three quarters of an inch longer than the other, and uh, it's like it's like at the hip, and uh, he'll pull my my whole leg, and my hip will pop, and it'll sound like not popcorn. It's deeper than that. It's a loud concussive kunk, like when he does it, and like then he pulls my legs up and shows me. He's like, look at that. And like my now my legs are the same fucking length again. Like like my my because my, my that's that's that so one. easy to change though. Yeah, I feel like I could change your body position and and just you know like rotate your hips left and right a little bit and make them seem longer. Do you remember they used to sell those balance bracelets? Yeah, yeah. It, it was pretty hot like eight years ago, something like that. Yeah. And they do these tests and like I don't know they'd like throw you off balance and then they'd make a subtle subtle difference and this time your balance was better because you're wearing the bracelet but really because he changed the test in a subtle way. I feel like somehow the leg link thing is similar. Like I'm gonna hold your knee. Oh, look at this one foot's higher. Next time I lift those, I've adjusted your thighs. He shows me the difference in the X-ray though. Like you can you walking in like my, you can see my pelvis is like to get to the chiropractor one like my one. pelvis will be like. A little off center it'll be a little rotated one way and when he does mm -hmm. it it's like back to normal and i i mean i guess he could be like yeah look at it oh and and then here's after i fixed it <laughs> like, like i don't but look all i know is like when i walk out of there even if it's, i i'm a strong believer in the placebo effect like if you believe it when you look at like the effects of like pharmaceuticals like against placebo they're like 40% better than placebo in a lot of cases. And they're like, yeah, this is the, this is the greatest thing to slice bread. It's 40% better than placebo. It's like, really? That's all? Then nothing at all? Then sugar water? I, I think the placebo effect is really strong. So even if he's a witch doctor, I think that me believing that he's making me better is, makes me feel better. And that's all that matters. I tried to I'm Google it, but like I'm on page two and they're all saying that it's legit. But it's like Kansas City Chiropractic, Allen Chiropractic, Reinhardt Chiropractic, West Houston Chiropractor.com, SpineUniverse.com. There's no like independent. I want WebMD or something, you know. I also feel imbalanced when I'm standing. Like 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 after a couple of weeks of not being there, like I'm shuffling my weight like back and forth, and it doesn't feel right. Like I I I can like if I stand straight on one leg, the other can swing. Like like. Again, maybe it's in my head. Maybe I'm all wrong about this, but and and but even if that's the case, then I enjoy the the uh, the placebo effect of him yanking the fuck out of my hip, it popping, and then me feeling better. I yeah, I, I've had um I haven't been to a chiropractor, but I have been in a room with a chiropractor who like did little adjustments on people. Yeah, uh, and like I had never had anything, so he did my neck, and it, it was. A level like I can crack my own neck a little bit. Yeah, so. um, I thought it would be that, but a little more. No, it was that times ten, that times yep. fifty. It was it was a very and and I don't know how to describe how I felt like lighter. Like, did my ears drain? Like, what just? Ha why is my perception of this room different than it was pre crack? I, I, yeah, it, it it's a it's a neat thing to go through. I don't even they they'll do this thing to your spine where they grab the skin that's like in the middle of your back and they'll pull the skin and just doing that is like, it's like pop. I and saw that on um, Juji's channel. They had a chiropractor come and, and they cracked their backs in a couple of ways, but one way he did it, it's just like that. He used the skin like a handle and sort of got him. 
Yeah, and, it's great. He does that. Um, he does this thing where he just like puts his palms in the center of my back, like pretty high up and then, and, and presses in with like a lot of force, like suddenly. And, it, and it's, it, it's another one of those things where you got to trust him. He's like, all right, exhale. And I completely exhale and relax. I want him to be able to fucking, mm-hmm. you know, go as hard as it can. I'm like, do it as hard as you want. Like, like, like I, I want the maximum effect out of this. I re- I really like the popping noises. It's really like I watch those montages of chiropractors popping people. I don't know if you've seen that. Mm-hmm. It's super satisfying. Like he, they'll work with like MMA fighters and like power lifters, people that often have their joints like doing weird shit and their necks and backs crack and pop like nothing you've ever heard. It's neat to see tough guys endure it too like like i saw diego sanchez do it and some other i can't remember him but like these are guys that i know as high pain tolerance professional fighters and then they see the chiropractor and they're like babies just getting smashed so yeah Jeez, I'm, I'm looking at videos of chiropractors and this is a scam dude this there is no way this is real what is it in the video you see that feels scammy well, first of all, I'm searching chiropractic gone wrong. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. second of all, it's like like some of the stuff they're doing, it's just made it's just make believe. It's like, all right, now now take this arm, put it here, and I'm gonna punch you in the side of the gut. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's that's all that it is. I watched one. I just saw a video where this one chiropractor grabbed a woman's neck, she was on her knees in front of him, and he went no! And then she went oh! <laughs> <laughs> the and was like not non-functional because like you're not supposed to do this. I do like, get, I, I do get to, and something but, else. I read something like apparently a real doctor said like, hey, uh, so and so artery and this and that. Uh, you know, some of these pops are affiliated with strokes because of the enormous amount of pressure it puts on blah 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 blah. And it's like I that does seem to be true based. Yeah, there on, was a woman who died. I, yeah, I'm sure you see him on died. the table. They wrap a towel around like their jaw. Yeah. Tell them to relax. And then they just yank on it really hard. And it it's like they get taller. But what's what it gets me is how long it takes them to recover. They're, they When you crack your knuckles, you're right back in the game. It's nothing. When they extend someone's spine, they're like doing a systems check. Like, oh, yeah. my. What? Am I okay? Do my yeah, toes your, still Your brain move? is like pinging your spine like, okay, do we have a... Uh, hey, all right, got pinged back. All right, we're good there. All right, well, let's ping the feet. Yep, still working. <laughs> God damn, look at you. What the hell just happened right, to this body? It's been... Right here. Uh, this is uh, Katie May, an act, or uh, a model, former model. May oh, tweeted geez. on January 29th, 2016 that she had pinched a nerve in her neck on a photo shoot and got adjusted at a chiropractor. She tweeted... On the 31st, that she was going back to the chiropractor tomorrow. On the evening of February 1st, she said she began feeling numbness in a hand and dizzy, called her parents and tell them she was going to pass out. Uh, she went to the hospital. She was found to be suffering a massive stroke. According to her father, May was not conscious. We finally got to see her the other day. We never got to talk to her again. Well, I swore with withdrawn. A coroner's report confirmed that the stroke was the result of the chiropractor's neck adjustment, which tore her left uh, vertebral artery. The coroner's office ruled it an accident. So, yep. Yeah. Oh, well, it was an accident, Taylor. Get over it. Yeah, I'm familiar with that story. Look, I mean, Can you still go. Yeah, absolutely, I still go. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know. I'm, just, I'm not some frail little model. Yeah, I mean, do you have a strong chiropractor? It might rip your head clean off with that towel. Ah, he's, he's they're okay. curiously he's, strong I, though. Right? Like masseuse is masseuse yeah. is shot. I mean, oh, female masseuse. Like what? Who gave you man hands? Like you're strong, like a Russian like, farmer. She's fucking been working those things out for yeah. years. Like, I was at a strip club and they had they for like maybe ten or fifteen dollars for ten minutes. You could there was a masseuse mm-hmm. and she was not dressed like sluttily. She was wearing like evening wear, like 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 a like an evening dress. Yeah, and uh, I think she was Russian. I'm almost positive she was. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Like like, and she's just like she's like, how hard do you want it on a scale from one to ten? And I I was like. Probably total one. like a like a seven, eight, nine, something like that. Because like, she wasn't a tiny woman, but it's a woman. And, mm. and she she goes, Rah! and I'm just like one, a one, a one. <laughs> like, Can I go was, home? I'll still pay you. <laughs> <laughs> she was so strong. Like like I think her hands were stronger than mine. Like 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 if we were doing that game like you did in school, like like Mercy, where you like yeah, bend each other's. Yeah. I think she beats me. 
I feel like Taylor was undefeated in that at 13 years old. Well, he throwing a headbutt if things got out of hand. <laughs> you know, you know what is funny? Like grade school wise, I mean, obviously other kids got bigger than me and stronger than me in, in high school and middle school, but like grade school wise, no one beat me in arm wrestling ever. It was that was my my champion thing. Arm wrestling and yeah, P knuckle. Doing that and like getting the other person to to bend down. Is is that what P knuckle is that called P knuckle? That's what we called it. That's new to me. Okay. Yeah. We call it mercy, where you bend be, the, I've heard that your too. hands back and yeah. forth. Or, you, or, uh, or no, not speaking, Pinochle, that's a different game. Uncle. Speaking of it, feats yeah. of strength, um, we, we 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 did our hangout um this past weekend, had a had a great time. Four sessions. We talked about it on PKM though. Yeah. But uh dirty. Um we were looking at one of the one of the houses we were looking at had like um I'm gonna get the name wrong. It's like Bopham Sockham. Sockham Bopham. Uh, yeah, Sockham Boppers. Yeah. So yeah, like the they're gigantic, oversized boxing gloves. Fun in a pillow. And, uh, and uh, that got brought up. He's like, yeah, you know, like maybe we we could we could have a little little boxing match with those. And uh, I was like, I don't want to wear the gloves though. And and Dirty for some reason, Dirty agreed to let me punch him in the stomach with my fist. Oh, I don't know. He's not so, gonna let you do that. And you shouldn't, even if it's offered. He, you agreed. he agreed. He agreed. And so when we meet, I'm gonna punch dirty in the stomach with my fist. Don't even say don't even say hi. <laughs> Just, <right away. laughs> Just in the no, airport. I, I, I'll let him prepare and everything, but I'm gonna lift that little cocksucker off the ground. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to have to drive him to the hospital and ruin, ruin the whole evening. And then you won't be there to peer pressure people into poker, and I'll have the run with magic. And I'll get everybody. He's underestimating your strength. That's what's he happening. He might be. I, he I, tremendously think he, I think he may have made an error. Um, like, and, mm. and, and, like, I certainly don't know how to box, but I know how to throw a punch. Like, like you know, in that MMA class, like, we do those drills, like, all the time. You know, you know rotate, rotating your hips. And how, you know, how to... How to really snap a punch in there. I'm going to put in a request. Don't hit me. I don't no, want to be hit. Nobody, I'll be <laughs> Nobody's a terrible hit. plan. Yeah, nobody's, nobody's getting hit that doesn't want anyone else. Uh, but Dirty wants a, wants wants one. So What does he think? Um, I don't know what he's thinking, but 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 you know, he's a tough guy. Uh, you know, Dirty's a Dirty's a real man's man. So I think that uh, This I is the Dirty from the Patreon. Yeah, yeah, burly fella, you know, about but we're thinking of different guys. Six, oh no, he he he, uh, he he kept fish. He uh, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> he kept fish. Yeah, he kept fish. Yeah, this poor guy. This poor guy. Um, he he bought some fish, like like some clownfish and some other stuff, like like a hundred hundred fifty dollars worth of fish. And saltwater tank. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. saltwater tank. He liked them. Cute fish. And his girlfriend came in and killed them all by like adding some like coral reef cleaner that wasn't even required. And he's like. He's like scared of her. He's like, this bitch <laughs> killed kill my fucking fish. She killed my fucking fish. She's in the other room, of course. Yeah. <laughs> she, killed, she killed my fucking fish. I'm worried I'm next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get some more fish, but I'm a little worried. I think I found a bunch of I found a bunch of reef cleaner in my coffee this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. He came back, he's like, Woody, I found it. I'm gonna get a Moorish idol. You know, this is like the Mount Everest of fish keeping. This is the hardest fish to keep. When I kept them, they were just being kept successfully for the first time in like human history. Uh, mm-hmm. it, 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 it's not the one to start with. So they yeah. really don't want to be there. No, I, I don't know. I guess they're just really sensitive. The fish that have long flowy things are mm-hmm. extra susceptible to like bacterial and parasitic infections as a rule of thumb. Mm-hmm. I'll, yeah. I'll show people what I'm Yeah, then I would just get the simplest ones that are still colorful. Whatever the easiest clown ones. Fish. Yeah. yeah I, I think fish. I would just get like clownfish or, or, or just goldfish and betas, like like stuff that you can go and buy super cheap. And if things don't, you know, but learn to do this, like, like, and then slowly progress up to like this pro level of having mm-hmm. a fancy fi- I looked up that fish that Woody was talking about and it's a real fancy fish, apparently. Like, like all the articles are like the most difficult fish in the world to keep. <laughs> Only the reef keepers, reef keepers. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the reef keepers, reef keepers. <laughs> oh, that guy, he's a reef keepers, reef keeper. <laughs> it's so obscure. <laughs> Sir Nigel Waterman, the reef keepers, reef keeper. He has two of them. That's Man, right, two at once. 
It's an incredible yeah. feat. Never, never performed by a... Uh, let me show you. This is what a Moorish Idol Henry. looks like. No relation. Uh, and you can see it's quite nice. Fucking beautiful. Yeah. This is what it looks like when a shitty reef keeper tries oh, to keep it. Dead. I don't want to see sad fish. Oh, <laughs> what do you mean he's frowning? <laughs> hey, look, this one's sad. <laughs> he's probably that like, this feel bad. This is like, I don't know what that flowy uh, dorsal fin thing is called. I can Maybe hear Sarah McLaughlin. Like, In the arms <laughs> of But it's like end. rotted Dude, off. A... Look at his tail fin. It's like the, all the, it's gone. It's all eaten away. This is away. like one of those, uh, you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about me. <laughs> 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 this is what they're supposed to be. And this is what oh, they man. are. Oh, that, mm. that guy, he's he's out in the ocean swimming all colorful. This guy's a little matted and shitty looking. <laughs> it's the same kind of fish as uh, Scar or whatever his name is from Finding Nemo. Is that right? I, I wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah. That's why he's doing that. Like, like he watched Finding, ne Finding Nemo and he's right. buying the fish from Finding Nemo. He should stick with clownfish then for a while. He should, he should probably downgrade to like a pet rock or something because, <laughs> I mean, he killed clownfish, which from my understanding... It, are, are one of the more easy fish to keep. Yep. Yeah, I would Do they come in? I would want predatory fish. Like I think we've talked about this before, but I, I think Woody told me that it's a bad idea. Like he maybe once thought the same that a piranha would be cool, but in reality, they're just like kind of boring and they don't do. You know, it ain't a movie piranha. And they piranhas... freeze to death if your dad leaves them in your garage in the winter. <laughs> piranhas don't swim very much. They tend to be super still, so they're not super interesting unless you like feeding them and watching them eat. That I think would be the draw. The same way that like keeping a, a snake, I think the cool part is when you eventually feed it. Mm. Um, but god damn, like like that's one thing. Like I I don't want to keep fish. Like if, if there were an aquarium in my house filled with beautiful fish, I would click that box. But I don't want to, you know, go through all that. I don't want to learn a new it's essentially like a a, a hobby, a skill that you're you're yeah. you're taking on, you know? It's, a real it's rather it's fair. It's rather expensive, and it seems like one of those things where you start small, and then like oh, slow, now you've got a, I don't know, you start with a twenty-five gallon tank, and now you got a seventy gallon tank, and oh well, I got a five hundred gallon tank now. It's a wall mount, and it does this and that, and I got a smaller tank underneath it for filtration purposes, and the, oh yeah, well when I go on vacation, I have to call the oceanography society and have fucking Jacques Cousteau watermen <laughs> come over just because my fish are so rare and special. You're right about all of that. that. And, and one thing you didn't mention was the upgrade cycle is very expensive. Like you get that 25 gallon tank, right? Now you go to a 40 or 70 or something. The heater, the filter, the sub, all of that stuff is garbage now. That filter you had on your 25 gallon tank, that doesn't do a 70. The um, water pump that keeps everything circulating and moving, that's no good. The lights are not the right size and brightness for your new deeper tank. Like, everything you bought is garbage when you go to your next one and then that repeats itself a couple of times it's yeah yeah it just seems like a hobby that's difficult like, like i really like the old adage of like what you'll correct me here it's like buy it nice or buy it twice i think that's it that right? works mm -hmm. buy once cry once i've heard too sure yeah like i like that adage and i've often tried to apply that to many of my purchases you know like if i i did that with my gaming pc i do that with my most of my electronics um you know things uh, Things that you use a lot, like mattresses, I never skimp on. Pillows, I always get very expensive. When sheets, I always just really overspend. Like, if I if I'm gonna be using something a lot, and I'm I don't want to be disappointed with it. Like kitchen stuff. Like when I went to buy a mixer, it's like there's no way I'm not getting the fucking KitchenAid mixer. I'm not getting some Chinese knockoff. Like when I get a blender, well, we gotta get a fucking Ninja blender, or it's, Greg Doucette's gonna laugh at me. Like, like you just go ahead and like buy it nice or buy it. Those twice. things are, I've been cooking a little bit lately, uh, making my own. Um, what would you call them? I don't know. They're like low calorie, high protein snacks and stuff. So that I can, yeah, eat. I have a KitchenAid mixer and a Ninja blender and they're good. They do the job. Like they I do the job. They, they, they work every single time. They're very powerful. So if you need to like be crushing ice or it really needs to be a homogenous mixture, you've nailed it every single fucking time. Yeah. You're never, you're never going to have to scrape. You're never going to have to have like yogurt at the top that never got mixed in or powders or whatever. They just fucking work. The KitchenAid mixer? Like just moving the speed selection switch feels like heavy. Like it's a, like shifting gears. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's like a lawnmower type situation. Like, like shifting. It's great. It's great. I love the KitchenAid mixer. Like I don't use it as much as I once did. I don't really like, um, 
but for like making batter or anything that's like complicated, like I use that and, and I've used mine. I have all the stuff, but I've only done it like once or twice, but um, I have the meat grinding attachment so you can make your own hamburger meat, which is the best hamburger you'll ever eat because you can choose like prime cuts of ground chuck mm. and, uh, and like, you, you slice them into these like manageable slices and then you freeze them for 30 minutes to like stiffen them up. And then you just sort of look, lower them into the grinder and then it's just spitting out this perfect hamburger meat that you can like keep in a, in a I container. I have a dream this summer, right? So, so um, especially in the summertime, when I finish working out in the gym, I'm very hot and kind of like wiped out energy wise. I tip in the pool and click back on. I've done this lots of times. Um, I want ice cream delivered to the pool. But, you know, like a Greg Doucette ice cream. He did a video where he showed 200 calories of different foods. And he has a really high-pitched voice. And he's like, you know, this is great ice cream. This is my ice cream. Does it taste as good? No. But you could have <laughs> six times more. And I'm like, you know what? I'm down for that trade-off. I want to try his ice cream. And I want to I be way steep in the pool eating low-calorie ice cream. That's, that's my trade. So there's a few, like... Um, lower calorie protein ice creams. Um, mm -hmm. The most popular one is Halo Top. Um, yeah, Halo, Halo Top's pretty good. Halo Top is pretty fucking good. And uh, it's got like, off the top of my head, it's got like, let's say 24 grams of protein for like 375 calories, which is way more than like a protein shake, right? Sure. But you're eating a fucking pint of ice cream. So it's, it's, it's like... A this pint is a, is a lot. Yeah, that's if you eat the whole pint. Yeah. Um, there's also, um, I'm, I'm looking right now because I, I want to say there's another one that's like the superior one, like the best one. Greg's you is like a salad bowl full of ice cream for 200 calories. If now, we're being honest, it's not ice cream, though. You might know more about this than me. I haven't tried it. Um, oh, you've never had that? Oh. Right. So it's not ice cream. It's just ice and strawberries mixed up pretending to be ice cream. It's That's bullshit. That's what it like, doesn't have like, like the thing about ice cream is the is the cream fat that's in there. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you can never duplicate that creaminess that you're getting, that's the pleasurable part of ice cream. That and it's usually sweet with like, and it's sure. the consistency too, like like how hard ice cream gets. Mm -hmm. And that stuff that Greg makes is like thin and like almost watery. No matter why, you can have a salad bowl full of it, right? Because it it's absolutely air. is. You yeah. can. But I'd you rather have the Halo Top kind that actually feels you know, texture wise, like it's ice cream. Like you can tell eating it, like the best flavor of it, I think is like salted sea salt caramel, uh, with like in the vanilla and like, you, you know, going in like, this is not fucking ice cream, but like, it tastes like frozen protein powder because it's pretty much what it is with extra sugar. And it's, it's pretty good. Like if you're comparing that and especially you, Woody, you haven't been eating sweets anyway, this is going to taste super sweet to you. And like, if you just get the vanilla kind, it's like 180 calories for a pint of it. It's ridiculous. Like 200 oh. calories for the whole fucking pint. It's like 20 grams of protein. I just, yeah, I, I don't know. There's this particular summer thing I want to live through where it's like 90 out and I'm waist deep in the pool and I'm having ice cream. And, mm -hmm. uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to make that happen. So there's uh, an ice cream called Huey Hey, which is, as you might hey, imagine. W-H-E-Y, hey. I guess. Yeah, made with um, Huey protein. And I'm only seeing three different uh, flavors. There's chocolate, vanilla, and ice cream. <laughs> ice cream is the flavor. Um, I'm using. I'm looking on MyFitnessPal to see what the calories are. Oh. Um, the website has salted caramel. Ooh. That's a very good flavor in candies and in ice cream. Such a good combo. It looks like a tub is only 177 calories, with 22 grams of protein, which is Jeez. like. 70% more than a scoop of protein powder as far as the calories go. It's like, you know, a scoop of protein powder is like 100 calories, 20 to 25 grams of protein. And this is 177 calories with 22 grams of protein. Um, I don't know. I, I've never had it before. I was just looking at like protein ice creams. I guess they sell um, protein bars. Is that what they're called? Whatever, candy bars mm -hmm. on their website. It doesn't look like you can buy ice cream from them. I guess they don't have refrigerated trucks. What are the macros on the uh, on the protein bars? Because like, there's so many of them that are just candy bars in disguise. Like, like it should have twenty to twenty two grams of protein for two hundred or less calories. Yeah, or, the kind or, I like is the uh, it's just the Kirkland brand, the Costco brand. It's like 
180 calories, 21, 22 grams of protein, I think. And it's an enormous amount of fiber too, which is good because if you're eating a really high protein diet, often you don't get enough fiber. Let me see. And they taste good too. The, The chocolate kind is kind of ass and it comes in a cookie dough chocolate combo pack. That's all they sell it in. And so I always eat all of the cookie dough and then I'm sad that I just had the chocolate left. Yeah, so, the these, so just the um, I think the brand is pure protein. Uh, and these oh, yeah. are is that what you're talking about? No, no, no. But uh, I, I've had pure protein before. Yeah, they're um, you can see the macros on that are ridiculous. It's 21 grams of protein and 180 calories like it's. Yeah, for chocolate deluxe. I Those yeah. are OK. I don't think they taste as good as the um, the Costco ones because I really? used to buy these instead. Yeah. And the Costco ones are way fucking cheaper. I've had the dark chocolate of the uh, of the ones I just linked there, and they taste like dark chocolate. Like they're really fucking good. Yeah, so other flavors. When you link, this is the best chocolate deluxe. Ten grams of protein, one hundred and sixty-five calories. So that wouldn't fit your. Yeah, for bars. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty terrible for a bar. Mm. I think Greg Doucette's bars are the, the ones you make. That recipe are the way to go. The score you, bars. Yeah. 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 As I far as like, it. I, it looks, it, it's a little bit complicated. You got to order that, um, that fiber liquid shit off of Amazon, mm. but, um, like Metamucil? No, there's this ingredient. Um, I'm not going to remember it right Cilium now. Cilium husk? It's, no, it's a liquid. It's like, I'll, I'll find mm-hmm. it. Now. Yeah. Whatever. A lot of the, um, the, like, you're like, oh, I want to get this. And they're like, well, do you have any, anabolic brownie powder on hand like no yeah. <laughs> you know? like i didn't okay <laughs> <laughs> oh man i'm so hungry <laughs> i'm hungry too i have 900 calories left today and it's Ooh. dude i i did the same thing again where Fiber i have like barely eaten anything today because there's more ribs in the fridge <laughs> and I've, I've saved up I've i'll saved probably up. just have chicken bread so the stuff that goes in there is called Fiber Yum. Mm-hmm. It's a prebiotic fiber sweetener syrup. Um, and it's adding like all the, a ton of fiber and all the sweetness. And it's like the consistency of, it's thick. It's like honey or something like that. And that's like the main ingredient that he's adding to protein powder and a couple other things to like okay. make his protein bars. And then he sprinkles them with actual candy. So they <laughs> taste a little bit better. It's like crushed score bits. By taking yeah. out my high calorie snacks, which is trail mix, and then substituting things I ate before for like low cal versions of it, you know, like re- remove the butter entirely, you know, swap out whatever. I don't know. It, it, oh, swap out cream in my coffee for almond cream. And now my coffees are 10 calories, right? It used to be 70. And you have a couple of coffees and that makes a difference. Um, that's like 80% of what I did I just lowered my caloric intake and now I'm at a deficit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Finding like healthy, uh, alternatives to the things that you, you crave. Yeah. Like, so um, hard. The and they're not as good. They're not as good. good, but if they're 80% as good and you get abs, it's like, well, that's the deal I'm trying to make. Yeah. That's what you got to find. You got to find that 80% is good, but way less calories you know a tenth the calories 80 percent is tasty it's like do you you like fried chicken all right well this isn't going to be fried chicken but (laughs) this is chicken like dusted with breadcrumbs in an air fryer it's close it's 80 percent as good close as you can get without (laughs) fucking up your midsection (laughs) yeah that's a really good example yeah Mm -hmm. yeah the same's true with like most of those air fryer recipes like like that guy that you linked the other day that with that that little grilled chicken wrap yeah i have those he's got tons of recipes he's a really good video maker Mm -hmm. like i don't know what he did before this but like he's a really handsome guy too like he looks perfect on camera um but he's always making videos like don't you know like 50 calorie donuts and shit like that and he's like making donuts in the air fryer but then i notice he like puts frosting on them and like takes them and like dips them in like or crushed Oreos. And it's like, well, I don't think the, I don't think you factored the crushed Oreos into the, <laughs> the 50 calorie part. Yeah. I'm showing people his videos. There's no sound, but it, this, um, 
lavish chicken wrap thing. I have this. This is like one of the staples in my diet, and it's pretty good. Pickles are not a lot of calories, but there's a pretty big taste in them, so they're they're neat. Jalapeno slices are good like that too. Um, yeah, jalapenos. You can really spice anything up with that, and it's basically zero calories, right? Yeah, it's a pepper, like, so zero stuff like stuff like that can make a um, like a salad really filling. Like throwing in like banana peppers and sliced cucumber and shredded carrots and stuff, and all of a sudden you're eating like half a pound of like roughage. Hmm. You know what's funny? Uh, I just I was on Twitter looking for something to yeah anything funny. And trending right now is Lola Bunny because oh. apparently they released a new picture of her and people are talking about wanting to fuck Lola Bunny again. Hell yeah. From I the new some. LeBron James version. You were right. <laughs> I see, I, every now and then I see some chick doing like cosplay of Lola Bunny on uh, on Reddit. Always very hot. It's like, they got yeah, rid of Lola Bunny's well. tits. She doesn't have tits anymore. Wow. Oh. You have to go gay for a previous PKA guest. Who do you pick? Mm, probably Tucker. He seems hairless. Mm. Very twinky. Tucker's a cutie. Yeah. You know, I'd love to walk into a nice restaurant, that cutie on my arm. He had to describe him as with one word, taut. taut. Uh, <laughs> I would I would say nubile. Kyle, who do you got? Oh, that's difficult because like Clearly, I can't remember like who we've had on the show because I had <laughs> no fucking idea that that Doug Polk had been on the show before. And like, I I, I watch his videos daily. <laughs> like, like I talked to him for four hours. I'm kind of a fan of Doug Polk, and like, like we were we were like brainstorming like a few hours before the show today about like potential guests, you know, in the in the coming weeks and months and such. And uh, and D I was like, ah, Doug Polk. Um, it'd be kind of cool to talk to that guy because, you know, we had Negreanu on before and they played this heads up match. Polk took like three quarters of a million off of him or something crazy like that. Be interesting to talk to him about that. And and then apparently we have spoken to him before and I have no. When was it? What year was that? Uh, God, don't tell me it was like last year. <laughs> Doug Polk PKA. Because then I can't blame drugs. Let's see. What I don't think it, it was said? that recent. Wait, episode 408? That can't be right. That's, no, oh wait, we're in the 500s. That's not that. Okay, that's, yeah, that's, that's like, like two, two years, years ago. ago. Yeah, a couple yeah. years ago. I was sober. Hmm? Yeah. I was so I, I don't know. I don't know cuz like the like like the first like You weren't that experienced at being sober though. The first 350 <laughs> episodes of this show <laughs> boys. <laughs> I do not remember because like I would be stoned <laughs> as fuck through the whole podcast. You might be thinking like, oh, maybe Kyle's got a kidney infection. He keeps getting up every 30 minutes, <laughs> you know, like, no, Kyle's walking to the very next room and hitting his dab rig. So like, 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 back, like, what, are we, what are we talking about now? Kyle's like, dodging <laughs> the go gay for a guest question. Oh, I'm not dodging it. I'm, I'm, I'm He's saying trying to I remember don't, who's been on the show. I need a fucking lineup. Um, mm -hmm. Like I'm trying to remember more than two guests. You are breaking Milo's heart right now. All right. Uh, what do you go on? <laughs> Look up your channel and tell Kyle who we've had on the show. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, give me a list of our guests because I don't, I can't. I thought I you might pick what, Milo Yana, Yianopoulos. Yianopoulos. Yeah, I don't there's remember. Dick, there's Filthy. There's Harley. Danny Mullen. Another cutie. Blame Truth. Slush Puppy. Blame Truth. You think Blame, Blame Truth? Truth? Blame Good, Truth. Solid is choice. Destiny, yeah, Blame Drifter. To me, uh, I think Blame Truth might be our most handsome guest that that I can remember. He is looking real nice. I'm going yeah, the other way. Guy. If I'm going gay, I'm going gay. Damn drops. A very masculine guy? Dude, I'm not going a little gay. You're gay at being you're going, gay. You're going very. You're going whole hog. <laughs> in, uh, literally and figuratively. <laughs> I disagree with that take. I I am sticking solidly with, with my pick of Tucker. I, I'm really happy with my Blaine Truth pick. I think we make a handsome couple. That's a... That's a good yeah. looking man. Yeah. yeah. He's a little Who shorter than is? me. Like, like I think it's I think he's honestly a good bit shorter than me. The handsome guy in shape. Be a good fit. Maybe yeah. you make a, a postcard. What am I like? Hallmark card. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Every year, all sorts of Christmas cards and mm -hmm. shit. Yeah. Oh, great stuff. Yeah. Do some right. cod little cod so four so like options. one thing one year, you know? A little cod four cosplay. 
he could be Captain Price and I could be Captain Price's boyfriend and it'd be great. <laughs> You'll never know that I was a uh, ghost. <laughs> in the yeah, background. yeah, I'd wear the mask. Yeah. The mask. So don't shame my family. Yeah. yeah well, I, I think we all had good answers there. I, I just have no memory of like so much of like, like for one thing, I, I think I kind of, I'm kind of in the moment when we're, when we're recording this. So it's like, I honestly don't remember what we did last week. I don't remember. Did we have a guest last week? I don't know. No. No. I don't. Well, that's why I, I had to start a while ago writing down what we talk about throughout the show because we'd finish and be like, all right, titles. It's like, well, well, we did, I, I guess, uh, you know, gay Hitler or whatever, whatever the hell it was. I vaguely remember, never remember Filthy being on the show like a few weeks ago. I remember the mm-hmm. caveman nonsense that we got in that like fucking circle talk. It was like three weeks um, ago. Yeah, the last then, two weeks, just the three of us. Yeah, but like. I have no idea what we talked about last episode. Like none at all. Like like I'm a I little foggy on what we talked about Tuesday. <laughs> so a, a different topic? Yeah. Yeah. I've got two I This popped into my head because when Woody Craft was shutting down, I was like, what should I do next? What would be my next business? And I was going to make an Alamo movie theater. Like, there's, there's none right here. I really like the concept Dodge of it. Dodge that bullet. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Dude, they're, call, they're um, declaring bankruptcy right now. Like, that would be everywhere. You know, Everything swoop I, in. <laughs> what, uh, you having a lot of private parties? Hey, hey Kyle, yeah. you, you want to come over and watch a movie with me? <laughs> $4,000 will get you in. All the popcorn you can eat. Yeah, bring your friends. $4, We're 420 $4, friendly. I don't care. I just... <laughs> It's like, uh, it's like Randy fucking, fucking $8,000 yeah. a month mortgage. I thought owning a movie like theater would be a really neat business and, you know, I would love it and it would do Sustainable. well. Sustainable. And, and I had this idea that, like, um, a lot of movie theaters, especially in my area, aren't doing it great. You know, if you have good seats around here, you're kind of top notch. This is like the whole movie restaurant. Like, go high end and charge whatever, $17 instead of 12 So, yeah. um, anyway, that was a terrible idea. If you had to start a business right now, what would it be? Hmm. I always sort of default back to that air conditioning repair thing, just hmm. b- based on my experiences with those guys. Yeah, and just just it's it's one of those things where like you have it and people will pay whatever you want for it. You know, like like man, if you if if it's the winter or the summer and you need that guy and he tells you hmm. it's going to be a three hundred dollars service call, you, you're like, you yeah, man, it. just just fucking get out here, yeah. like like. All right, well, the compressor is $800. Fuck. Fucking hook it up. I'm hot. <laughs> yeah. Do you have AC? Yeah, so the, um, I actually they got fixed that fixed it over the winter? The day before yesterday, I got it fixed. Oh, okay. um, because it was starting to warm up again. And so um, I finally called my uh, my like rental company or whatever, and I was like, I was like hey, uh, my air conditioning's out. And they're like, okay, have you tried? And I'm like, I don't want to troubleshoot. My air conditioning is broken. I've had a professional look at it. He says I need a whole new unit. So no le- no amount of flipping switches or toggling knobs is going to fix this. He's like, oh, so you flipped a switch? I'm like, no, no. I'm telling you, I want a repairman, and I'm not going to jump through hoops to do it. And he's like, all right, well, well I'll, I'll put the case in now. Is there anything else? Yeah, my dishwasher's also broken. <laughs> <laughs> all that right. sucks. We'll put you on the list for that, too dishwasher repairman shows up he's lithuanian i immediately recognize his accent i'm like are you from lithuania he's like yeah yeah lithuania i'm like cool man i used to know a couple couple guys from lithuania and we had a little talk about that when i tell you that i troubleshot this dishwasher many many times i'm not exaggerating i pushed all the buttons no water would come out i did yeah. everything i checked everything that a you know a reasonably mechanically minded individual might do i made sure water was getting to it under the sink i did all these things i like lifted the trap make sure it wasn't clogged i did all sorts of things you turn it off he, and back on he comes in and pushes one fucking button and it fucking runs and i'm just like all right you got the hands of god or something like that but it's fixed i'm like hey you get paid for your service call i guess and you're in and out of here in 10 minutes so that was fixed and then the air conditioning repairman came and uh, he worked for the rental company. He goes, ah, yeah, you were right. You need a whole new unit. Uh, we're going to put in the bid to the local contractor. He'll be here tomorrow. He shows up and he's my favorite kind of like dude. He's like the dude who's like a professional at what he does. And he's fully aware that most of the people who do his job are fucking idiots. Mm-hmm. He goes out there and he's like, 
somebody been tinkering with it? And I'm like, yeah, two different people have looked at it already. It's like, yeah, I can tell. You know what the fuck they were doing, did they? I'm like, I, I have <laughs> I have no idea, man. I don't know anything about air conditioning repair. I know I you can if you name that's the why part, I called you. <laughs> hey, that's, that's why you're here. He's like, well, your air conditioner's fixed, first of all. <laughs> you don't need a whole new unit. All right. Uh, it's just like you had a discombobulated booba guy. And I'm like, ah, one of those, eh? He's like, uh, yeah, that was classic. next to my list. I'm like, yeah. Classic. <laughs> he's like, also, went up in your attic? You're leaking cold air everywhere. I patched all that up, too. You're good to go. And he's like, he's in, the, in and out in 15 minutes and fixes. They thought I needed a new, like, $15,000 system. And mm -hmm. this dude shows up and fixes the, I don't have to pay for it, but I'm assuming he fixed the problem for less than, you know, a service call plus $150 or something like that. So, yeah. It's 65 degrees in here right now. Chilly as fuck, just the way I like it. Yeah, if, if, if you don't wear a shirt, you shiver. Like, like when I get under that fucking covers at night, I need them. It's perfect because I, I have night sweats if I don't keep it super cold. I'll, I, have, I have my my night terrors and I'll, I'll wake yeah. up in the middle of the night drenched and have to literally go take a shower before I can get back to bed, changing sheets and shit. So I keep it cold as fuck. I need it really cold when I'm sleeping too because even I always need the blanket on me even if it's hot, at least some of the blanket on me. And so like, if it's hot in there, I need the blanket on me and I'll wake up just like steaming, like a hockey player taking their helmet off. Just like, so hot. I, I could go and run for an hour and not get nearly as sweaty as what I, as the way I wake up sometimes. Just <laughs> like, so like, like when I go to take my shirt off, like just reaching down and pulling it up doesn't do the trick. You got to do like the cross your arms over and grab it at your at your opposite hips with your arms like across and like like peel it off and like could literally wring a little bit out if you wanted to. Like it's it's like when you drop it on the floor, it just goes. It makes a noise when I drop my shirt on the floor. It's so wet. Like I have to change my <laughs> underwear and I'm just like. I can't just towel off after after this. It'd be like going to bed after a run. I gotta, I'll jump in the shower and like rinse off and go back to bed. I have to change the sheets and shit. Like like that happens maybe once a week. Yeah, that that's unpleasant. So it needs to be like sixty five or so to sleep. Like I, I thought you were gonna talk about like that waking up with like dry mouth kind of feeling, and uh, yeah, that. But I. And I don't get that very often unless I'm dehydrated, obviously. But this past Saturday, I went to uh, this was a friend of mine's 30th birthday. So we went to a winery and uh, I'd never been to a winery and I'm not a big wine drinker, but I got good and wine drunk on Saturday. And I woke up the next morning just with the like I could I could I could have licked something and it would be dry as a bone. Like I could feel like my tongue like this is wrong. But yeah, that was. That was horrible. I think I'm going to, you know, well, I also, I didn't drink that wine uh, classily after the first couple glasses. It, it, it became a bit of a, you know, fun time. Fun times, though. I, I liked the beginning part of the winery pretending like, oh, ooh, oh, uh, <laughs> yes, I can taste, I, I can taste that. Yeah. yeah I, I can feel taste like that. Kyle should get one of those um, bed cooling systems. Have you seen that? It. Yeah, yeah. Fan? It, <laughs> no, uh, no. So <laughs> I, I'm looking at it now. There's t like the one on my screen is two thousand, but I've seen them for a hundred and fifty. The hundred and fifty dollar ones look like you're sleeping on a baby's pee through pee proof mattress, right? Like it's crinkly and everything mm -hmm. it, it, to my yeah. eye. The two thousand dollar one kind of looks like a waterbed, but there's like a I'll call it a CPAP Channels. machine just pushing channels conditioned of air, air underneath I you. I stayed at an Airbnb once that had one of those mm. and it was heavenly. It was so fucking nice. And I think it's what you're describing, like the $2,000 unit. Uh, you know, going back to my buy it nice and how I like the things that I use a lot, it does fit both of those parameters. So maybe I tell you, hey, if we have a good night at poker uh, after the show, I, I might actually pull the trigger on that. Yeah. It's yeah, I, this could be life changing. Well, life changing sounds so dramatic, but like it, it could make a substantial improvement to your quality of life. Yeah, but the, the thing is, I think maybe the reason I'm sweating has more to do with like something like uh, chemical. It almost doesn't like matter what the reason hot. is, right? Yeah. Like, like I, 
look, I don't care if you're down in tamales all night long and now you're sweating. Mm -hmm. This will combat that. I don't know if it will though. Like, I think it's just like my, it like, like something put you outside in the snow. It would, right? Like it, Maybe <laughs> you're gonna I, melt. I'm telling through. you, like, like, <laughs> like it'll be like it was so cold in here one night. Like I, mm-hmm. I, I let I leave. I had that window like open, um, like 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 cracked, and it was 30 degrees outside. So like the inside of the bedroom certainly wasn't 30, it was but cold. it was because I kept I kept, I had the heater set to come on at 60. But so it was probably 60 degrees in here, and I woke up just drenched in fucking sweat. It happens about mm, once every 10 days. And uh, it, I think it's night terror related. I think it's something like that. Cause it's usually, I usually remember having just a terrifying dream. Uh, I'm tor- So I saw some YouTubers review this thing that made it seem like it was the greatest thing on earth, but I don't know if I trust them. Right. Are they paid to they, Like, is there affiliate codes? Like, you know, what's up with that? So, but it, I don't know. Looked pretty neat. Looked like it was worth checking out. I was thinking about it for me too. Let's see. Maybe I know buy it nicer, buy it twice. That's often really smart. It might not be dumb to dip your toe in the water for one fifty just to see if you like a shitty version of it. So you guys want to tweet at eight sleep e i g h t s l e e p. Let them know that. We'd love to uh, to experiment with their product here on the show and get some kind of sponsorship deal going. Eight sleep at eight sleep. That'd be cool. Don't say anything about the RSK though. <laughs> I'm like, sure they won't now. Get, just get us just get us some cooling mattresses so that my man's I, waking up and drenched with sweat. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Have a heart. Uh, Kyle, are you caught up with WandaVision? Tell you what, man, I have not gone back to WandaVision after what? that decent episode. I don't know what it is. I lost all interest in the show. Like, wow. like I, I've seen that Reddit is loving it, eating it up. And I figure like eventually I'll be really hankering for something to watch. And there it'll be eight, ten episodes like in a row ready to binge watch, which is my preferred way. But I've I caught a, I caught one spoiler um, about who one character is, um, very cool. Can you can uh, say the character? Well, maybe you don't want to. Okay, I think I know what it is. I'm calling. write it, write the first letter of the person who someone actually is. No, um, so there's another one. It's a major Marvel character, and a, I'm not. Oh, gonna oh. Batman. I like it. <clears throat> I like how we're being careful with these spoilers. Yes. No, not no, that it, one. It's one of the characters in the show is actually a man from the Marvel universe. I don't know if the sex has been changed. It, it it's irrelevant. Uh, mm. what, I, what, I, what I'm getting at is that like I've only caught one little bitty spoiler, and it wasn't. It didn't it doesn't ruin anything for me. So it's there waiting on me. I I believe in it. I bet it's entertaining. I'm gonna go back to it, but I just don't have any interest right now. I'm really into Snowpiercer. That's the only mm. like debuting show that i'm eating up like uh episodes seem to be available to me on tuesdays i don't know when they air but uh every tuesday i'm like oh it's time to go again let's see what sean bean is up to what kind of evil fuckery he's gonna be trying to do and uh so that's all i'm at. mostly right now i'm um just taking in a lot of poker stuff i've been reading a lot of game theory and uh reading up on uh, exploitative play um, listening to like two different audio books, like pretty continuously, um, uh, on, on poker and on game theory respectively and, uh, and watching lots, hours and hours of poker on, on YouTube and, uh, and then playing poker. It's kind of my main thing right now. Someone was like, Hey, you want to play Valheim? We're going to get a PKA group together. Like, can you play poker in Valheim? No, no, it's, it, it, you know, <laughs> it's the, it's the game where we do. Yeah. Then I don't want to do it. No, no. I want to play so, Valheim. It looks I, cool. I have been watching WandaVision. I'm enjoying it. I won't spoil it. But one of the things I'm excited about is I'm pretty sure there's like not even a dropped week. It goes WandaVision directly into Falcon and Winter Soldier. And I think the, I think, I don't know this to be a fact, but 
They even like lead into each other, like episodically, like like one hands off to the next. That's smart in show, and then it goes from Falcon and Wicked, Wicked Winter Soldier to Black Widow, and then it goes from Black Widow to Loki, and it just like hands off all through some. Like we're we're cool till like July or something in this. That's genius. Yeah, it's that's a really smart way to do it. If that's the case, if they if they. If by the end you see see Netflix wasn't that slick when they tried to do Daredevil and Punisher and all that stuff, they were like, "Oh, Daredevil's a smash hit. Let, do we dare try Punisher?" And Punisher was okay, and it's like, "Ah, oh, now everything else, now everything <laughs> else, and they're all friends." And it's like, "Well, come, God damn, set it up a little <laughs> bit. Take, it, take, a, take a fucking breath." <laughs> it, 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 that's literally what it was. Like, like Daredevil, fucking amazing. Punisher, all right, this is pretty damn good. All right, now we got like eight other guys. There's fucking Golden Cock, and there's there's, there's the, the guy there's with fucking the skin, black, the black guy with the there's, yeah, the skin. black hammer, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I forget there, his there, name. There's Jessica Jones. She's a whore, but she but she but women are strong. And they can be whores if they want, especially when they can bend steel. And then we got <laughs> we we got Golden Hands or whatever that fucking guy was. There's like go, there's like I don't even know their names, but there's like there's like <laughs> Golden Hands and. And black dynamite and fucking um, gay tornado or some shit. And now they're all fucking friends and they've called themselves the defenders and they're hanging. And it's just like, God damn it. You didn't do a good job blending this together. Whereas this time it seems like I look forward to, I hope that Marvel now that they have the defenders under their flag now, uh, go back to the casting choices that Netflix made with the daredevil show. It seems like they could pick it right back up. You know, cast the same guys Daredevil, get Vincent D'Onofrio to play Wilson Fisk, and get uh, Jessica from um, True Blood. You know, the red, sexy redhead, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Infinite Virgin, to you know jump her right back in the show. She she was good, and just keep that thing going. Punisher was, God damn it, it, it! I wanted to like it so much, but like that second season of Punisher sucked to me. It was just. It's, I was gonna say I thought the first season was okay. First season Punisher. was pretty good. Yeah, it could. And I was I was like, oh, they really need to step it up. So that next season, like, all right, we got his backstory out of the fucking way. He's mm -hmm. not, not going to be. We got all of his crying out of the way, all of his flashbacks to his dead wife out of the way. Now he can just fucking shoot people. And it's like, no, nah, this year he's not shooting anybody because he's on a mission. And this is like, well, God damn it. How about a standard fucking Punisher tale where he's just. The, like the cool shit that I wanted to see, like the classic, like Schwarzenegger scene where he like goes into the gun store and he like picks out his weaponry and shit like that. And then he goes in and like methodically takes out a gang of thugs like, like John Wick does. That's what's great about John Wick. It's like the weapon selection. I dig that. Mm. I like when he's fucking picking out his suit. Uh, and, mm. then, and, and then and then all of a sudden, oomt, 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 oomt. And we're in the fucking dance club and the purple strobes are flashing and you just see fuck him walking through in that fucking suit looking slick and you know shit's about to go down. It's like, yeah, this is why I watch. And Punisher's like, yeah, we did all that off screen so we could focus on this woman who's having troubles. <laughs> I don't fucking care about her. I'm watching a show called The Punisher, not the bitch The Punisher like gets tangled up with in a bar fight. I don't fucking care about her. I want to see this man murder. That's what I'm here for. And I haven't really watched the show, but I agree. That's yeah. what I'd be watching for. The Punisher's the coolest superhero, in my opinion, because the Punisher doesn't have any fucking special powers. His special power is sadness. He's they mad, killed, right? His like wife mad. got killed by thugs, and, he, and 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 now he and he didn't like that very much. But mm -hmm. he's got like special forces weapons training, so now he's murdering thugs. He is a vigilante who wears a fucking bulletproof vest and is really good with an AR-15, and he just goes around murdering criminals. That's it. I mean, I like the I like the idea of that. It's awesome. There's been a lot of good like stories where like he gets tangled up with Spider Man because he thinks Spider Man is it, it, someone like frames Spider Man to make it seem like he's a criminal, and so Punisher is after Spider Man, and they they had this whole like back and forth. They kind of like the way Batman versus Superman the movie was, and then at the end they figure out that oh we're actually friends here, and they go and focus together on the real threat. It's good. It's a good quick story. You know what I'm glad they did with Spider Man? No more origin story. You know, yes. they didn't have to, like, get bit by the spider again. And it, like, If I see Uncle Ben die one more fucking time. <laughs> that was sad. In that, I get uh, it. In that original, or not original, but the one with Tobey Maguire, 
Yeah. Poor Uncle Ben after he, what, b- kills Bonesaw or something? Bonesaw is Bonesaw ready. Is ready. He, who was that? Uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. Is he the one who goes, oh, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> was that his thing? Oh, yeah. I don't know what he sounds like. That's pretty, pretty damn close. It's pretty, pretty damn close. So he's just a gruff guy. I am the cream. And he holds up a like. Does he do that? But he's, but he's doing sleight of hand. He's, he's actually got a little bit of sleight of hand under his belt. So he no. keeps like coming up with another creamer out of like, like literally like with a little sleight of hand. He's like, I am the cream. And the cream always rises to the top. And he's like, he, he like reaches out and he's got another creamer. Like he, and the guy who's interviewing me is like, like, like black people seeing magic. He, so he's just like, <gasps> like every time he comes up with another creamer, like it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's one of his best interviews. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to him right now. I'm undeniably unjustifiably in a position I'd rather, not be, I'd rather right not be in. How did I know that's exactly what you were watching? The cream. <laughs> he just lifts it out of his hands. <laughs> Dude, this I guy's hate wrestling, love wrestling great. interviews. We'll rise to the top. The top. Ooh, yeah. It's fucking great. <laughs> yeah, but, but no more origin stories with Spider-Man. Like, like yeah. they did three Spider-Men in the course of like eight years or something like that. And it's like, oh, all right. I liked Andrew Garfield as a Spider-Man. That movie Was made he the me handsome cry. one? In the middle, he was the one from like uh Hacksaw Ridge, who's yeah. like, the, yeah, too handsome. Really, for me. <laughs> I didn't think he was very, I, I think he's got a goofy looking. What say his name again? I want to Google him for everybody. James Andrew. Garfield, I think. <laughs> I, I think he's just an average looking fella, oh, but yeah. um, average looking fella, he's kind of got big head syndrome. It looks like his head's a little, his, his head's a little big for his <laughs> body. <laughs> Andrew Garfield. <laughs> is he doesn't even come close to filling out the physique, though. He, he's just, you know, he's he's uh, he's taught uh, uh, a nubile gentleman. Yes, he's a lollipop, just yeah. a little bit, just a little bit. But um, there's this scene in that movie. I've talked about this before, but there's this scene in that movie where Spider-Man has been like grazed by a bullet in the thigh, and uh, but he's got to get somewhere to like save everybody, and he's on like a rooftop and he's fucking limping, like. He can't, he can barely walk and he's looking at where he needs to go. And, uh, and he's just like, I can't make it. There's the buildings are too far to jump to. Like, I can't shoot my web that far. And like, there's all these crane operators and they're like oh, cigar chomping crane operators, the hard hats. Mm-hmm. And they're like, Spider-Man, he need, and he like moves his like crane out so that Spider-Man can swing. And then you look and all the cranes down the street are all like coming out yeah and spider-man that. sees that like the people of new york are with him and he looks down at his bullet wound and he shoots a little web on it like seals the bullet wound up with some web and he's just like and he just starts he starts running but at first it's this real limpy run he can barely go it's just ah uh, ah uh, and then he speeds up and it's faster and faster and faster until he's just doing his spider run he's just <laughs> killing it yeah. and he jumps into like you know just putting his life on the line and he makes it now he's fucking doing his spider swing and I, I was i literally like tears in my eyes i'm like yeah that's right we're all behind you, you can do it. <laughs> i thought you were saying all that to talk about how stupid it was <laughs> no it meant so much to me that was it was it was so good uh, spider-man over there yeah i'll fucking put off work for this like just <laughs> Everybody like, else also. I'm a sucker for a victory scene like that, but that one didn't get me. I liked it when uh, I wish I could. I know what you're tell. gonna say. It's so good. It's the rhino one, right? There's the rhino, and he's like, people are like, where's Spider-Man? Spider-Man, he's afraid. He doesn't want to do this anymore. He's, you know, he's kind of like he's leaving us there. And this kid in a Spider-Man costume is gonna take on the costume. The kid's like, or the rhino. Kid's like six years old. He's an idiot. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. And uh, the, pl- the the rhino is just like holding all the police down. There's like 30 cops there. They, there's nothing they can do. They have pistols against a tank on two legs with a big rhino horn. And uh, the guy's mocking everyone. And uh, he gets up there and he holds the bullhorn. And he's like, you know... Put your paws up. <laughs> you're uh, you're scaring the good people of New York, and you're kind of insulting rhinos. And 
And uh, the guy's like, come on over here and get your ass kicked. And he's like, come over there and get my ass kicked. Okay. And, uh, and sure enough, he, like, he webs over there. The guy shoots rockets at him. He deflects him with a sewer manhole cover. And it's pretty badass. Good the stuff. one for me in superhero movies, and it's 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 the classic one. It's it's from fucking Endgame, man. Like that final mm. scene when Thanos is pushing when all um, the girls stand together. Oh, fuck I'm just that fucking scene. with you. <laughs> if, I, if, if I could edit that out, like the movie would improve by a whole star. Um, uh. That is so fucking cringy. Cunt power for the win. So no, it's the scene where. Thanos has Stormbreaker, <clears throat> Thor's axe, and he's slowly pushing it into Thor's chest, oh. and it's like game over. And then the fucking Mjolnir, fl- you you like get a quick cut to Mjolnir, and like dust is like it's jiggling, and like dust is levitating, and you're like, oh, oh. and you at first, you think Thor is gonna like magic it to his hand, but no, it comes flying out of nowhere and hits Thanos. And he's like, ah, what the fuck? And fucking Captain America is like catching it, and he's just. Oh, that was such a huge fucking Dude. moment. It's like like nothing has ever been built up that well that well in a movie. It's because there's been there were so like many thirty one movies. movies built to that. It was incredible. There's so many Marvel movies, and I get that some people see that as the weakness behind the Marvel universe. And in some ways, maybe it is. Like you can get you can get fatigued by that many movies. But the one thing that was always the same was like no one can lift Thor's hammer. Thor's like no one can t- can fucking lift this thing. There's only one scene where Captain America he he jiggled it a little back in Age of Ultron, and even Thor was like, "Oh wait a fucking Vision can lift and, it too." And and then the and the yeah, there was that scene where Vision lifted it, but that was kind of played as a laugh almost to like and to like bring the team together. Like, oh, well, we can trust this guy. It's like, yeah, let, let's just move along. And forget that happened. But when Captain America fucking gets it like to fight that fight. Oh, and then they start 2v1ing him and they're flipping the weapons back and forth. And it's that's such a great scene. It like, is like, very, very good. I liked shortly afterwards when uh so Captain America's the only guy left standing. Uh there are impossible odds. You know, you've got Thanos there who's a problem, but you know, it is the ship is the ships have come over the skies, he's like darkening the, there's so many bad flying monsters and running guys and it's just a thousand it's an army, v1. It's an army it's of an a thousand army more. of things that are much rougher than people and uh, captain america just kind of tightens his shield around his arm which might be broken i don't yeah, know it's like, his arm's broken and he's it's, just like he just splints it up, it up and he's like you know this is a losing battle but i'm not quitting and then on your left and uh you know for some reason, Black Panther is saying Mugumbo or something. He loves to say that. And, and uh, but Umbambay. everyone's. What is it? Umbambe. Yeah. Umbambe. Something like that. Yeah. I, okay. Umbambe. I don't know what that means. I, I don't know exactly what it is. But <laughs> it sounds like that. He's, he says some African gibberish. And then, but they, everyone He's just empowered. popping up. And, and it's like, oh my God, they're here. And then Ant Man comes out with the Hulk. And it's pretty cool. And that's another thing that, that makes the 30 fucking movies before that one like pay off it's mm-hmm. like holy shit that's right there are a lot of superheroes that we've met before <laughs> and every fucking one of them shows up it's just like fucking all the golden fucking circles everywhere the portals and it's everybody you've ever heard of is coming through it's it that's a great scene but nothing tops that do Captain all of America. them get some of the kills on screen yeah and- they the, ra- that... the raccoon showed up, but like we're given Wonder Woman and Super. Or, uh, whoever, <laughs> I love whoever. that Wonder Woman's there in your head. <laughs> oh, what, what, is she not? <laughs> like, She's okay, not Marvel. Gonna, uh, She's okay. DC. Then Thor and it's like okay. Well, obviously we're gonna show the Hulk doing the you know his brunt, and then we'll go to Iron Man. We're not gonna show you know the tree, but did everybody get their little scene in the fight? At, at first, it's everybody running at everybody. Just like remember the X Men cartoon with na 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 na. When like at the end of it, like you've got the entire X Men versus the entire like bad guys, and they all like running at each other. But that's what they do. They have like every single good super superhero you've met through thirty movies, and the ancillary characters, the mm. sidekicks, the the guys who just had a passing scene. We're like, oh yeah, he's a magician. Like they're <laughs> all there. Yeah, yeah they're, so- they're all there. Like 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 the ju- the fucking littlest side character in in, in existence. Black Panther had hundreds of warriors. And he brought the whole of Wakanda. They like brought they all, all of Wakanda. And and like th- there's a movie detail subreddit where they're like, do you see these random people? 
They're the same random people we didn't introduce you to in Black Panther. Yep. They, they, so, hey, we got you all those same extras. Perfect. Like they do. pretty much. They yeah. do. Yeah. And the same thing with um, like Doctor Strange. Like the first movie, there's like when he's like learning his magic. There's like a couple of like I don't know Asian monk type guys behind him. Like like it's like way in the background. Like you'd never recognize him again. They're there. They're there. <laughs> They're coming through gold fucking circles to fight aliens. It's it's the second uh-huh. best scene in all of Marvel. It's it's excellent. Just That's the, the scene that a lot of people bring up, but Captain America fucking picking up Mjolnir and saving the day is by far my favorite Marvel mo- moment. I have ever. watched that battle in Endgame. It's like I probably have more time watching it out on Disney Plus than like everything else on Disney Plus combined. I, I will watch because if you go to YouTube to watch it, one, they break it into like eight videos and then there's like little things missing and stuff. And yeah. it's like, no, I want to. Skip the underground Hawkeye running from monsters part. That's that, that's yep. not for me. But uh, like once the glove gets out upstairs or something on the surface, and that fight begins, Thanos is there. I watch from there until the snap. Is this a good place to start? Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America are all standing on some rubble, and Thanos is kind of sitting there, like flipping something in his hand, sitting yeah. on. The, on yeah, the that's pretty good. That's pretty it's good. The beginning, and it's like ten minutes long. Yeah. Mm, well, now I think you might be missing it, it, a lot. It's, it's like thirty minutes because long. you're not a fan. It's it's like when I show my dad Battle of the Bastards, and I'm having to like, all right, see so that guy, that guy <laughs> raped that guy's sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's not here right now, but she will be. Was there a lot of rape in the Avengers? Or what? no, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about when I show my dad Battle of the Bastards oh, from, oh. Uh, from um, um, Game of Thrones. He's saying from you six, need the background. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, totally but, but but it'll still be good. It'll still it it's an excellent battle. Like like the CGI is real fucking good. It's I'm watching it, it on the lowest volume right now. They're having <laughs> a little chat, and uh, Ron Perlman. That is Ron Perlman, right? Mm. Who is Th- oh no Thanos from... is that guy who uh Sons in the of Iron Anarchy, Man, right? Uh, who who the hell is that guy? Give me right I'll, now, I'll but, in um, a second. His name. I don't know why. I thought Josh it was Brolin. Ron- yeah. Josh Brolin. Okay. Yeah, I was now wrong I about understand. Sons of Anarchy too. Thanos has a pretty cool sword. I like how it has a lower blade part as well. It's just symmetrical, right? It's two blades, kind of. Oh, I, the lower blade looks a little shorter. Now Thor, Thor's got two hammers, and he's oh yeah, no, you're right. It's like a Darth Maul, but it's a blade. Hmm. Oh, they cut in the middle. Oh, you're right. This is the part where uh, uh, Hurt Locker's running around. I'm skipping this. Hurt Locker's <laughs> running. Yeah, Hurt Locker running around. That it takes too long and it's not it doesn't pay off for me. Very good move from Thor, throwing his own hammer up and hitting it. Mm-hmm. Thanos too quick uses Iron Man. Thank God Iron Man's metal is the same strength as the hammer, probably. Iron Man gets pretty hurt from that move. Oh. He's kind of Yeah, out he hasn't come back on scene again. Yeah, but Thanos is, is butt fucking him right now. Thanos he does that to people. Oh, so Thanos can pick up Thor's hammer. No, mm, you Thanos might be looking at the axe. Thor's ha- he grabs Thor's arm, which is holding the hammer. Is he holding Stormbreaker, the big axe? Yes. The axe and the hammer have different rules. Yeah. Ah, okay. that makes sense. Okay. And Captain America, so eager to throw the... Oh, the shield comes back. Okay, well then that's not... Oh, that thing does not obey the laws of physics. No, no, it's not even close. <laughs> It never uh, has yeah, never and now been. now Captain America has has the hammer, doing he some does? damage. Must have been embarrassing for Thor. You are, you are, you've just watched like thirty minutes worth of battle in three. You're missing a lot, I suspect. Oh, I'm I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah. Now, well, I mean, he's his unbreakable shield's broken. While we're on the subject of like super super nerdy shit, okay. I want this. We have here. This is a Star Trek, a Klingon botlock. It's a battle. <laughs> battle. And it has a hanger too. So you can put it on your wall. That way everyone will know how cool you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. Loud and proud, baby. Loud and proud. This is good. This Dude, is good. That would be Ain't so embarrassing to hang up in your house. Oh, no. This is wrong. I heard they're more effective than condoms at, at preventing <laughs> pregnancy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <my> <laughs> <fuck>. <laughs> You won't get any, a fuck is what after this. Any thing. girl who doesn't think bat lefts are cool doesn't deserve <laughs> Just a all of down. them. You, you can't get any dick at my house if you don't think fucking bat lefts are sick. All right? oh, there's, the Asian, there's the Asian guy that must be Doctor Strange's background friend. I just saw him. Yeah. <laughs> Probably he's a little heavy. Taking a blue shield, being like, I will too fight in the battle. <laughs> 
uh, I like this thing. I'm, I wonder I'm how thick it is. Like, I wonder if it's a little sheet metally. 46 inches long and uh, three kilograms. So six point six pounds. Six pounds. I just don't want it to be flexible. No, I don't either. There's another one on there that's much hardier, but it's eight hundred and fifty dollars, and it doesn't look like the doesn't look like wharfs. Mm. <laughs> Needs to. That's the whole point. I need it to look like wharfs. Yeah. Left. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been watching a lot of Star. I mean, I, God, I've seen Star Trek so many fucking times, but I'm rewatching it a little bit lately. TNG, and uh, you know. I, my favorite episodes are the Worf episodes when he like regains his family honor and fights in the Klingon Civil War and all that shit. And he has some good story arcs. You know, he actually has some pretty decent story arcs. He, uh, his baby mama gets murdered by uh, the same man who is the descendant of the guy who stole his family's honor at the by telling a lie. Uh, they, they, the, <laughs> the, the, the great lie was that Worf's father Moog betrayed the Klingon Empire to the. Uh, the um, Romulans at the Battle of uh, Kittimer, and uh, that wasn't true. It was Duras's father who did that, uh, but but uh, they blamed it on Moog, and uh, Worf was cast out, had to live in shame, raised on Earth by uh, by humans. There's a complication and, that had Worf keep the secret that made his family look bad. Yep, I forget it though. Yeah, it was uh, it was that the uh, the guy who had the descent. So if if your father does something dishonorable, dishonorable, you're you are dishonored. You right. lose all like st status. Well, it turns out this Duras guy was the one uh, whose father did uh, betrayed them to the Romulans, and so they had to keep the secret because uh, so many of the uh, members of the High Council also had been telling this lie, which is also a very dishonorable thing. That to uncover the truth would dishonor far too many people in power and perhaps upend the entire Klingon empire. So he kept the dishonor on his shoulders for the betterment of the entire Klingon empire. And it wasn't until much later on when Duras uh, rebels against the Klingon empire and, and faces off against the rightful uh, emperor uh, that it's time to side with the emperor, fight Duras. And uh, well, it's actually Duras' sisters uh, because Worf kills Duras because Duras killed Worf's uh, mate. Uh, mm. And uh, in any case, it's it's a it's a cool storyline. Probably sounds like the nerdiest shit ever to anybody who doesn't know what the <laughs> fuck I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. But uh, but I, I like it. I like it a lot. And I like Michael Dorn who plays uh, Worf. I think he's a pretty fucking good actor. Instead of that nonsense Picard series, they should have made Captain Worf. And it should have just been about <laughs> a gray haired Worf with his own fucking uh, ship running at the fucking Klingon way and, and, and doing his own. He's about the same age as Picard was, I guess now when he was the captain, nice old gray. Sometimes war. Kyle comes up with premises for shows that are top notch. <laughs> like, it could be such a good fucking show. Yeah. You should pitch that. I'm sure it's been pitched before. I bet if you Google captain Worf, you get a bunch of fucking uh, stuff pop up. Probably do. But because he's one of the most beloved characters ever. And because of he wears so much makeup, it doesn't matter that he's old. Like mm. they keep trying to bring back these really old characters from TNG. And it's like, dude, they've aged out. Like, like, like they're all 60 to 70 years old. Like mm. they're not like they're not, they're not, they're not capable anymore. They don't have the look. But Warp wears so much makeup that like I'm sure he looks great right now, as long as he's still marginally fit he is yeah i'm googling him he's uh he's probably fitter than you're imagining like he's fucking he got fat around uh the movies like one of the in the latter couple of movies he was oh looks good now good yeah i'll show everybody yeah great fucking actor one of my favorite star trek characters of all time um had an incredible story arc and uh they brought him back for deep space nine which is my favorite star trek so he you know he did like six years of the next generation and then like five or six more on uh deep space nine and he did all the tng movies like they always found a way to shoehorn a way to get Worf into the fucking movie and uh i fucking like him great character yeah that'd be cool you got great lines lots of I don't know. Lots of cool moments. Maybe Star Trek someday. I'll watch 
I'll watch all the Marvel stuff before Star Trek. There's a, there's a, Although there's I a guess I'm watching the last scene of the whole thing. There's a part in uh, Star Trek, uh, one of the movies, and like Picard's kind of lost it. He's on like a rage fueled revenge kind of binge, wanting to fight the Borg. And Mr. and Worf is like, they're taking deck after deck, so we've got to abandon ship. And Picard calls him, he goes, coward. And like, you don't call Worf a coward. Worf mm-hmm. is willing to fucking die for, for, for anything. There's a scene in uh, where, where Worf is taken captive and, uh, in deep space nine and he's taken captive by this warrior race and uh so they make him fight against each of them they they, they start with like their their weakest guy they make war fight him and war fights a struggle a struggled fight but he, he beats and kills the guy and he's like is that your best and he's like that was our worst and it's like shit <laughs> and he like he fights like five or six of these jim hadar in a row like like beating each one in succession like like at, with a few hours rest in between and then he fights like the leader of them all the biggest badass and he's going in with broken ribs and like torn ligaments and stuff and he he's losing the fight and uh it, like, like the the way the fights works if you get knocked down you got to stand up and press a button to continue and he keeps doing it and the the leader standing over him and and uh the the leader's leader is like finish him kill him he's like no and he clicks the button that is that it, that is like quit. Like the, the guy who's winning the fight admits defeat to Worf, even though Worf was losing badly at this point. <laughs> He's like, I can only kill this man. I can never beat him. And it's like, yeah, it's fucking <laughs> Worf. You can, all you can do is kill him. You can never beat him. It's like such a good character. I fucking that's a love good it. line. I, he's he 68. When Picard calls him a coward, he's he like, was. if you were any other man, I would kill you where you stand. Like, <laughs> great. great fucking line rap yeah yep all right any outros no sir pka 533